Check two. Check two. Check two. Check one, two. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the home of Speedway in Victoria and regional Victoria here, of course, in Mildura to uh, one of the uh, premier tracks of racing in the country. Uh, we talk of none other than the Olympic Park Speedway Complex here in Mildura. Uh, John Contract on the mic tonight and with me tonight also is Simon Cause. Simon, welcome down tonight. Uh, thanks, John. It's going to be uh, shaping up to be an unbelievable night of racing. There's already crowd brewing and the VIPs are... In there, getting their, their beers down, and it's just shaping up to be amazing for the night. Simon, tonight we uh, typically come to an event that would be part of some sort of racing calendared item, okay? Whether it be a Victorian title, an Australian title, or uh, or any of the the other. But viewers, tonight you're you're logging in to watch a, an iconic uh, event tonight, and it's something that we pr present and bring to you with a little bit of uh, disheartenment in the fact that w for the reason we're here, but more importantly, it's about celebrating a, a, an amazing life of a competitor who's been part of our club for a very long time. And I talk none other than of the competitor in Warren Watson, who uh, Warren, of course, uh, we're holding tonight his memorial meeting. And Simon, it has brought people from literally everywhere across this country and even far reaching beyond that internationally to be here at Olympic Park this weekend to celebrate the life of this guy as we compete, which is something he would want us to do. Oh, look, it, it, it just plays on the heartstrings, this meeting. Tonight, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the best racing you've ever seen, and it's going to be one of the biggest meetings Madrid has ever held. I don't think people would understand how, how much high regard they held Wazza in. And Wazza was an unbelievable bloke on and off the track. He helped me out in my career with my bikes, and he... I spoke to a lot of people leading up to this event and there was not a bad thing anyone said about him. And, and he was a tough competitor, for sure. So these blokes racing tonight, they're super proud to be able to ride in honour of Warren. I'm looking at some of the footage that we've got showing to you at the moment and uh, I'll touch on some of these parts before we kick off because tonight and later as uh, things really evolve, um, Simon, things will get really hectic through the night. I mean, looking at the footage at the moment of all of the competitors, some of the spectators that are out around the complex, I will go as far as also thanking all of the track crew that have been down for days, literally days getting this to a level uh, that will be the track at, pr at its pristine best for this event tonight. I do thank each and every one of those volunteers that helped pull together this event and make sure that uh, it runs to clockwork and all of our team here that are looking after getting all of these pictures to you live from Olympic Park. I mean, Simon and the guys do an amazing job of doing that. Uh, and, you know, again, I think between you and I, uh, Simon, we're, we're very, uh, very thankful and very grateful for the fact that we've given off, been given the opportunity uh, to be part of this amazing meeting tonight. Yeah, I myself, I'm pretty pretty honoured and privileged to be able to help out on the commentary. And um, it's a bit new to me, guys, so just take it easy on me. But <laughs> with, with John's uh, guidance, he'll help me build through to it. But look, this meeting alone has just taken so much to put together. There's so much things that you don't realise that have been in place. And mm. Summer Hayes and, and the Monsons 
race team have had a lot to do with picking the field, organising the whole show. The Monsons' parents, his family, his dad, they all loved him racing. They put a lot of money time. And the Monsons' honey was the Warren Monson race team, you know. And, and Marg and, and Ray, they, they were just, you know, heartbroken. But they're here together to put on, and they just want to put on a good show. And it's... Uh, all the money raised tonight, John is going to a fantastic cause, and like was it wanted, so that that's yeah. fantastic. So, well, f- we'll talk to that in a moment as well. Um, as you can see at the moment on screen, there's a lot of footage of uh, some bikes that are sort of laid out for presentation tonight. The bikes you can see at the top of your screen at the moment, th- they're the dirt track guys that are here tonight as well. So, what you've got is basically a full complement of sidecar riders that'll be riding in the actual memorial meeting. Some supports in that for sidecars, and beyond that, some of the uh, dirt track. Guys as well so we've got a great range of, uh, of of different competitor sets to race tonight you talk about the uh, the, the donation to the charities um, what happened so that you've got a bit of an insight to this um, the guy went down the path of talking to Warren about prior to his death um, about holding a uh, testimonial meeting and what that means is that uh, if a testimonial meeting is held it means the club put it on for your benefit and typically, um, a, a very large slice of that, other than the operating part, goes to the, the individual for the testimonial. When Warren was approached with that, he said, you know, I'm not really comfortable with that. I'd rather it went somewhere else. So, um, unfortunately, he went from a testimonial to where we are. But in honour of what he wanted, tonight, all of, the, uh, all of the takings are going straight to two great local cha- uh, charities. Chalice is one. And the other, of course, is Angel Flight. And that was what Warren was about. It was about giving more than taking. He was absolutely a giver. Yeah, that's right, John. And it just goes to show on and off the track, just a true champion. And uh, to give to charities, it's, it's just unbelievable. And uh, his, his testimony would have been big too. You can see at the moment on screen the Monson's Honey and uh, Pollination Truck. Obviously, this is part of the family business that was the uh, Monson family uh, business. Trevor and all of the family will be uh, honoured uh, to be able to share some of what goes on here tonight, albeit that uh, you know it came with a loss to start off with, family members and uh, and associated uh, groups of people that are connected to that riding in this truck, and it's just great to see all the riders getting around it and showing their respects, just mm. just getting around the truck as it starts to head out, and as you see Monson's family all loading into the truck, and yeah, it's, it pulls on my heartstrings a bit, just just why we're here tonight, but. Yeah, and you know, like this, uh, this truly is the start of uh, what will be an amazing meeting. I think the level of competition tonight, um, Simon, will be that that it's not about winning a title; it's about winning the prestige to say that you know I was there for you was, and uh, and beyond that, I gave everything I possibly could. That is the level of competition you're going to see tonight, and I really feel, Simon, we're in for some absolute. Not not just great racing, but some absolute pri- surprise packets to come out of tonight. Oh, 100%. It's shaping up to be a nice night. It's quite warm down here, 37, 38 degrees. You see a lot of sweat on the foreheads of the races, but that, that's for sure. There's, I definitely know a few of the racers are hungry to get their name on this. They, they want this, so it's going to be on for young and old out there. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, and like I said, the, uh, the, the group of people that are here to compete tonight young and old, I might add, um, are, are all here because of the respect of this guy. You know, he, he truly had a mark uh, on everybody. He, he was one of these guys that gave everybody his back. He had, the, he had your back when, when he was giving you advice and helping you. There was never anything uh, untoward about it, and he would go out of his way to help. Um, I couldn't think of a better way of dealing with it. He actually reminded me of the late Gary Moon. Gary Moon was very similar. He mm. used to help anyone out. He used to drop tools and stop working on his own bike during a race meeting and he'd go and help blokes that needed help. And, you know, he'd, 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 he'd own race team would suffer, but he'd, he'd, he was happy to help someone else. So in Was it was the same. He'd, he'd drop tools to help someone else and he was always there to help. Questions, you ring him up and, yeah, and he was very knowledgeable. He was, a, he was an unbelievable engine builder too, so... A number of things that will go through is the uh, start of the event tonight. Obviously, uh, from a competition point of view, we're looking at uh, racing to get underway at about 7 o'clock. Just prior to that, we'll be doing our dash for cash, which is we we give all of the guys in the main field an opportunity to do a flying lap through there. Uh, and uh, and provide what is the best of the kickoff for the night, but prior to that, there's a number of bits we've got to do. We've got um, so that you're aware on 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 out in uh, log on land there at the moment watching our broadcast. The fact that we'll have all the family and friends go out. We'll introduce the riders as they come out to their uh, out to their bikes. 
uh, we get a chance to obviously have some photos uh, taken out there. Um, then on top of that, uh, we'll introduce um, some friends to do uh, a, a couple of speeches that are uh, pretty iconic. Um, then we'll get, get an opportunity to talk to Peter Moran uh, from Angel Flight and then John Burfitt, who's a, a legend in his own time as well, from Chalice. Uh, Trevor will we'll then say a few words and a prayer on behalf of uh, Warren to start the, the meeting off. A minute silence or silence provided as a sign of, and a fitting tribute to, to Warren. And then of all things, Teresa, his partner, is to sing the national anthem. And I, I just, I, I can't stress how strong that she would have to be to do that. And then obviously after that, uh, the guys will lead out way the dirt trackers, the support sidecars from the parade, and leave them there for the start of the one lap dashes. So there's quite a lot to do before we even get into racing uh, tonight, Simon. Yeah, no, it's definitely, definitely event backed field. And yeah, like I said, there's a lot of work that's gone into this meeting just to make sure they thank the right people and tributes flow in. And, and it's, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be uh, really amazing. I hope you guys enjoy the live stream. And uh, it's going to be one to remember, that's for sure. We're about to kick off. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to Olympic Park Speedway for this very, very special Warren Monson Memorial sidecar meeting here at Olympic Park. Well, Simon, Thank as you can so hear, the uh, broadcast uh, on track with uh, Brendan Gledhill and obviously Damien Bradshaw underway right now. Shortly we'll see the truck move forward and then as they come forward we'll uh, head through the field. Not only with the field proper, but we'll also move into some of the uh, support fields as well. So you get a chance to see each and every one of them as they come forward. Geez, John, they look like a bee. They look like a beehive in that truck. I don't know if you could fit another person in that truck. Well, all I can say is that the springs are probably getting a bit of a workout. Um, like a good hive, they are cluttered together, keeping warm, although you probably wouldn't want to do too much of that today. But there's a lot of sweet things in there, mate. No, that's for sure. Uh, what a beautiful sight to see. And very shortly we'll see it uh, wander through. I can see the uh, the guys signalling that uh, we're good to go. I'm going to now introduce the to you, ladies and gentlemen. Wearing number one tonight, former Australian champion Trent Headland and his passenger April Cottrell as they go to their machine. Triple and current and defending Australian champions Mark Playstead and Ben Pitt. From New South Wales, Shane Hudson and Adam Constable. From Broken Hill, Max Howes and Riley Commons. From South Australia, Josh Pascoe and the Evergreen, Greg Black. From South Australia as well, Nate Hedland and Jackson Rayner. Nate's grandfather is next, the dual world champion, Mick Hedlund and Brenton Kerr. From Queensland, ladies and gentlemen, Brody Cohen and Jess Hedlund. Ex-Victorian champion, local superstars, Byron Gates and Mick O'Loughlin. From South Australia too, Damian Nish and Mitch Spear. 11 times Australian champion, I think 47 state championships and a world championship. The most uh, coloured rider in sidecar racing ever, Darren Trelaw and Blake Cox. <laughs> From Broken Hill, Ricky Stevens and Nick O'Brien. <laughs> From South Australia. Kim Menadieu and Shane Dolan. 
from Queensland. Number 36, Dave Bottrell and Darcy Ristrom. <laughs> Local riders and great friends of Wazza Monson, Nathan Cock and Brendan Johnson. And from South Australia and making the top 16 is Kane Golding and Isaac Amos. We have a support class of eight sidecars again, ladies and gentlemen, tonight. And the first reserve wearing number 17 is AJ Pierce and Eli Bock. The rest of that class wearing 18, Chris Walker and Matt Crunwell. From South Australia, Dean Hobbs and Daniel Lowe. Number 20, Stephen Fowler and Jeremy Sherwood. Matt Binns and Jared Zaworski. Then follows from South Australia, sorry, Kat Zorki. And then Brian Silvey and Gwen Zaworski is 22. Then coming out in the orange, black and green, or orange, black and white, sorry, is Connor Curran and Cam Nichols. And making up the eight from South Australia, Byron Mordaunt and Will Lapoidovan. <laughs> and our reserve riders as well from Western Australia. I'm not sure that they're going to get a ride, but uh, they've come all the way. And I'm not sure. Adam Barnes and Dylan. An absolutely first class group of dirt trackers, ladies and gentlemen, with all of them being Mildura superstars. Rowan Tegart leading them out. Nick Waters. Ben Brooks. Josh Knight. Jordan Stewart. And Josh Waters. And now the family, ladies and gentlemen, and we uh, we again share our sympathies with Trevor and Carolyn Monson and their lovely family, and also Warren's partner, Theresa Dolphin. And I think you'll enjoy seeing this little old truck, ladies and gentlemen. It's the truck that started off Monson's Honey. Coming also out into the arena. The gentleman is uh, Peter Marin from Angel Flight and Pilot Rowan. And also from Chalice, an amazing local fundraising organisation. The founder, John Burkett, and he's also got Molly with him as well. I think we're ready now for the Monson family to come. I'm told, ladies and gentlemen, that we're going to group everybody for the photo of all the participants in tonight's Monson Honey <laughs> Warren Monson Memorial. There's so many firsts for this meeting, ladies and gentlemen. I do commend the souvenir program to you. I hope you enjoy reading some of the things contained that have been uh, provided by the family. Some parts that have been part of Warren's funeral service back in April, earlier this year. It's possibly like herding cats up there, ladies and gentlemen, you may understand. A big crowd. 
needs to be included in this commemorative photograph. <laughs> <laughs> In your souvenir program, ladies and gentlemen, every one of the 38 events for tonight has a race sponsor, and I draw your attention to each and every one of those. We thank, I thank you on behalf of the Monson family and the Full Noise race team for bringing all of those sponsors together to make sure that this particular event is an absolute one in a million. Just like those of us who were fortunate enough to know Wazza knew that he was a one in a million as well. Very gratifying to see Olympic Park absolutely full to the rafters with uh, keen and loyal spectators. to running a meeting like this. And ladies and gentlemen, your generosity and the generosity of our sponsors Well, here's three of the stars of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Warren's passenger, Andrew Summerhays, and Full Noise Racing Team Management, Ray and Mark Tegart. Followed by the Monson's Honey, Comma Ute, with plenty of uh, family in the back. And what a lovely restoration that has been and done by Trevor. So please offer your very best wishes to Andrew Summerhays as he has the throttle for the first time on the Warren Monson machine. And ladies and gentlemen, what a machine that has been. Probably never gone down the back straight at Olympic Park as slow as that. Andrew Summerhays, Ray and Mark Tegart. And I pay a personal tribute to Mark and Andrew for the amount of work that they've done for putting this event together. And I also acknowledge the contribution to the to Sunraysia horticulture of Monson's honey and pollination. As you can see, uh, the broadcast we're taking is live from the track at the moment with Brendan Gledhill. Great opportunity for the uh, pictures to come through for you online tonight. Uh, what we will be receiving tonight will be some of the commentary in this official part to start off with, uh, with us continuing on through the night. So, Simon, uh, a pleasure to be here and witness all of this tonight. Yeah, my heart feels for the Monson team with Summer Hayes and Ray and Marg. They, they were just inseparable as a team. They spent so much time together and mm. was his wife and, and to all the family. It's just heartbreaking. But tonight's going to be in honour of him and it's going to be fantastic. 
Shortly, uh, Brendan will get a chance to have a chat with Marg Tegart, uh, who is down there and, uh, as we said, instrumental in, in running part of that team. Uh, and then beyond that, we'll be talking to Peter Moran from Angel Flight and then also uh, the iconic and local John Burfitt from Chalice. Uh, they'll get a chance to have a chat to those guys before we have a few uh, words with Trevor uh, from the family and then uh, a prayer before we have our silence and Teresa to sing the national anthem. So uh, we'll sit tight now and we'll wait for Brendan to have a chance to have a chat with Mark to go. Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you to give your attention to the lady that I've called the matriarch of Full Noise Racing. Ladies and gentlemen, please give your attention to Mrs. Margaret Tegger. After a beautiful day of doing tourism things after the Aussie title in April last year. I was having lunch while I brought up about the club and had asked him about a testimonial. This was the second time that he had been asked and he had said no because he was afraid that no one would come. Just need to look around. Kiron was. Anyway, we all agreed that it would be a yes and that we needed to start planning. Ryan didn't want the money to come back to him as he would rather it go to charity. He expressed that he liked Angel Flight and the way that they worked and also Chalice as it was a local charity that helped sick children. So we said goodbyes, said our goodbyes and we went our separate ways to start thinking more about it. On the April the 23rd, Ryan was tragically taken from us during the test and tune at Heath at the raceway. Tonight we stand here, not for his testimonial, but for his memorial meeting. We are following Warren's wishes and doing it was his way. There are a few people to thank for helping us get to this point. Mordura Motorcycle Club members for being so supportive and helping in any way, and particularly for putting on this meeting. All the riders and their passengers who are here just for was. All of the sponsors, you are amazing. We covered every race through to the A final, the prize money and more. Thank you. To the, two, to the two charities, Angel Flight and Chalice, thank you for being here. It is so special. Matt and the staff at Exposed for being so patient while we worked out the design and to Ryan Sedgman also on the design of the vest which came from the UK. Ian Burrows from Showcase Jewellers. The trophies are stunning, all the way from China, worked from lots of photos and videos. You've all gone over and above to help us get everything right. To Judy for the lollies, Teresa for the bee costumes, Shona, Abby and Avi, Ava for buzzing around collecting donations throughout the night. Carol and Trevor, Andrew, Tegan and Ray for everything. Everyone had input into this. Ryan Sedgman, thank you. You're amazing to work with. Responsive, patient and excellent at your role in the club. You're a fantastic help to me. Lastly, a massive thank you to the spectators. Warren thought you wouldn't come. He never knew how many people he touched and left a mark on over the years. He would have been stoked. He's definitely here with us tonight. Thank you, everyone. From Full Noise Racing, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Tegart. Wonderful. In her dissertation, Mark has talked about the two beneficiaries of tonight's meeting being Angel Flight and Chalice. And ladies and gentlemen, they will be the total beneficiaries of this particular meeting. So your generosity is valued and also acknowledged. But I would like to now introduce you to, from Angel Flight, Peter Moran. Peter. It's certainly a great honour to be representing Angel Flight for this memorial testimonial for the legendary Warren Monson. 
Angel Flight is a charity that began 20 years ago and has flown over 50,000 flights. Its purpose is to transport by air adults and children from rural and outback Australia to the cities for medical treatment at no cost to them. When they land in the city, we provide ground transport by volunteers we call Earth Angels, who drive them to their designated hospital, then drive them back to the airport for their flight home. Once again, at no cost to them. Angel Flight is entirely funded by donations. So this is a really great turnout um, that we've got here tonight to, to see that. And with no government assistance, we rely totally on donations. Any money raised tonight will help the Mildura community and their children charity Chalice and Angel Flight. Angel Flight already <laughs> conduct regular flights from Mildura. In fact, I flew my first Angel Flight from Mildura 14 years ago. I have since done over 600 flights for the charity and I really feel privileged in helping so many people. I'm sure we're all looking forward to a spectacular evening and I hope you all enjoy this momentous occasion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Peter. Certainly, uh, I know each and every one of us here never ever know when we might need the services of Angel Flight. Children having an illness living in Sunraysia stands for Chalice and Chalice is a group of volunteers but the main one, the one that we all see, the figurehead, is that amazing Sunraysia man John Burford. Would you please give your attention now to John, ladies and gentlemen. John Burford. Thank you, Brendan. As Peter said, it's a, a real honour and a privilege to be here on Warren's memorial testimonial. Firstly, I want to pay tribute to Warren Monson, a very caring person. It's much, much appreciated that for his testimonial, he wanted two charities to benefit from the night, Angel Flight and Chalice. To the Monson family, you should be very proud of the legacy that Warren has left. I've been fundraising for 43 years, supporting many different groups and individuals. But 10 years ago, going through some very difficult times in my life, it was suggested to me it would be help, a help going forward if I had a registered charity before. One of the stipulations that I made was that 100% of the funds raised had to go to the families we were supporting. There were those in the community who said it would never be possible. Well, we're in our 10th year now and we've never taken a red scene out of the two roads. A lot of time was spent in trying to find a suitable name for the charity. Having a strong Christian faith, I was thinking of the chalice used in churches. And to my surprise, it was exactly what I wanted. Children have an illness living in Sun Radio. Would you believe today, as I was um, looking over my notes, I suddenly looked up the uh, spelling of chalice that they use in the churches, and it's not spelled the same. So ch children with, in North Haven living in Sun Radio was meant to be. Our aim is to raise funds, hope and awareness for families with children in Sunraysia living with a serious illness or life impact and disability. Each family is supported on an individual basis with many and varied requests for support. There could be monetary, medical equipment, travel or accommodation. Uh, the the uh, requests that we've had over the years have been endless. When a family have a child with serious illness, they usually have to travel to either one of the major cities for treatment. And quite often, they have to stay months at a time, leaving their partner and other children behind to uh, pick up the slack. In many cases, this causes a great deal of stress, because while they're in, in the state, the bills don't stop coming in. Chalice, as I said, is now in its 10th year, and it assistance families to the tune of well over $430,000. And that's not including donations in kind. This would not be possible without the generous support of such a wonderful community. There's been many other groups that have helped Chalice that, that have supported us. And we'll do a show. Fish for Port, which are holding another event on March the 2nd this year for us. Had a Northwest Motor Spectre and Motorcycle Club. 
from Girafield days, Board of Western Horse Group and many more, and many other businesses and individuals to all those which I say a huge thank you. It's fantastic to see so many people here tonight honouring the memory of Warren. And to each of the uh, competitors, and, uh, I wish all the best in their racing. Thank you for tuning out on a night that is going to benefit both Angel, Angel Fight and Chalice. Thank you very much for your support. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank John Burford. Monson's Honey, ladies and gentlemen, was founded in 1953. And to speak to you now on behalf of the family is Warren's father, Trevor, the uh, principal of the company, the main bee man. And I'm not sure how many million are actually in your family, Trev, but uh, you might like to uh, just follow up on that as well. At the end of Trevor's speech, ladies and gentlemen, he wishes to uh, do a prayer for us all. I would ask you at that time to please remove your hats and be upstanding. Trevor will give you a, a couple of seconds to do that. But ladies and gentlemen, please pay your attention and offer your support and sympathy to the Monson family. Ladies and gentlemen, Trevor Monson. One thing I can say about Angel Point, all our work is spider work. <laughs> Something else I'd like to say tonight is damn hot. And Warren always said, whenever I come home to Mildura, it's damn hot, and I've got to put leathers on. So tonight is a fitting night, you know, for that. Okay. Um, what I thought I would inform you, um, I would, uh, we, we have received the coroner's report, um, and um, I, would, I would like to encourage every one of you, if you find that you're noticing any changes at all uh, in, in bodily pain or functions or whatever, please see a doctor. <clears throat> because Warren um, had a, um, a serious heart infection um, and um, arteries that, that were severely blocked. So, um, and that the coroner has suggested, along with a, a probably a handful of adrenaline, <laughs> Um, um, has, um, has caused him to um, to black out or have a heart attack. Yeah. Um, and like Brendan said, um, now I'd like, if you could be upstanding, um, I'd just like to offer a, um, a prayer for the safety of the riders tonight. Creator God, we want to thank you for uh, the memories um, of a young man that loved this sport, loved to build engines, loved, loved to, to show his skills. But most of all tonight, we wish that all of the riders, that, that you have extreme fun in riding in his honour, but most of all, keep safe. Amen. Thank you, Trevor. Heartfelt words indeed. And whilst you're putting your hats on, can I now do something that I think is incredibly special, and that is invite Warren's partner, Teresa Dolphin, to come. And when she starts, could you please also remove your hats, because Teresa is going to sing the national anthem, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. How neat is that? And Therese, good luck darling, and we share with you all of those things that uh, you're now missing.
Thanks, ladies. Now, whilst you have your hats off, shall I please ask you to keep them off as we share a moment's silence for Warren prior to the uh, rest of the meeting going ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember Warren Monson, number 43. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sharing that time with the family and with Warren. Please enjoy your night and please offer the thanks to our official party here on the infield at Olympic Park. Thanks Trevor, thanks Therese and thanks to the two charities, to John and Peter, thank you very much indeed. What will happen now ladies and gentlemen? The support classes will leave the arena. The support classes will leave the arena. So Simon, a, a pretty uh, special uh, opening for what is going to be a very, very special meeting for us here online tonight the running of the Warren Monson Memorial uh, meeting. It's brought literally everyone to this one place for what is an amazing array of, of competitors to, uh, to challenge one another and to remember Warren. Yeah, thanks guys for everyone tuning in and uh, applying for the live stream. Look, it's what a build up to an amazing meeting it's gonna be. And that was just, I had goosebumps and, and tears at the same time. It's. Uh, is shaping up. This is when the nerves start setting in and everyone's just getting a bit eager to get out their first race out of the way. So here we are on the parade lap. I think, Simon, one of the things that's really amazing to see is the amount of um, respect. The amount of respect in, and the amount of uh, unity in the crowd here tonight, watching this unfold as we start this night tonight, you know, watching through some of those fantastic pictures that our other Simon tonight and his crew have been capturing shows very clearly, you know, that level of, of how important Warren was to, to this fraternity and, and to the level of respect that they have shown. Yeah, very magical moment it was. Definitely you could feel the magic in the air and uh, I'm sure Waz would be proud and honoured as he looks down upon this night and it's, it'll be forever etched in everyone's memory tonight. Well done to Waz's missus for singing that rendition of Australian Anthem, that was amazing and it's tough, you could hear it in her voice but she pushed through and she got through it, amazing job, well done. I know Simon, we spoke off, off camera earlier on uh, today about exactly that, how hard it would be for her to do that and uh, kudos to her, full credit to her, she, she literally uh, delivered what is a very hard um, portfolio to deliver on she gave her all in that, and I think that is just incredible that, that she was able to do that. Yeah, it was a very sweet and heartfelt the way she sung it. Definitely had a lot of heart into it. Well, as you can see, some of the bikes are heading infield and uh, rather into the uh, pit area now, as we can see live streaming some of those uh, guys heading away from the racetrack. What will happen now, we'll be left with the field proper, the A field for the remainder of the night tonight and they will then take part in the exposed signage and apparel dash for cash. Uh, this is an initiative that we've been doing at the club for, for quite a while now uh, and this is an opportunity for the guys to do one lap out there and the fastest guy gets the cash. So you know it's a, it's a pretty incredible thing. Great sight also to see the truck heading off with the uh, team aboard it. As we can see uh, a nice wide turn. Trevor proudly piloting that uh, that vehicle with all of those uh, family members and connected parties uh, around into the pit area. We are really in for a crack of a night, no doubt about it. 
Yeah, this dash of cash really shapes up to start the night well. It, uh, you really know who's on pace. A lot of these guys haven't practiced. The top level guys, and they're not allowed to practice. So a lot of people are treating this as a practice and they're going to go out health leather on one lap. They get one practice lap and then it's full noise to see who can get that quickest time and, and win the dash of cash money. As you can see, they're all pretty, uh, they're pretty stoked to be here tonight for starters, let alone have a crack at this. And you can see on the wider angle uh, shortly the, uh, the water truck uh, moving through. Um, you know, out in the background, you can see it there. The guys that have put this tractor together over the last week or so have done an amazing job. They really have. I mean, we were down here today, and people don't give it credit. You know, th we had a 36, 37 degree day here today. And what these guys are trying to do is they're trying to get water into this track and down underneath the dirt. So as we race tonight, that water comes through and the track stays stays uh, damp enough to race on without providing massive amounts of dust. Uh, and these guys are volunteers. They just turn up here and do this. You know, it's just incredible. And that, that is the level of dedication that they do every meeting we have here. But I think not too dissimilar for ourselves, Simon, you know. The fact that we're asked to be involved and deliver a meeting like this to the greater world out here on our live stream tonight as volunteers, you know, it gives us great pleasure to do that. It's the, the least we can do for Warren and his family. Yeah, they, these track guys do an amazing job week in and week out and, and it's just hands down a lot of work even after the race meeting's finished. They're, they're great in the track, getting they're ready for the next meeting and especially with the sidecar night, we... We've got a bit heavier, drivier track for the sidecars, so it's a bit more trickier to prepare. They've got to rip the track through the week, get water down deep and get a drive. These sidecars love a bit heavier dirt, where your solos, they love the, the hard concrete. John, they want to, they love sliding. With sidecars, they like dirt. They like heavy dirt, and that's when they get really fast. They can come into the corner, full noise, and have the dirt pull them up and have the dirt to drive out. If she's like concrete, they, you end up washing up to the fence, and it's very tricky. They've got to change their setup, redial in to, to track circumstances. But a good heavy track is when you'll see some fast times and some really good racing. Good to see multi-national uh, and international Speedway star there on camera in the Gas Gas shirt. Of course, our very own Lee Adams is here this weekend uh, as part of the event to uh, to just be part of it and watch it. That's you know his connection to the sport has been uh, quite far-reaching. But you know there's so many people that have not been sidecar connected that are here tonight to make sure that they watch the best of the best. We've got a few superstars in the house. Josh Waters is racing the flat track. Correct. Superstar John. Yeah, and we'll, we'll have a chat uh, potentially with Josh and or what happens. Let's work with these guys now, Brent and the team, as they go into the one lap uh, dash for cash now for exposed signage and apparels. And we'll grab the times from these guys as they go through. So we'll, we'll button off and let them travel through with this now. Green flag. and Adam Constable on the hot lap. 
Superstars Nate Headland and Jackson Rayner complete the 300 readers. Mick Headland and Brenton Kerr out next. Nate Headland, Jackson Rayner will sign on 15. <laughs> Damien Neesh and Mitch Spear. Byron Gates, Nico Lockman with a 14.78, a 14.78 Gates, though, Lockman.
Keep it in shows all the lap time of 15.1. Tubs on the way to the green right now. Nathan Cock, Brady Johnson, that's all I think. Lane Golding and Isaac Amos. The real, the real ones in the envelope there, bro. Hey, uh, a big drive, but it's uh, been worth the drive already. Yeah, mate, uh, that's a good start anyway. It's always it's, it's a big meeting ahead, and um, this field here is an Aussie title field, so it's going to be an absolute cracker, and I just want to say, uh, uh, well, I don't know what to say to Monty family, but anyway, I love you. Come a long way to support it. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Uh, it was, and I had some epic battles over the years, and, uh, yeah, Anyway, um, yeah, this is the start of a good night. Let's go put six races together and hopefully get that top step for him too. And a lovely trophy later. Right, yes, well done, guys. Well done. Super job. Simon, pretty fitting to see uh, the boys pick that one up. Obviously, uh, that meant a lot to them. I, I actually feel they were a little bit surprised that they actually picked it up. But you know what? Looking at the times as we were writing them down, 
it was really sharp in that top end of the field. They were all on that 14.6 or thereabouts, you know, so... Yeah, Brody hasn't had the best of luck racing in Madrid. He's had a few crashes and a bit of bad luck of late this season. But Madrid, he, he seems to struggle to get it right. But he's he's dialed in. He, it's amazing to see Brody win the dash for cash. I believe it's his first dash for cash he's won here in Madrid. So he, he'll be stoked. But he's got his mind on the task. He's hungry. He, he, he stuffed up at the centenary. He had a few mistakes there. And he's he's looking for redemption. He he, he was really let down after the centenary. So tonight, he, he's, got his, he's got his eye on the ball. He wants it. So... He, Big confidence boost to get Dash of Cash, but he's now got the eye on the prize as the final. He, he's in for redemption. Mate, we, we have a cracker field here, and, and I think he summed it up. It's like an Aussie title without being an Aussie title, and that is absolutely 100% true. I mean, I look at the first few heats that we've got coming at you, and we'll give them to you. You'll see them on the screen as a happy uh, Cohen and Co. and Headlander. <laughs> Shaking the exposed signage and apparel dash for cash check. You imagine what it's like walking into the bank on a Monday morning with one of those and going, I want to cash this puppy, you're right. In actual fact, you get a little one in the envelope. But, um, mate, that's, that's awesome stuff to hang up on your wall at home, right? In the garage and the shed. Yeah, they look a little bit excited now. They just sort of sat in that they have actually won it. And he's got Jesse on the side, which is a former world champion, and he's a good passion in his own right. He's put on a couple of kilos there so he'll, he'll be getting mighty that couple of kilos jesse's put on to give him a bit more drive to get the uh <laughs> get the time over the line mate, maybe that's the kick right that's maybe that's the gig but anyhow look it is what it is you see the guys out there at the moment working the track up for the very last part of what's required to, before we kick off tonight hey uh, really must make sure that our uh, live stream people get a chance to hear all of our sponsors tonight we've got a huge range of sponsors that have picked up different heats throughout the night tonight some of them are businesses some of them are fans some of them are families that have been touched by what went on and, and picked up these things that were close to Warren and, and the Monson family. Um, and we'll make sure they each and every one of them get their hit on this uh, by name and, uh, and, and what with knowing most of them anyway. Uh, we'll make sure that you get that one-on-one that, uh, -on -one with them. So, Yeah, John, I actually wanted to really race this meeting myself. Uh, I was tied with a lot of was I did a lot of races. We raced over New Zealand together and what was it was he helped me so much and I really wanted to I actually rang Brody Cohen and asked him if if I could swing for him but mm. he said look I'm sorry Causey I've just I've got Jesse Hedlin on you know and, and sorry you've missed out by two days so probably if I was swinging from him he probably wouldn't have won the dash for cash but uh, now nah, look it's it's still uh, it's still an honor and a privilege to be able to help out with the commentary and you st essentially you still feel part of it and uh, it's it's amazing to sit up here on the container over Bay 13 and watch the bikes come out we've got the Murray River just behind us and it's it's fantastic the sun's just going down and it's it's just it's getting exciting now one thing I will say to people on the live stream um, and this is an open invitation that I'll provide to everybody there is that uh, if you haven't been here before and you get an opportunity to come, come and have a look at the place. You know, like uh, a lot of people, you know, probably live in regions well away. Uh, but the amount of, of talent that comes out of this region, the amount of different disciplines that come out of this region, and the amount of champions, Simon, that have come out of these two tracks, and I include that junior track as well, um, has been just phenomenal. I mean, I look at that Bob Crump gate signage you see there, the father of uh, the legendary Phil Crump, who went on to race internationally. Then his son, Jason, went on to you know to race internationally. Uh, he started as a junior at this track and, and progressed through. So it is a really amazing place, and not just for solos, for sidecars as well. I mean, you testify to that. Some of the guys that come out here are the best of the best. Oh, that's right, John. There's nothing better than being at the track live and watching it, being in the crowd and feeling the atmosphere, especially tonight. The atmosphere is fantastic. I can't believe it. The people are still rolling in, and we had an earlier start than normal, and the people were still here. They battled the heat, and they're still rolling in now, John. Thick, thick, and thick, and it's, it's going to be bumper to bumper tonight. It's, it's amazing to see, and it brings back the old days when Madrid used to pull up here on a Sunday night, and it was shoulder to shoulder back yep. then every sunday shoulder to shoulder so it reminds you back of the old days mm. it's a bit like beers and gears tonight isn't it right yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> yeah mate I, I am literally pumped tonight uh waiting for this to kick off because i and, and i've co I, I will make the statement i've said it before tonight and i will make the statement again yeah you know, we're in for some real surprise packets tonight i don't think any one of those guys out there racing tonight is able to put the hand up and go. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to drop some straight rides on the table and take this on a maximum. 
I don't think that's going to happen. There you go. There's my prediction for the night, right? Have you got a pick? Have you got a pick for the winner, mate? I've got to be honest with you. I, I think um, to to be able to give you that right up, um, hard yards. I mean, I, I look at the field um, when you've got the likes of uh, the Headlands uh, connected into this. Uh, Mark Plaisted, um, some real talent in amongst all of that, you know. And I'm not taking it away from guys like. Uh, you know, Brody Cohen and Jess Headland and guys like Darren Trelaw, Blake, Blake Cox, you know, all of these guys are solid performers, right? And they're good. They're good guys. Look, John, it sounds like you, you just need to make a decision, mate. Just pick a winner. Which, which one is it? Well, mate, <laughs> mate I, I, I really, I'm really struggling to give you the name of someone who's going to take it in, in the end of the day. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because they, they really are that tight. Um, you know, on form, the Headland guys have really been on fire. They, they really, uh, Mick Headland has been just a star with what, he, what has been this season already at Olympic Park. Um, you know, Mark Plaisted knows the place very well, you know. so and I, and I look at some of the lap times that are rolled through in just that dash for cash, you know. The cream is there. Um, I, I, I'm kind of feeling it's going to be a, a toss-up probably between those two guys. Yeah, look, it's good to see Mark Place here. It's been a long time since he's raced here, and I spoke to Pity at the start of the week, and he was just ecstatic to be able to race for his home crowd. Mark's got a fair bit going on now with his young family back home and, and work and things like that, so his schedule of, of racing, and he's been doing it for 20 years, John, so his schedule's not as busy as what it used to be. So a lot of these top-end guys, they've sort of cut back the last few years just because they've got family, kids, and life's busy. But, mate, kids, fear you not, they don't lose it. No, right? no, and Mark's the same. Mark's had a lot of success over here. He's had a lot of misfortune through the referee's decisions, which he's... he's um, a bit unhappy about, but it's it's good to see. It's great. Three times Australian champion, John. His first one was one here, yeah, and he's won them on the trot. Yeah. Three and three in the go. So uh, if yeah. he wins four on the go this year, it's I don't think anyone's ever done that. And mate, Darren Trelaw, take nothing away from that guy, right? Um, he's the closest thing that he, I would say is probably to a machine, right? He he delivers. This guy is is built to deliver. Um, the fact that you know he's come down for this one t tonight means that he really wants to not just be involved with it, but he wants to be in that top field, you know. So I, I honestly feel it's not going to be the fastest races tonight. It'll be the smartest races that win these heats tonight because every one of those heats, I mean, and I look at the first round of heats, and every one of them is a star in buried in amongst it, if not two or three. No, that's right, John. Every race is crucial, and you just can't afford to make mistakes. you just got to rack them points up. If yeah. you come a second or third, just head down, get get your head in the next heat. Don't worry about that. Get your head in the next heat, just rack them points up, get enough to get through the semifinals, and, and you can claw back 100%. you just got to keep getting them points. Don't worry about a loss, just get them points. And, and anything happens on a night like this, because oh. the field is so close, and it's, it's anyone's game by the end of the night. You know, th this is all about, uh, we talk about... Um, you know how how events run and the like. Um, this is this is not just about how fast you are on track. Th this is a fast event. All right, it it will power through heat for heat. There will be very few stoppages in this tonight, I, and I'm about to you know put put my views on it for that because they're all stars. They all know what's got to be done, and they also know that they've got to come back to deliver in the next round of heats. They are not going to knock anything around to try to win that trophy tonight. Trust me, that's the primary goal for every one of them out there today. No, that's right, John. It's, uh, it's definitely going to be a meeting set aside and, and completely on another level compared to the others. Look at Mark Place, that's right there. That's just amazing. He's got, he just steps it up with his presentation. They look fantastic for three times Australian champion. Mm. That bike just looks amazing, that bright orange. So happy to have all of our viewers on tonight. For those of you that did uh, subscribe and get into the um, live stream tonight, we do thank you for not just being involved, uh, but we really hope you enjoy the telecast tonight. We'll make sure that we pack it full of as many things as we possibly can for you. Talking about what, what the situation is, some of on the spots. We'll grab some people, some really key people in amongst the uh, evening tonight to have a chat to one-on-one. -on -one about their association, their connection, um, you know, and Simon, what we might do is we might actually end each of the interviews with a, with a quick one-up, you know, what, what is your most 
vivid recollection or, or vivid memory of, of Warren, you know, because this is about not just the, the heat of what the battle is for our gladiators tonight in this arena, but it's also about what that vision was of their connection, be it whether they raced with him, be it that they were connected within the team um, or whatever the, the facet was, you know, what, what is their key connection to them, uh, to, to Warren? Yeah, that's right, John. Look, we got the chalk out. We are moments away from getting started, guys. Even this first heat is going to be an absolute cracker of a first heat. Just getting the chalk ready, just getting them marked out for the gates. This is where the nerves start setting in, John. The races are just, especially in the first heat, you, you, you just want to see the other bikes go out and see what track conditions are and just sort of want to see what everyone else is doing. But to be first out, it's always daunting, but... These blokes will rise to the occasion. Okay, just quickly before we kick off tonight, a couple of quick ones. The referee tonight, Cameron Woodward, ex-racer, good guy. He'll look after us. Clerk, of course, Jason Stewart and uh, Jock McLeod. Uh, big thank you also to our starters tonight on the pit gate. Robbie Ferguson, Rob Grant, uh, Adam Ferguson, Mick Stambra and Matt McWilliams uh, and all of the uh, people involved. Thank you so much for your connections here this weekend. We do thank you for the connections all around. First heat away is brought to us by Oz Glazing. Thank you to Peter O'Loughlin and the team there. And out of red, we have Mick Headland and April Cottrell, which is uh, correct. Uh, Trent, of course, uh, moving into uh, the red. Mark Plaisted and Benny Pitt uh, out of blue. Shane Hudson and Adam Constable out of white. And confirmed is Max House and Riley Commons out of the yellow. So that's how they sit for Oz Glazing tonight in... Heat one, event one for the Monson Memorial here this weekend, uh, Simon. Yes, he's going to be a big ask from Max House, a young fella out of yellow. It's going to be interesting to see what he does. They've got a, a stacked field in, on the inside of him. So this, this is going to be a cracker for heat one. Trent Hedlund, watch for Trent Hedlund out of red gate. He, he's going to be wanting it. He's going to be super quick. So Shane Hudson, look, guys, what a cracker first heat. Mark Place said out there too, what a cracker. That is Mark Placed. Yeah, Mark Placed and Betty Pitt. Um, you know, yep. out of blue. Out of the blue is what we've got here. And Benny Pitt. As I said, great to have uh, Cameron Woodward on uh, on the. Levers tonight, drawing and refereeing for this one. Yeah, He's an international solo Speedway star, but realises clearly what Speedway racing is about. And a very, very fair referee too, I might add, Simon. He tapes it ready. We are moments away from the first heat of the night, guys. Let's keep an eye on him as the tapes fly. And we are away and racing. Great start on the inside for the blue, by the look of it, for uh, Hudson. As he get, got away nicely, Hudson and Constable now turn in with the red of Headland and Cottrell on the chase behind them. Uh, and, mate, there is not a lot of ground between those, Simon. We look back a bit further, Howes and Commons in the yellow. Yeah, Mark Place has just got a comfortable lead now. He's just mm. streaming ahead nice and smooth. They all popped a bit of a mono at the start, so it must be a bit of door out there, and Mark's just pulling away nicely. Back into the field, we see the white of Hudson and Constable, but take nothing away from your lead guys in the blue with Plasted and Pitt. They are really solidly looking for the points in the first one tonight. And why wouldn't you? I mean, if this is your first hit out tonight, you're going to rack up three points, Simon. That's what you're after. So let's watch them as they travel through. I believe the checkered will be uh, prepped this time out, so it'll be three points in the bank for the uh, the blue team of uh, Plasted and Pitt. Man. What an epic battle for three and four we just missed. But that's just three times Australian champion there, Mark Place. What a great way to start the night. He'll be pumped with that and just shows a, a cut above the rest. You know, he just rode that smooth and smart and he was very fast. So I don't know if you notice the noise of these new motors now, John. They're a cross-plane engine. There's a lot, majority of the bikes out there now are cross-plane engines. They're a new Yamaha configuration and they're just fast. They talk and it just goes to show that was just unbelievable. Mark Place said, great win. Mate, he would be absolutely pumped or stoked to uh, to be able to uh, roll through and, and take three for the kickoff tonight. 
Yeah, it's a good start for the United. You always want to rack up as much points as you can. A win, a win is a win. You know, you can't take that three points away. So, fantastic start to him. And Trent Hedlund looked like he was struggling a little bit with his setup. It's a bit, bit heavy out there, so he, he'll get that sorted. But, yeah, great first start. Looks like the next group coming out. This is event two tonight, heat two for our Monson Memorial. This one's proudly brought to us as the uh, as the graphics will come up shortly uh, by Joe Rodder from the EMAS or EMAWS group, the Event Management and Admin and Safety Services. In this one, we find Josh Pascoe and Greg Black out of the red, out of the blue, Mick Headland and Brenton Kerr, out of the white, Nate Headland and Jackson Rayner. And out of the yellow, Brody Cohen and Jesse Hedlund, uh, our our fast lap uh, winner tonight, our single lap uh, dash for cash winner. I reckon he'll be looking for trying to uh, consolidate on some success already tonight. Yeah, look, it's going to be interesting what Brody Cohen here they are lining up. They're ready to go. It's going to be interesting to see what Brody Cohen does out of yellow. Watch for Brody Cohen. Also, Mick Hedlund out of blue. He's a fast charger, so yellow and blue keep your eyes on. Yeah, let's keep an eye on them now as they get ready to roll out and roll through. Yellow, of course, on the outside either is a gate that is very kind to you or it's a gate that makes you work for your, for your money tonight. So here we go. We get away nicely. And it looks like it might be the yellow that grabbed the start out as we picked, predicted Brody Cohen, Jesse Hedlund. Wow, as they turn into the corner now, the what? blue pairing of Hedlund and Kerr. Why? Wow, wide run for them as the red of Pasco and Black now on the chase. What an absolutely beautiful turn one from Brody Cohen. He is checked out, cleared traffic, and he's gone. Mate, he really has the numbers tonight, no doubt about it. As we look a little further down the field, and it is cluttered for the second, third, and fourth. The blue of Headland and Kerr from the red of Pasco and Black. Tail enders in the white. There's Headland and Rayner. Wow. Would not have picked that in a fit, Simon. Yeah, the yellow gate, mate. Awesome. If Brody Cohen is just so smooth, and he's just fast tonight. He's certainly looking class act a material in this one tonight for event two as Cohen grabs the three points and uh, stacks them away very very happy dash for cash winner Brody Cohen and first heat for the night for the win that he's family back home would up in Queensland they'd be stoked to be watching this hopefully they're watching it g'day to the Cohen, Cohen guys back in Townsville what a great win by Brody Cohen Jesse Hedlund amazing Brody Cohen banks the dash for cash <laughs> Banks the first ride out for the night with three points. Mate, super effort for him. He would have to be pumped on that. Like I said, John, he's looking for redemption from the centenary meeting, and that just goes to show he's, he's, he's got his mind on the task. It's going to be watch him for the nights, guys. He's going to be one to watch. Let's roll through and have a look at uh, what will be our next heat as the guys prep. Um, and we'll see the, uh, the, the, the names and the placings, uh, or rather the starting gates, pop up for you very, very shortly. Okay, we move into Heat 3. We'll need Heat 3, and we'll show you what that looks like shortly. There it is. And this one's brought to us by Cleves Gardening Supplies, and, of course, uh, ex-racer in Andrew Cleve and his team. Uh, have to absolutely love being connected to this. Let's go through the uh, order for you for Heat 3. Out of the red, Damien Nish and Mitch Spear. Out of the blue, Darren Trelaw and Blake Cox. Out of the white, Byron Gates and Mick O'Loughlin, the uh, local pairing here in uh, Muldura. And then uh, on the yellow, we find Ricky Stevens, Nick O'Brien, semi-locals uh, to the side here. Obviously, for those that aren't aware, usually travelling in from uh, over the estate, out of Broken Hill. So, Yeah, so Nisha, Damien Nish is on a borrowed bike from Brody Cohen. Brody Cohen's been nice enough to lend him his spare bike. Damien Nish's... Uh, bike was en route and they had some car trouble. They hit a kangaroo or suffered some car damage, so he wasn't able to race. So Brody Cohen's lending his spare bike, which is that's big for Brody Cohen, because if his main bike doesn't go anymore, then he's got no spare bike, John. So that's uh, probably something I wouldn't do on a meeting like this, but that just goes to show that Speedway's family, and well, that just, just goes to show you want to get your mates on the track and race it. And Nishi really wanted to race this track. Well, Simon, I'd actually go as far as saying that probably they would share that bike through the night tonight. And the reason for that is because this is truly about racing for Warren tonight. It's not about a title, a trophy to say that that gets me into the next round of whatever it is for the Aussies or whatever. This is purely about racing tonight. So I'm, my gut kind of tells me that, you know, a borrowed bike is a bike raced. 
uh, and, and not to lock out in a way. So, you know, that, that would be what I think is the, the play. But, hey, either way, we're here for Cleves Garden Supplies for this one. That's right, John. Here they are, the guys. Passengers just get a few, few heat races now. The gates are going to be torn up, so the passengers just looking for a good straight straight rut to get their bikes in and pack a bit of dirt so they don't bottom out. And They're at the ready. They're not far moments away from heat three. All righty, let's uh, rack them, stack them, and fire them out watch, of the hole, huh? Watch for Trelaw out of gate blue. Just a bit unsettled there. Here we go. Both the guys look like they're pretty comfortable down on the start line. Tapes away. Great start in the blue, as predicted, for Darren Trelaw. The yellow of uh, Rick Stevens and Nick O'Brien high on the line, and that lets the niche and spear through. So they're the pair that uh, are currently fighting it out for the uh, middle placings. They take nothing away from that blue of Darren Talor and White Clocks. They are out on the circuit and making huge ground in uh, clearance out of the rest of the pack. Yeah, we've got a great battle for second and third. He ricks just on his on Nishi's tail there, but Darren's just checked out. Just years of experience shows through. He'll just take it easy now for the win and Mate, take nothing. Take nothing out of the white of the local pairing, Byron Grant and Mikko Lachlan. Looks like they've put the move on that yellow of Stevens and Ryan, so, uh, and that's folded out again. So, great battle back into the field, but it's right at the front now where it looks like Darren Trelaw and Blake Cox are going to take the win. Yeah, great ride by Darren Trelaw, Blake Cox. Just flawless, really. Just got out early, checked out, just smooth run. Just didn't didn't over exert the bike. Just a smooth four laps, and that's why Darren's so good. He can just get out in front, and he knows it. It's it's hard for them to get around him, so he can he can just hold a nice good line, and you know he knows that he's it, fast enough to hold that line. Very interesting fact with Darren Trelaw here in Mildura. I don't know whether you've ever dug into this, but I can tell you, okay, because that's my forte, um, that when you see him when he was racing at peak. His lap times here within a heat were almost the same every time. That's why I, I kind of labelled him as a machine earlier on tonight for that very, very reason. That's how, how clean and almost surgical is the word I'd use uh, he was. Very consistent. Right, I'll move on to the next sponsor for Heat 4, Event 4. This comes to us courtesy of the team at River 1467. Of course, our guys uh, involved with that with uh, our none other than commentator, uh, co-commentator in Damien Bradshaw, runs the drive time uh, piece. Out of red, Nathan Cock and Brendan Johnson. Out of the blue, Dave Bottrell, Darcy Ristrom. Out of the white, Kane Golding and Isaac Amos. So take Matt Crawford out of that one in white, and that's actually Isaac Amos in that one. Uh, and out of the uh, yellow, we'll find Kim Minerji and Shane Dolan. Yeah, it's good of the... Monson family to choose Coxie to race in tonight's meeting. He he was definitely very close with Warren, so they've picked Coxie to. It's more of a personal thing for mm. for Coxie to ride, so that's great. Tapes are at the ready. We're about to fly for heat four. Here we go. Tapes away. Great start yet again out of the centre. Looks like that blue guy is really providing some uh, some benefits for Dave Bottrell, Darcy Ristrom. We've just had an incident on turn one there, John, and it was with Bottrell and Ristrom. It's interesting to see what the referee is going to do here. They just got tight. There was three, four wide in that. And they just, I'm not sure what the ref's going to do here. Maybe a turn one instant and all back in, I, well, I would say. I would say exactly that. We'll wait and see. I don't see any lights on the tower yet, so that's a pretty important part to look for. Um, and I think, you know, if I, if I look at it uh, holistically, it's probably better to have four in than, than three. But, you know, we'll wait. Look, they were very actually lucky they didn't get cleaned up there by the bike come behind. So that was a very, very good. Yet again, still looking across that, uh, that tower. I still can't see anything as an exclusion out of blue there. Yeah, let's hope it's all right. It's back in. Looked like it had a bit of contact there in turn one, and they sort of, sort of spun them out. So it's going to be interesting what the ref decides. As I was saying before, it's great to have the team at uh, River 1467 involved here this weekend, of course. Great supporters of the uh, the racing down here. 
Don't forget, of course, from 5.30 in the morning to 8.30 uh, weekdays, you'll have the pleasure of having Dave Burrows on breakfast uh, on River 1467 and the home run, which, of course, is uh, weekdays from 2pm on with our, with our very own Damien Bradshaw, who will uh, look after you on the airwaves on the AM slot, 1467 uh, River. And they're, they're, uh, their analogy to everything is this, it's about feeling good. And, mate, I think we're all feeling good tonight. Yeah, I'm excited. I've been waiting for this one to happen, this meeting. So it's in, it's in honour of Warren Monson, so it's going to be a great night. And we've already got a bit of controversy at the moment, John, so let's just see what happens. I think we've got all riders back in, which is a fantastic outcome. Yeah. Bot's got uh, first turn, you've got to allow a little bit here and there, and a bit of contact was made, and, and Bot's spun out. So that's great to have all four back in. Let's just see if we can get a clean start now, John. It'll be interesting to see. They were pretty tight together coming into that first turn one. Mm. Well, you know what? It's, it really has been showing tonight, uh, Simon, that that blue and centre, you know, blue up to those yellows on the outside of the gates, it's probably been providing the best starts across it. You know, I might go as far as also saying that some of the uh, some of the cream's been sitting in some of those gates as well. But anyway, we'll wait and see how it travels through, right? Tapes away and we are clean into it away. Better start this time on the inside and outside, uh, but centre and front and centre in the whites for Byron Gates and uh, rather I should say um, uh, the white of Golding and, uh, and Amos. Now we've got a red light in the action. Looks like the white of Amos might have dropped. And that will definitely become an exclusion now, Simon. That was very close. That was. Mm. I'm amazed how Bottrell did not. A Bottrell heads off to Bottrell. He did so well to avoid that passage. That passage had just come off, and got a bit unsettled. And Botts did so well not to run him over. That was pretty epic if you're watching that on the live stream. Uh, and Botts was lucky. He had a bit of a bad start, so he'd be he'd be thanking the race gods that he's got another go at it. But. No one's hurt, which is a good thing. Take nothing away from these guys. They are pros. They know what they're doing out there, right? So, um, you know, as much as that looked uh, to be a, a really sharp piece of work in there, um, and I take nothing away from it, they all understand what they've got to do to, to ensure the safety. The safety of each one of these guys that are racing out there is paramount to them. And, and each and every one of them, you can talk as a... As a racer, um, Simon, you know, it's, it's imperative that you look after your buddies out there. Oh, 100%. And, look, he just got a bit unsettled there, come out of the mm. corner and just crossed it up a little bit and took off. And, and, and it's very hard as a passion to hang on when it's like that. The, the forces, and it's just near impossible to hang on unless you're zip-tied to the handles. But, you know, it's good that no one got hurt. And we've got a red light on, so we've got an exclusion. We've got three rider bikes. So Botcher will be stoked that he gets another go at this. He... I don't know whether he had bike problems or he missed his fell asleep at the start, but come on, bots. Tapes at the ready. The third start tonight. Here we go. Wow. Wheels in the air. Wasn't the greatest starts from the red for Cock and Johnson. Let's look at the front half of the field, though. Take nothing away. It is the, uh, the blue pairing of Bottrell and Ristrum. Yeah, Bottrell just got out a good start. Menadou popped a massive mono and he just lost a lot of ground and Bottrell just just got away smooth. But you've got Menadou, he's starting to hunt him in. He's, he's working on him. Kim Menadou, Shane Dolan at the moment on the charge and making ground, as Simon's pointed out. You know, they've got pretty much one more to travel before they hit the yellow, then there's the last lap. You know, if it's going to happen, Simon, it's got to happen. Yeah, he's in charging. That. He's coming home strong. It's... He's very close. He's reeled him in. It's got oh, it's over the finish line. Oh, he's done it. No, he hasn't. We've got one more to travel, Simon. One more lap to go, buddy. Nice and excited, though. Good to see it. Right at the front of the field, though, is the yellow of Menadieu and Dolan, who have spaced themselves well away now. No challenge coming there from the blue pairing of Bottrell and Ristrum. And the back end of it will be the pairing of, uh, as I said, the red of Cock and Johnson. What a race by Kim Manager. I got a bit excited there. I thought that was a checkered flag. Well done to Kim Manager. I think Bottrell must have a bit of bike problem there. It wasn't performing as it should, but what a great race all the same. Race time of 
Now we move into round two. Well, this is uh, rather the round, first round of heats for our support sidecars uh, in this one, Simon. In this one, we find uh, a different group of guys. So out of the supports tonight, as they gear up, ready to go. This is brought to us proudly by the team of Muldura Waste and Recycling. Thank you to Mark Wilson for this. And out of the red, we'll find AJ Pierce and Eli Bock. Out of the blue, Stephen Fowler and Jeremy Sherwood. Out of the white will be the pairing of Dean Hobbs and Daniel Woe. And out of the yellow, it'll be Chris Walker and Matt Crundwell. That's how we're going to see them play out for the first one tonight. And this one for Mark Wilson and the team at MWR, Mildura Waste and Recycling. Thank you so much, Mark Wilson and your crew for sponsorship to Event 5 here tonight. Yeah, local rider AJ Pierce and Eli Block. Nice looking bike there. He's just got a new R1 cross plane running, so they'll be interesting to watch. This is going to be, there's going to be some good racing against these support guys too. They're, they're, they're no B graders, so most of these are A graders. They've just missed out on the main field, so this this will be still some great racing by these guys. I to tell you, it was really cool to hear, and people online may well hear it uh, with our crowd mic. Uh, the crowd have been quite vocal and pretty active tonight, and I think that's pretty amazing because they know it's all here about good time tonight, you know, and that's exactly what we're having, Simon. Yeah, the sounds of these cross planes just sound amazing too. So mm. here we go for the first of the sport races. So Pierce and Bock out of red, Fowler Sherwood out of blue, Hobbs and Lowe out of white, and Walker and Crumwell out of yellow. Any indication of what the gates have been like tonight, Simon? Uh, I would think Fowler Sherwood, maybe Hobbs, Lowe or Walker and Crumwell, any one of those three gates from the blue out of the yellow have been paying the dividend, although that's not looking good for the blue pairing of Fowler and Sherwood. Once they have stalled engine, they've got to get that mobile light to fire, you know. Yeah, they're popping a lot of monos off the start, so there must be some drive out there. You watch the, the, the bikes are just launching really well, so you don't really want to launch a mono too high. You lose, you're not getting forward, you're going up and not forward. You want to keep it down and low. You want a good little jump, keep it down low and just get to the, get out of that gate as quick as you can. If you're popping a mono, you're going up, you're not going out. So that uh, Walker and Crumble backed away from the gate. The others are quite happy to stay there. And in a lot of cases, you know, while there's this activity going on, these guys are probably sitting there on the clutch, uh, which is not a great thing. The clutch is uh, obviously open and a little bit of friction building in that. And that's the last thing you want. You see a lot of solo guys tip the bike over, and that's to keep the clutch engaged without losing the friction. In it. Wow, we're away. Looks like it's the white of Hobbs and Lowe that got the better of the start. And one not running. Looks like it is the blue pairing of Fowler and Schert. So they've checked out early. Yeah, massive, massive mono by Chris Walker at the start, but he's pulling it back. He's starting to reel in Hobbs. Let's see what happens. So hot. Chris Walker, Matty Crumble in second, and the red pairing of AJ Pearson, Eli Bock back into the field. But it is the 970 crew, the white crew of Hobbs and Lowe that are currently doing the business out there. Great to see that there's not a lot separating them. Though, mate. Let me tell you, the battle for second and third is just as hot as it is for second and first out there now, Simon. Yeah, he's just holding on to the lead there. They're coming home. They're very, they're very close together. You can't make mistakes when it's like this. AJ running a real low line. Yellow flag, one to travel now for the lead rider in the wide of Hobbs and Lowe as they charge through the pack. And they've got away well and truly from the red of Pierce and Bock now. Here's the checkered flag being rolled out for them. And it is three points in the bank for the white pairing of Hobbs and Lowe. Yeah, she was a close finish there. Walker just coming up behind him over the finish line. But, yeah, no, well done to Hobbsy. Great, great win from the 970 team. Great race by AJ with the new bike, just trying to get it worked out and get a feel for it. So that, that's fantastic from the local rider having a go. Always daunting running a new bike and seeing what response issues you got. And Mate, I, I, I'll probably, you know, speak for all of the guys out there, but uh, everybody together... Probably not too worried about placings in these uh, support sidecar rides other than the ability to be able to ride this meeting tonight, you know. It is uh, it is a real privilege to be able to do that. You know, these guys will be excited just to race and get out there, do some laps in front of a good crowd and then ride in memory of Wazza. So Good to see uh, Kenny Reid here in the official shirt and in the blue waving the program. That's the uh, Jason Stewart... Uh, uh, official there, one of our key guys, president, and uh, at like for the club. Um, super friendly guy, loves to promote the, the racing here. Um, and just a couple of uh, people that we've sort of picked out of what we see through our telecast tonight, give you an opportunity to sort of see 
those uh, people in the background, you may never ever understand who it was until we uh, actually picked it out. And as you can see, Clerk, of course, he's the guy you don't want coming down saying, I need to talk to you, right? He's coming down to chat to you. It's not about work, what you want for Christmas or what you're going to get for your birthday present. You're probably going to get something earlier than those two, right? Just look in the background there. They, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for these guys to come out, the chook chasers, I call them, the dirt buck. These dirt bikes are the six of the best. They're going to be fantastic. Wait. Next heat after this one, we'll talk about that. I'm mate, excited to watch them guys. Mate, why do, we, why do we do that? Okay, and this one now out there we'll find uh, is proudly sponsored by the team at Dynabro, the pressure cleaning group. Thank you so much, Chris Brown and your team, for your sponsorship to Event 6 here. Out of the red, Matty Benz and Jared Kudzorki. Out of the blue, Byron Mordaunt and Lee Pitlapoitivan. Connor Curran and Cam Nichols out of the white. And Brian Sylvie and Glenn Zaworski that'll come out of the yellow. We're just waiting for them to stack in there and get them ready to pull the rubber band back, Simon, and fire them out of that hole. There's a few hard names there, John. You did absolutely well to did uh, you have a I'm telling you, I'm not going to even have a go at Craig. <laughs> you did so well. Anyway, tapes at the ready. We're about to fly. Oh, back a little bit in the blue there for Mordaunt and Lapoitevin. You know what, the guys are pretty good, though. They're uh, pretty fair about the whole deal out there. You don't want to touch them tapes, guys. This, this ease back. This ease up. Yeah. Calm down. Calm your farm. We're good. By the look of that. Okay, for Dinah Bro, Pressure Cleaning, and Chris Brown, Event 6 in front of you right now. Looks like the red of Benz and Kudzorki checked out. It's the blue now of Mordaunt and Lapoitevin, front of field, and look at the goods. Yellow now of Brian Sylvie and Glenn Zaworski, out of South Australia, looking good. And it is the white pairing of Connor Curran and Cam Nichols. Man, they putting the heat on Sylvie and Zaworski now. And going under them by the look. I don't know whether this will hold this way, and it will. That is the white of Connor Curran and Cam Nichols who relegate Brian Sylvie and Glenn Zaworski back through the pack. So that's just a uh, done deal there. Take nothing away, though, Simon, from our lead guys in the blue, Mordaunt and Lapoitevin. They are out of here, guys. Mate, great battle for second and third. And the crowd are going, the crowd are amazing tonight. They're very vocal and they're, they're, they're going off their heads, so it's great. Yeah, like I said, they are really a vocal crowd tonight and we're loving it. Okay, front of the field, Brian Mordaunt and Will Lapoitevin. There they go. Listen to that crowd. Well done. That's not a render crowd. That is everyone that is really looking involved and loving their racing tonight. So the win will go to the team of Mordaunt and Lapoitevin. I reckon second will be the team of... Uh, kind of current Jan there, second. Curran and Nichols, uh, Sylvie and L Zaworski, and then Bins and Kadzorki. Look, the atmosphere tonight, it's just really building. The crowd's still rolling in and the atmosphere is just set for amazing. These are my favourite, the Chook Chasers. Here they come. Josh Waters, Geordie Stewart, Rowan Tagart, Ben Brooks, Josh Knight. Unbelievable. You watch these guys. These guys are going to be amazing, John. Rightio, let's quickly give you a sponsor. Out of this one is the team at Mally Dodd Building and Development Proprietary Limited. Thank you so much to the team of John and Margaret Kelly for their continued input and support of local sport in this region. Across the gates we'll find Rowan Tagar, Nick Waters, Benny Brooks, Josh Knights, Jordan Stewart and Josh Waters. Looking at the numbers, so the 314 on the inside, that is Rowan Tagar. A little further across the field, find Nick Waters. The 112 will be Benny Brooks. The 450, I reckon that's Josh Knights. Then the 12 of um, Jordy Stewart, it is. And on the outside, the extreme outside, Josh Waters, superbike rider. We'll have a chat about him and uh, what he's been into this year. Um, he's had a cracker of a year, although he's had some injuries, so we'll talk to that. Here we go. Buckle up, guys. Three wide. Well, front of the field, take nothing away from it. It is that rider in Rowan to guard. This guy has been offshore, uh, Simon, racing not only in Australia, but offshore into the Americas. Uh, he's a little down the field now. Must, uh, must move up to the three. Geordie Stewart in the blue, right down the back of the field, a little bit further up towards the front. 
Looks a bit tricky out there with the track. They're just getting their heads around it for the first heat. But man, do they look good racing each other. These guys are right on the gas. There's nothing separating second, third, and fourth. Good battle Benny, for third Benny and fourth. Brooks, by the look of it, in second at the moment in the yellow. He grabbed second place as they finish for it. Oh, amazing first heat from the truck chasers, the dirt bikes. That was unbelievable. It, it, it doesn't do it a justice on the live stream, guys. Just watching them live trackside is just next level. But great bunch of blokes out there. They're all best mates, so... They're all going to be racing safe, and they don't want to take each other out, but they're going to be racing shoulder to shoulder, so it's great to see. Well, we might get a chance, uh, as these guys start heading the pits, very shortly we'll be doing part of our grower services track groom, which means there'll be a fair bit of work being done on the track out there. Mind you, they do it in a pretty quick uh, fashion, so that means we've got a gap that we can get a chance to chat to some people. I know we've teed up an interview with... Uh, None other than Jason Bradshaw, who's one of the guys that's been connected, uh, not just locally here, racing sidecars and this former Speedway for a very, very long time, but has a very close connection to, of course, Warren Monson as well. So we might, uh, see if we can't grab him, we'll cross down shortly and we'll start having a, a bit of a discussion with him as to uh, what life's been um, for him, uh, what's going on in his world and his connection with uh, the Monson family as well. Yeah. What better way to celebrate Australia Day than this? It's the Mildura Motorcycle Club 75th Anniversary Speedway Meeting Australia Day, Friday night, January 26th. Three times World Speedway Champion Ty Woofenden is coming to celebrate as he takes on Jamin Lidsey, Sam Masters, Justin Sedgman and Josh Pickering to name a few for the GT Windscreen's Phil Crump Solo Trophy. And then the sidecars will light it up with legendary names like Mick Headland and Byron Gates. Thanks to Karen cleaning its solos and sidecars on the one night what could be more Aussie than that thanks to the Kumiala Club gates open 5 p.m. main racing 7 p.m. Friday night January 26 Australia Day night Olympic Park Speedway 11th Street West Mildura May No one goes further than ATPI to get our customers and understand what you need. We know that different people in different roles in different industries need different things. And you want a specialist to deliver what really matters. We are on call at any time, getting your teams almost anywhere. Through our group of specialist businesses, ATPI Corporate Travel, Marine and Energy, Corporate Events, Sports Events, and Direct ATPI. We will deliver what really matters to you and your organization. ATPI, delivering what really matters. Supporting our community, the Kumiala Memorial Sporting Club, proud sponsors of the Mildura Motorcycle Club. Come into Exposed for all your uniform and workwear requirements. Apparel for every industry. We offer in-house embroidery and printing. Plus, can provide all your PPE requirements. Exposed Signage and Apparel, your locally owned and operated independent store. Support local. Don't pay too much for your tools. Pay tradie approved prices at Mally Bearings. Buy the tools tradies love, including Milwaukee, Makita, and Kinkro. Stocking a huge range, built tough for every trade application. Get personal service and advice in store from our tool specialists. Remember, buy Milwaukee, Makita, and Kinkro tools for guaranteed low prices. Smart tradies go to one place. Mally Bearings, the local firm with the local knowledge. Find us on the corner of Lennon Avenue and 10th Street.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you can hear, there's quite a bit of activity going on up here at Olympic Park tonight. Great opportunity within our breaks to get a chance to talk to some of our uh, some ex external people involved with the event here this weekend, albeit whether they're acquaintances or not. First opportunity we get to talk to will be to Jason Bradshaw, who's currently with Simon Cores down in the pit area. So we'll throw down to Simon for him to have a quick chat to Jason. Yeah, thanks, John. Yeah, I'm just down here with Jason Bradshaw, local racer. Was a legend in his own right. I started my career with Jason Bradshaw and got me into racing and uh, we had a good time. And Tell us about Woz, Brady. You were mates with him called the Gold Gold Crew. Yeah, I first came across Warren when he was at uh, Mildura Motorcycles. I bought an FZR engine. Actual mechanic that worked on it at the time. Uh, Warren approached me um, just on the side and he said, look, Brady, I'm happy to build your engines for you and I'll do it for free until such time as I think I'm, you know, got my eye in because I'm interested in um, doing high performance stuff where he is pr predominantly just, you know, working on dirt bikes and whatever else. So that's how I got to, to meet Warren. Um, and we spent hours together in his shed, my shed, standing on either side of a bench, working over FZR motors. This went on right up until I retired. Um, and the bloke was a legend with engines. He always helped me out. Um, I rang him there one Wednesday afternoon and said, I need the head gasket done on my bike, Warren. He said, well, I won't be up to Mildura for a couple of weeks. I said, right, I'm driving down. So I drove down. You know, he put me and the wife up, fixed the engine. I said, what do I owe you, Warren? He said, oh, just pay for me dinner tonight. You know, things like that. He was, um, he was one of a kind, Simon. He really was, you know. Yeah, he's definitely an amazing character. He built some fast motors for us. We had a lot of good times racing, and we had to race him in the end. So tell us about how he started getting into Speedway. He built motors, and then tell us when he, what made him get into sidecar racing. Well, he was heavily, well, heavily into the the motorcycle scene, um, being from Gold Gold, there was guys like uh, Paulie Foster and Scott Cameron and Devin Gates that were actually riding at the time. And Paulie and Warren, I think, were best mates. Um, they would be able to fill in the, the, the gaps that I know, but I, you know, with the dealings I had with Warren, you know, he, he come down, he had a couple of rides on a sidecar and he said, his comments were, gee, I thought they'd go a bit harder. So, um, you know, things went on, we, we, you know, you and I, we eventually raced him, but before you and I got together, it was myself and Matty Logan. Um, Warren, next thing, he's, he's got a sidecar. So, and it sort of went from there. And you can look back on, you know, history's history, but he just got progressively faster. He got progressively better with building engines. He went to PD, PTR, uh, worked on superbikes. And, the, you know, the, the engineering and the technology he started to put into his own race bike, it showed on the track, you know, he was he was a force to be reckoned with and it's, I'm, I'm sad as that the man's not around to see this and I, and I miss him greatly. Yeah, it sounds like he was a good friend of yours and he, 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 he did tidy his racing up, he was a bit loose there at the start of his career, wasn't he? He was very wild, was it was. He uh, had a few excursions off the fence into the infield Everyone, you know, sort of, you knew you were in a race with Wazza at the start because you didn't know where he was going to come from. So, but, um, you know, in the end, he was as smooth as anybody else on the track. So, yeah. Yeah, he definitely tied his racing up and, and in the end, he was just flawless and it was win after win. And it, it, how many Vic titles did he win? Eight Vic titles, chasing, chasing nine. Uh, you yourself won a Vic title. They're not easy to come by, are they? No, they're, they're very, especially against Warren Monson too, by the way, but um, they're not, they're, you know, any race meeting's hard to win. Um, but Warren wasn't afraid to, to do different things either with his engines. He had a few different engine configurations that he'd used, um, you know, and he had success not just on the Thumper bike, but he had the one that he made up called the Screamer. I think he won the Oceanas or the World Cups in Adelaide on, on one of those engines. So, you know, he was a whiz, an absolute whiz. So... And it helped anyone on and off the track, didn't he? Absolutely everybody. Um, you know, I'd ring was a, you know, any time of the day and he'd, he'd answer and he'd help you out with the problem that I had. And I knew he was the same with everybody else. There were so many people that um, have had dealings with Wazza and he would approach people and say, oh, you know, I think this might, you know, might, you might need to try this. And he was normally always right. We've got to wrap it up there, Brady. What's the fondest memory you had of Wazza, quickly? Um, driving around in his old purple HRU down the... 
down uh, Red Hill. Ah, thanks, Brady. Enjoy the night. Thanks, guys. Back to you, John. Good on you. Thanks, Simon. Rightio, we'll move on to the next of our racing tonight. And a uh, big thank you to Jason Bradshaw and the team there. And Causey, of course, down there doing uh, what's required with our on the spotters. So let's have a look now at Heat 5 for the Monson Memorial. Event 8, this one proudly brought to us by the team at, uh, or the uh, group of Marty Underwood and Brett White, of course, uh, ex-passenger uh, and Marty Underwood. Uh, and big thank you to these two guys for their support tonight. And um, they'd like to thank uh, the Monson family, would like to thank uh, them on behalf of that. Out of this one, Kim Menadieu out of red, out of the blue, Trent Headland in April Cottrell, out of the white, Josh Pascoe and Greg Black. And out of the yellow, Byron Gates and Mick O'Loughlin. We are good to go for Heat 5, and we are into it. Solid start, although the red of Menadieu and Dolan, no starters in that one. Bikehead and infield. Let's have a look down the back straight, though. It is tight ride between Gates and O'Loughlin on the outside line. And the blue now of Trent Hedlund and April Cottrell. Looks like they got through underneath and uh, looking pretty solid now as they start setting sail for the next set of turns. Whoa, almost overcooked it in the blue there for Hedlund and Cottrell. But Gates and O'Loughlin now still looking pretty solid behind him. Yeah, it was a great pass by Trent Hedlund. He just come in underneath, give him a bit of a tap, tell him I'm coming through, and he just passed. It was a nice pass, fair, fair bump play on, and now he's just checking out, just getting some smooth laps in. Gates is still hard charging, but Trent Hedlund definitely good pass, and he's just sailing the way to the victory. Can uh, confirm the white of Josh Pascoe and Greg Black also in field. So that's two out of the four that we won't see this checkered flag now. That is the three points. Going the way of the blue of Trent Edlin and April Cottrell. So they pick up the win. Byron Gates and Mick O'Loughlin grab second. And there's a uh, DNS for the team of uh, Pascoe and Black. And Menadieu and Dolan, a DNS for did not start, a DNF for Pascoe and Black. Yeah, they'd be happy with that win, Trent Edlin there. He's got young April Cottrell on, young, young female passenger, which is very rare to see these days, and she's having a red-hot crack. She's actually a very good passenger, and that team is gelling together very well. So they're, they're going to be the ones that will be at the pointy end of the night. Right, yeah, we'll be moving on now to Event 9 shortly, and this one proudly brought to you by the team of the Gates family, and the Gates family is another name that's absolutely uh, uh, iconic in sidecar racing. have been around for a very, very long time. Uh, Les and John Gates going back for many years racing. A group of their own kids that race through and continue to race today, uh, as you can see out there on track tonight, uh, with Byron Gates uh, still still running. So big thank you to the Gates family and their message in their uh, sponsorship of this particular event, Event 9, Heat 6, is to RIP Wazza. We'll miss you, and Speedway won't be the same. Let's give you the heat uh, as they... Uh, fold through. It is the team of uh, Dave Bottrell and Darcy Ristrom in the red, Damien Nisha, Mitch Spear out of blue, Mark Plaisted and Ben Pitt out of the white. The yellow of Nate Headland and Jackson Rayner out of uh, the outside as per the uh, screenshot we had earlier with our uh, titles. Waiting for the guys to come forward. Let's watch the gate of white. Three times Australian champion Mark Placen and Ben Pitt. They'll be uh, they'll be hard charges out of this start. They'll be the ones that'll get out and check out, but they won't be unchallenged for sure. Oh, Damien Nish, Mitch Spear in there amongst it, uh, and out of that blue gate, that has been working exceptionally well tonight as well. Yeah, young Nate Headland out of yellow. He's a surprising package. It's going to be interesting to see how he goes, but they, these this will be a cracker of a race too. Hmm. As I said, we'll, we'll wait patiently now for these guys. You can see the Hedlund Rainer bike there, which is in the yellow. Right beside them in the white, that is that black chrome sportswear bike of Hedlund and Kerr. Look, scan a little further. There is the blue of uh, Damien Nish and Mitch Spear. And then in the outside, Bottrell and Rister. Here we go. We are good to go. Tapes away. Not a great start out of the blue for Nish and Spear. But let me tell you something for nothing. Mark Plainstead and Benny Pitt on fire. They came out of the hole there. Absolutely swinging from the get-go. That is the way you start sidecar racing this, uh, this afternoon and this evening here. Hedlund and Rayner, look at them. Streaking away from, uh, from their nearest opponent. 
in the red of Bottrell and Ristram. Yeah, great start by Mark Place. Said, yeah, young, young Nate Headland just followed him out, and he's just trying to track Mark down. But Mark, Mark's just got unbelievable speed. But well done from Nate out of yellow to be he's sitting in second. But Mark's just going to cruise on to victory. He's very, very clever when he's out in front. He knows that he's got the pace to keep, keep, keep a tight line, and it's very hard to go around someone like that. So look, he just that three times a trend. Look at his line; it's just perfect. And, you know, it's a really funny thing, you know, sometimes being that far in front and you know you're in front that to that degree um, means that you almost press on to push to see what your fastest lap time or as quick as your lap times are going to be. Yeah, absolutely great ride by Mark Place. It's three times a strange champion. What a great outfit, great-looking team. And, and Pete, look, fantastic. Won his first Aussie title here in Madura. And he's gone three on the trot since. So it's going to be interesting. Tamworth's the next Aussie title this year, John. So they're all going to want to put a stop to him this year. So if he goes four in a row, that's an, no one's ever done that before. So it's going to be an amazing effort by Mark. But Correct. He knew he was it pretty well. Raced him, raced him week in and week out. And he's he's this is one he would never have wanted to miss. So And he's racing in honour. And if he gets it tonight, he'll be that stoked that he's won was his meeting. Right here, we'll move on to event 10, Heat 7 tonight. This one is proudly brought to us by Brian Wern. And thank you, for Brian, for your involvement as one of the fans of uh, Warren Monson and the Monson family would like and team would like to thank you for your connections. Out of the red, Darren Trelaw and Blake Cox. Out of the blue, Nathan Cox, Brendan Johnson. Out of the white, Mick Hedlund, Brenton Kerr. And out of the yellow, Shane Hudson and, and uh, Adam Constable. That's how they're going to line up for Heat 7 tonight. Take nothing away from Trelaw and Cox on the red. I don't think we've had a win out of red tonight. This will be a good battle between Trelaw and Hedlund and Hudson. It's always mm. a good battle between Trelaw and Hedlund, both on both on cross-plane engines. So this this battle between the Giants, these gladiators will do well to go head-to-head. -head. So watch for Trelaw out of red. He, he, he's going to get the win, I reckon. I've got me money on, on Trelaw. Yeah. But take nothing away from Mick Hedlund. He's going to want to take it to him. Made on screen now as part of the bot Wally's Bottle Yard, Newell's Composites and... Uh, the uh, general engineering crew there for Edland. This guy has been here this year. He's been to Olympic Park and won events and won, uh, I mean, in, in totality finals. So take nothing away from Trelaw as you picked it right from the inside, you know. The TRE bike, when it comes to battle, it brings its A game, all right? It never brings its B game, this guy. So let's watch them as they get away in event 10 tonight, Heat 7. Hope you're enjoying your live stream telecast tonight. Here live from Olympic Park Speedway. Tapes away. Great start in the centre of a headland. Trelaw in the in the inside line. Beautiful bit of work, but down the back the red of Darren Trelaw and Blake Cox as the yellow goes infield of Hudson and Constable. They've checked out early. So that'll be a DNF for them. Yeah, it's a great start by Mick on the outside. He just couldn't get around Trelaw. Trelaw just come up the inside and just had a good line down the straight. And, and Trelaw is just going to just just keep keep battling away at that lead and just keep getting further in front. But Mick Edlin's still going to hunt him down. He's not going to give up by any means. Simon, take nothing away from Mick Hedlund and Brenton Kerr. Have a look at the way they tip that bike in so hard. That is just washing off enough speed to make sure that you try to catch this guy. They've got one lap to do it in. But I am not kidding you. Darren Trelaw, Blake Cox, this is a very formidable pairing. Uh, they know what they're doing. They are looking for another three points. And there's the checker that's going to deliver it. And that's exactly how it's going to play out. First placing for Darren Trelaw, Blake Cox. Looks like it'll be the Headland and Kerr group for second and third for Nathan Cock and Brendan Johnson. Class act, Simon. Yeah, great ride by Darren. And again, Mick Hedlund, he's a hard charger. He's impressive to watch sometimes when he's definitely charging someone down. He uh, he definitely puts his brain in the toolbox and j jumps on the throttle when he's charging. But I spoke to Mick Hedlund at the start of the night and he it pulls on the heartstrings for Mick. Mick always parked next to Warren Monson and, and he just said, tonight's meeting, it's... I look over and was it's just not there, you know. So he was uh, he was a bit upset. They, they raced that many meetings together and, and it was side by side every time they raced Mildura. And I'd call Mick Hedlin a local. He never never not raced a Mildura meeting and he just said to look over and not see was it there. It was, uh, it was pretty sad. Let's have a quick look now to the next one, Heat 8. This is a Event 11 proudly brought to us by the team at Grenfell Fabrication and Maintenance. 
Thank you, Mick Grenfell and your family for your connections. Out of the red, we find Max House and Riley Commons. Out of the blue, Brody Cohen and Jesse Hedlund. Out of the white, Rick Stevens and Nick O'Brien. And then out of the yellow, Kane Golding and Isaac Amos. Yeah, watch for Brody Cohen out of blue gate. He's going to be confident in this one. He's going to. He's in a blue gate. He's in a good gate. If he gets out of that gate clean and, and checks out, he, he'll be laughing him on the hose. But he, he won't go unchallenged. Young Max House is going to be out of red. He's a quick gator too. He's very fast. So Rick Stevens too. He's unbelievable. This is going to be a good gate. Great gators race this one. They're all quick out of the gate. Kane Golding, but definitely. Rick Stevens is fast, young Max House. This is going to be an interesting one. Hopefully Brody can keep it down, not not come out in mono. Hopefully he can come out and just get to that corner first and he should be okay. You know, Brody Cohen and Jess Hedlund tonight, uh, Jesse Hedlund, between that pairing, you know, picking up the dash for cash, picking up the last ride and a win in that and lining up for the second one now, you know, if he can string that together, he he's bringing uh, real good form. And to be brutally honest with you, Simon, I reckon he's really switched on tonight. He really is in, in check with what's travelling. Great start out of the blue by the look of it, as we called it, for Cohen and Hedlund as they get away. Look at this for second, third and fourth. Man, this is like this is like dropping a thong and hitting four in one hit. Uh, four mozzies in one bang. That's how close these three are. That's just incredible. Yeah, good battle for second and third early on. But again, Brody's checked out. And if he keeps it smooth and tidy, he's got another three in the bag. Rick Stevens is going to hunt him down. But I think Brody's he's dialed in now and he's just going to keep just keep hammering it at home. So Ricky Stevens, Nick O'Brien in second. Third red hair, uh, pairing of Max Howell, Riley Commons. And right back down the field sees Kane Golding and I Amos in the yellow. But uh, bear no bones about it. Front of the field with the blue of Brody Cohen and Jesse Hedlund. They are looking good in that bank account dropping another three straight in the top of that slot of the piggy bank buddy yeah jesse's working overtime on that bike to get that around but they're they're motoring they're going really well no rick stevens was, didn't really lose much ground on him so but great great effort by both riders but Brody cohen another three points in the bag from the queenslander he would be super pumped on you Brody. So that's how they'll play out. Looks like it'll be Brody Cohen, Jesse Hedlund at first. Second for Rick Stevens, Nicky O'Brien, Kate Golding and Isaac Amos got fourth in that one. And it was Max House and Riley Commons who grabbed the third. Brody Cohen, Jesse Hedlund just giving the crowd a bit, crowd a bit of a wave. They're, they're pumped. They're, they're excited. Two wins off the bat. They'll be super excited. Right here, let's move into the next one for event 12, heat three. This is for Muldura Forklift Sales and Service Hire. Uh, big thank you to Jared Waters and all of your team down there. Thank you so much, Jared, for your connections. Out of the red, we'll find Connor Curran and Cam Nichols. Out of the blue, AJ Pierce and Eli Bach. Out of the white, Matty Bins and Jared Kazorki. And out of the yellow, Dean Hobbs and Daniel Lowe. And of course, this is heat three of our supports. So therefore, there are no uh, plates showing uh, or, or uh, plates of uh, information to show you who's riding where. So you'll have to rely on us giving you what's in that. The 970 bike there, the yellow of Dean Hobbs and Daniel Lowe, ready to go to war. Yeah, let's hope Matty Bin gets out a bit smoother now. He, he sort of went shot in field the last race. Let's hope he can get out and get some four good laps in. Matty Bins and yeah, Jared Katsorki. Yep. yep. <laughs> beside him. Say that, say that again. J Jared Katsorki. Jared Katsorki. <laughs> <laughs> Trust good me. effort. Well done, John. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. you're reading the names. <laughs> AJ Pierce, Eli Bike, you can see there in the blue hat colours. And the Connor Curran and Cam Nichols right on the inside in the red. There they are, right on your screen right now. Good to go. Great start out of the line for the red and yellow. Inside and outside are going to battle this one out. Connor Curran, Cam Nichols relegated to second now as the red pairing of, sorry, Curran, Curran, Curran and Cam Nichols front of the field with the yellow of Dean Hobbs and Daniel Lowe doing the chase. Oh, wow, this is tight for our support, Simon. Have a look at this. Mate, it's too wide. There's still his three wide there down that back straight. Dean Hobbs done well done. Uh, we've got AJ Pierce. Yeah. This is unbelievable with the supports. 
Pearson Bock now getting involved with this fist fight, and it is a cracker. Pearson Bock yet to open their tally. Oh, nice bump and bang, and that's exactly how sidecar race and roll sometimes. They went infield. The red of Connor Curran, Cam Nichols still on the journey. The white inside of Benz and Kazorki not to finish this one. Yeah, she's a tough call there, John. Connor just come out underneath AJ and give him a bit of a bump and crossed him up. And probably should have been a red light if it was the main field, but I think just being support, they've just sort of let that ride. We've got a real tight schedule to get through tonight, so but that that's racing. So finishing this one, uh, pretty simple. It is uh, first for Dean Hobbs, Daniel Lowe. Second for Connor Carr and Cam Nichols. And AJ Peace and Eli Bock grabbed third in that one. And the DNF went to Batty, Matty Benz and Jared Kudzorki. Move on to support sidecars heat four very shortly. And a big thank you to Paul Smith, who's uh, come to us out of Melbourne this weekend. Uh, he's obviously a relative of Phil Tatens. And uh, he's... Uh, this in Cam Lex Electrical, uh, keeping Victoria connected, uh, the sponsor to our event at Heat 13 tonight. Yeah, look, Don, it's going to be great when that sun comes down. We've got that sun just right at, a, right at the top of the track, and it's just putting a bit of glare on the track, but still beautiful to look at. But once that sun goes down, it's definitely going to, lights come on, it's definitely going to be an absolutely awesome atmosphere here tonight. The crowd... It's still rolling in the crowd. It's it's a great crowd for a for a good honourable man. Plenty of uh, noise in the house tonight. They are loving this. Yeah, it's the loudest I've heard the crowd in a long time. It's fantastic. It's it's good to see the crowd uh, get into it. And I it's reckon great. the greatest part about it at the moment, uh, Simon, is that the crowd's getting very vocal, but they're not getting vocal at any of us calling anything tonight because. Sometimes they let you know, right? But uh, I think we're pretty safe tonight. Hoping the live stream guys tonight on uh, line tonight. You're enjoying your telecast with uh, both myself and Simon Cause uh, this evening as we take you through this amazing event, the Warren Monson Memorial Meeting here this weekend. Tapes at the ready for the next support race. Here we go. Chris Walker and Matt Crumble, red. Brian Sylvie, Glenn Zaworski out of blue. Stephen Fowler, Jeremy Sherwood out of the white. And Byron Mordaunt and Will Lapointevin out of the yellow. And guess who's at the front? Who uh, is it, Simon? Brian? <laughs> Brian's the, the nice pink boy out in front by Brian. We've got a race Bo for here. Wow. wow. Checked out the red of Chris Walker, Matt Crumble. Let's see if that doesn't bring a red line. Hopefully they can get that bike off the track. Man, they are still stuck up there. I reckon we're going to get a red. And there is the yeah, red. Yeah, they just come in a bit hot there. They threw Mate, it in pretty hard. They, what uh, a solid jump for Byron Mordaunt and Will Lapointevin as they fired out of the gate. Mate, those guys were on fire. I'm, uh, I'm not game enough to is call it? them names. I'll leave that for Mate, you, John. They're a bit they, hard for my vocabulary. But uh, he just threw it in a bit hard there and... Uh, yeah, young Walker. Mate, that was a ton of motorcycle tubes that were stretched back to fire those boys out of that hole. <laughs> they nearly landed on the air fence. So, <laughs> But anyway, no one's hurt, so that's good. So I think they might, looks like they might do a rerun. And Let's wait for the ready. And you know what? While we're talking on that one, Simon, we will talk to that just to, for a moment. Uh, as you can see around the track, there are a number of areas on the corners that are white. They are the air fence. So this is a, a, an introduction of safety feature that was brought onto the club uh, or by the club many, many years ago to uh, help to provide. You can see that on the back end where those, uh, that screenshot is. And right to that last point near that bin is exactly where the air fence um, finishes. Then beyond that it is the standard rubber belting style fence where all the rest of the sponsors are. But you know what? It is a, it is a very, very safe complex to run to. Yeah, I've, I've hit the fence a few times in my time racing, John. I've uh, <laughs> rolled into it quite hard at Gilman and Woodrua. It's, uh, it is pretty soft to hit, but it's the it's the pace landing on the dirt before you end up finishing at the fence. Looking like hurts. we're mov moving on to Event 14, Heat 2 for our dirt trackers tonight. And I would say it would be, let's pick them from the uh, inside. We'll grab the numbers. It's the 450 of Josh Knights. Uh, then it's the We'll flip around to that front uh, picture if we can, so we can actually see the bikes. There we go. The one one two of Brooks. It is the twenty five of Josh Waters. There, the three of Nick Waters. 
the 314 of Rowan to Garten. On the outside, that's the 12 of Geordie Stewart. Well done, John, there. Just picking them bikes by eye. We haven't got the view on them, but here they are. Away they go. Okay, into it, and it's the 112 of uh, Benny Brooks, who looks like he's taking control of this one. Geordie Stewart sitting in third at the moment as they fire off the back turn. I reckon that'll be the 34 of. Uh, Let's have a look as they come down. The 314 of Rowan to guard front of field, and he's grabbed this by the horns and dragging it out. Plenty of noise as the crowd are entertained and by some of the best dirt trackers you'll find anywhere in this country. And they are right here tonight, uh, putting it on the line for you. They look like a handful to ride. They're really riding them things hard. They're throwing them in hard. No one really believes that you should be able to do that. It's like riding a two-wheel pogo stick, and all it wants to do is throw you off and hurt you, right? Mate, I wish I could ride as half as fast as these guys. You just don't realise how fast these guys are throwing that in. These things aren't not meant to do this, but look at them go. So as these guys come closer to a finish now with the chequered flag, it looks like it'll be the 3-1-4, or no, the 1-1-2. I reckon that was the... Uh, one uh, twelve of Benny Brooks, I reckon, might have picked that one up. We'll just have a look as he drops it to the deck. One one two, which was Benny Brooks that picked it up. So Benny Brooks, uh, third in the Vic titles in 2015. He does a lot of local enduros, and uh, any class at had a second. Uh, pretty cool dude. Uh, he'll be heading off this year to the American Flat Track Nationals. Uh, so we do wish him all the very best as he heads away on that one. Uh, and that's something that, uh, again, Rowan Tagart has done as well. Uh, and we'll get a chance to have a chat to um, possibly some of those guys as we uh, travel through uh, this evening. Yeah, it's good to see Josh Waters out there having a ride. His he's, uh, he's, he's, he's season nearly kicks off soon, so it's great to see him out here having a ride. He was close friends of the Tagarts, and awesome to see him out here. And uh, he, he'll... He'll be racing, but he won't be. He'll be just keeping in check. He can't afford to crash out for his Superbike series. So, but it's great to have him here doing some laps. Mate, very shortly, I might see if I can't get a hold of Josh Waters. We might have a quick chat to him as to what's gone on in uh, his career uh, so far last year and, and the start of this year as well. So, very shortly, we'll be with you on our live stream with uh, potentially Josh Waters uh, for a quick chat to what uh, things are in regards to him.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, great to have you down here to watch what's going on with the fantastic racing in this venue. And I can say quite clearly that we're only a small way into the night tonight and we've got some amazing things going on. And some really cool people that have come down to be part of what this amazing race is uh, or meeting is tonight. One of them is this guy. Hey, Josh Waters, thank you so much for coming down and having a chat with me tonight. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for, yeah, thanks for asking us. Josh, uh, obviously, you know, for you, you're across the globe, all over the place, a lot of racing in Japan, doing a lot with the Superbike Series here in, in the country. Uh, and all of those rounds, mate, it, it just takes a draw out of you, even though you're a local guy. You're on the move all the time, mate. Yeah, um, I love living here in Mildura, and that's what I uh, want to do. So maybe easier to live somewhere else, but um, I love it here. So, yeah, I'm very fortunate I get to, to race... Um, throughout a lot of beautiful places and um, I'm still doing it, riding a great motorcycle for a great team in the uh, ASBK Championship. And Josh, I know you had some injury in, in, in the run through for the season this year and mate, it was so amazing and I, and I say this personally, to actually go to the bend and watch you ride uh, so close on points and to almost clinch that title, albeit that you know my heart felt for you when you, when you had that off. Uh, but yet, mate, you were so composed, you, you pulled it up and you went away with what you did, with the points you did. Mate, that was just amazing for me to watch. And to know that it was a local guy was just so incredible, mate. So well done. No, I appreciate those nice words, John. Yeah, it was, it was great. Um, of course, I would have loved to have won. And, and the team and everyone involved would have loved for me to win. But I was happy. I tried my hardest. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I came second. I learned a lot last year. Um, yeah, and hopefully this year I can put it all together and I'll just keep... I say it all the time and it sounds boring, but I'll just try my artist. Mate, I'm not kidding you. I'm, I'm going to try to get to as many of those rounds as I can because I kid you not, it was just incredible to watch. It really was. And I think a lot of our locals probably that haven't been away to watch that are missing out on that. It's a bit like this here tonight, you know. We've got a lot of people on our live stream tonight that are actually looking forward to what goes on. And, you know, if they've never come to Olympic Park, they've really got to come and have a look, don't they? Yeah, 100%. So I was fortunate. I grew up, you know, coming here. I, I, in the summer, you, you you know, you loved it. And I remember all the the riders. I remember all the cleavies, the huffs, all them. Um, yeah, I was a little kid and used to race on me push bike as a speedway rider. And I was Lee Adams. And, yeah, uh, it was just something that we did. And... It's for sure, it's an, it's an amazing complex and yeah, always great racing. I find it so cool to have you here tonight because as much as, you know, you're not a speedway rider, you know, the fact that you come here and you mix it with the guys that are there, I mean, these are all your mates you're racing. It's so cool to do that, right? Yeah, so the last time I actually raced dirt track was 2017 here. So um, I had to go on, I've borrowed my brother's bike and I had to go on Thursday just to make sure that I could still ride a, a dirt bike. And then, yeah, um, I thought I'd come. Yeah, Rowan asked to, to Gart, and he's like, come on, come on. So, a bit of fun, and, yeah. Did it, take a lot of, did it take a lot of convincing? A bit. I was still, I was big time on the fence. So, touch wood, I do nothing silly, just have a bit of fun, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just for fun. It's not like um, when I go to the ASB gate, the Australian Superbikes or something like that, yeah. Correct. It's racing for bragging rights. It's not racing for titles, right? Yeah, 100%. So, yeah, and I hope yeah, everyone's enjoying it. Hey, Josh, I think probably the thing we can, we can finish on that little piece is that I think literally everybody here tonight, whether you're riding, uh, doing something different, helping out, or you're just a spectator or even on, on the live stream watching, we're all the better for it tonight because we're all winners, mate. We're all winners tonight, right? Yeah, 100%. So, uh, yeah, it's a fantastic. Like, the, the crowd that are here is amazing. For and yeah, I heard they said that I uh, was I didn't think anyone would come and you know look at the amount of people that are here. So I remember you know you're gonna miss you just always he got good here in the end. You'd see Waza was racing. You're like, well, he's gonna win. Who's gonna come second? That's kind of what it got to, right? But yeah, but the. But the, be but the beauty of it, though, Josh, was that he also made sure that if anyone needed help, he helped them out. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. So, um, yeah, I hope everyone enjoys the night, and yeah, every all these sidecar guys. I hope we on a good show. For you is also in the dirt bikes. Hey, Josh, one last question. 
quickly, what is your most memorable recollection of Warren Monson? Around here, doing the stuff he done. Uh, like I said, when you see his name there, it was who's going to come second. Josh Waters, thank you so much for your time today in, in what is a tight schedule. Thank you also for riding this one tonight. Really means a lot to the team here. Thank you, Josh. No, you're more than welcome. And like I said, I hope everyone enjoys the night. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Waters, one of our uh, guys locally rides in the Australian Superbike Series. Amazing guy. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in and watch what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the next of our rides. This is Heat 9, Event 15 of the Monson Memorial. In this one, we find it proudly sponsored by Aidan James and the family of James Transport, one of the local cartage contractors here in the Sunraysia region. Thank you, Aidan, and your family for your connections. Out of the red, we find Nate Hedlund and Jackson Rayner. Out of the blue, Kane Golding and Matty Crawford. Out of the white, Trent Hedlund and April Cottrell. And out of the yellow, Darren Trelaw and Blake Cox. That's exactly how they're going to play for us in this one, which is Heat 9, Simon. Yeah, this is going to be a great battle between Trent Hedlund, Avery Cottrell and Darren Trelaw and Blake Cox. Look for white and yellow. Them two are going to be battling head to head. This is going to be an amazing race to see these two go battle head to head. So... Trent Hedlund with the upper hand out of white a little bit, but Trent Trent Trelaw is just an unbelievable gator. So mm -hmm. let's see what transpires here. Young Cox is there going to do a bit of gardening. What he's doing here is looking for a nice straight rut. Darren's pretty perfectionist with his starts. If he can get out of the start first every time, he's he's got the race one. So young Cox is there. He's just looking for the rut, making sure it's not too deep. It's feeling if it's hard, if it's soft, he's just going to bog down. He's making sure they're hard. See, he's tapping to the dirt there just to make sure it's hard. And if it's nice, it's a nice rut, Darren's going to be happy and he's going to come out of it like a rocket. And the thing you'll notice, he's only going back the length of that bike. That's right. Because he, because he just wants that tyre, that rear tyre, sitting in that groove. Now, as much as he's come off to the side there, he's looking for something else. Darren's probably found something that he wants better than that. So, so he's just picked a fresh groove there. He's, he's unhappy with the ruts before. He's, he's just pulled into a new, new bit of dirt. So let's just see if it works for him and we'll see what happens. This is crucial out of yellow. Darren's going to want to get this gate out of yellow. Let's wait and see. Our starters are happy. They're walking away from the gates. Here we go. Tapes away racing. Lift in the centre from the white of Headland and Cottrell. That certainly didn't pay dividends for them. But let's look at the front of the field now. Wow. Three wide almost coming out of there. But it was the TRE uh, yellow hat colour of Darren Trelaw and Blake Cox that streak away in this one, Simon. Mate, that was an unbelievable turn one by Darren Trelaw. He didn't necessarily get out of the gate first, but he held that outside line. Unbelievable. He was, it was all or nothing, and he rode it all the way out down to the back straight. Unbelievable effort from Darren Trelaw. That just shows his experience, and that was, that was so impressive to see. Mate, I would say that he found the dirt. Right? He, he found the dirt, he found the drive, and he just got out of it, right? He's just checking out now. He's got his dull set in. Darren Hedlund's not far behind him, um, but that was unbelievable turn one from Darren Trelaw. Sitting on the yellow with the white now in second place with one lap to go. That's the Trent Hedlund April Cottrell bike who had the uh, reasonably average start at best. Uh, and then a little further down the field, the fight between uh, second... Uh, third and fourth, which is the blue, I would believe, of Golding and Amos. There's your first place, though, and it is the first for Darren Trelaw and Blake Cox. Second, by the look of it, to Trent Hedlund. Hedlund and um, 
Avril Cottrell. Cottrell, correct. Kane Golding in third. Sorry, Nate Hedlund. Looks like we got... Uh, Nate Hedlund on the third, Cole Golding on fourth. Well done to Darren again. That turn one was just super impressive. There's not many people that can do that, John. That was just absolutely perfection by the legend of the sport, you know. It's the old deal, isn't it, right? If you've been here a number of times and you know how to deal with it, you deal with it, right? He's definitely not slowing down with age. He's getting he's getting older in the sport, but he's, he's definitely not getting slower as he gets older. That was just flawless, that turn one. Right, yeah, big thank you in the next one to Warren Colley and his team from Class A Kitchens. Thank you to Class A Kitchens for your sponsorship to Event 16 here this weekend, the Warren Monson Memorial Heat 10. In this one, we find out of the red, Ricky Stevens and Nick O'Brien. Out of the blue, as the screen shows it, Josh Pascoe and Greg Black. Out of the white, Nathan Cock, Brendan Johnson. And out of the yellow, Mark Placed, Benny Pitt. It's exactly how they line up in this one. The Bob Crump gate being shut. So that means one thing, Simon. We have four, four sets of chairs out there ready to dance to the music. Now that sun's going down now. It just absolutely looks beautiful, that sunset going down, having the bikes out there. Amazing now. The sun's just not in their eyes anymore, and it's just a beautiful night to, for racing. It's cooled down a bit. It's not as hot. So. You know, great opportunity for me to quickly get in one other thing, and that is the fact that the Kumiela Memorial Sporting Club as one of the major sponsors here to the club for the season. We must uh, quickly throw out a uh, thank you to them for all their connections uh, for this season as well. Even though we've got a number of sponsors that are sponsoring heats tonight, uh, it would be remiss of me, Simon, to not at least mention the Kumiela Memorial Sporting Club here this weekend at least once. Let's just see how Mark Placey gets out of yellow following Trelaw. He's, uh, let's just watch him out of yellow. Class act. Class act placed it in pit. Let's watch them as they get away. I reckon that's a great start for him as he cuts down on the field and really makes it uh, the move of, of the night for him. Rick Stevens, Nick O'Brien in the red trailing now, but it is the yellow of Mark placed at Benny Pitt that are setting sail and getting out of town. The blue of Josh Pascoe and Greg Black sitting in third, and that would mean the Ricky Stevens and Nick O'Brien and in the red in second there, and the back end of the field will be the wide, and Nathan Cock and Brendan Johnson. Yeah, look, another great start from Mark Place. Said that was, Trelaws was probably a bit more better, but that was still a great turn one for Mark. He just come around the outside, and he was committed. He had Mick Stevens just underneath him, but he committed to it, and it pulled off, and now he's in the front, and Rick's chasing, but Mark's pretty comfortable now. He'll just slow and steady, and he'll just take it over the checkered flag, and three bags, three points in the bag. One more to travel. They're on the last one. Down the back straight with turns three and four to complete it. And here they go. Tipped in tight and turned. And they are gassed up and going for that. That thing there, the checkered flag. Three points in the bag for Playstead and Pitt. Yeah, it's all about racking the points up, John. You want to get as many points early as you can just to get, keep them accumulating. And great ride by Rick Stevens. It was a hard charge. He just he just couldn't keep to the pace of Mark. But that was a great start by, by Yellow. Good, good gate pick. And just great start again. So that is uh, official placings. Mark placed there. Benny Pitt to uh, take the win. Second for Rick Stevens. Nicky O'Brien in the red. Uh, the blue are Josh Pascoe and Greg Blank for third. And Nathan Cock and Brendan Johnson for fourth. Move on to the next one, which will be Heat 11. Event 17, a big thank you from the Monson family and team to Judy and Gary Doyle for their connections and also Nan Farrelly, who, of course, is, um, I believe, Judy's mum. Uh, they've been very closely connected to uh, the, Mor the Monson family, including Warren, for a very, very long time, and we do thank them for their support. Quickly read out how they lay. Brodie Cohen, uh, Jesse Hedland in red, out of the blue, Byron Gates, Mick O'Loughlin. Out of the white, Shane Hudson and Adam Constable. Out of the yellow, Dave Bottrell and Darcy Ristrom. You know what? That's exactly how they're going to line up, Simon. Yeah, it should be a good one by Brody Cohen. He's uh, doled in now, so he's out of red. This is still going to be a tough event for him. So just watch for Brody Cohen out of red. Young Gatesy, the local, is going to go pretty well too out of blue. He's not going to let him get away with it. So th this will be an interesting, especially Hutto. Hutto's dialing in too. So this, this will be an interesting heat. Quite confident Brody's going to shing slingshot out of that start out of red. He's got control of the race being in red. You can miss the gate but still control the race by, you know, pushing up the inside of the other riders and, and being a bit cheeky and getting your nose in front and it, and it throws them out, you know. Well, so 
he can miss it but still be in control of the race. But you have to run the risk of Yellow Gate coming up on the inside here too. So it's and red's good, but it's also got some negatives. Well, we've also seen uh, Darren Trelaw tonight uh, show that red is a live gate. It does produce the result. So, you know, Brody Cohen can, and Jesse Hedlund can certainly emulate that if they want to do it. The local guys that you see there in the blue of Byron Gates, Mick Lachlan, hungry for another win in this one. The white there of Shane Hudson, Adam Constable, and getting a little bit of assistance from our start guys there in the yellow, Dr. Darcy Ristrom. Let's watch how they travel on this one. Gates away. Well, that's a shocker of a start for, Hed uh, for Cohen and Hedlund as they drop way down the field and from that red hat colour. White's at the front, so it's Hudson and Constable from the blue of Gates and O'Loughlin. And then the white of Bottrell and Ristrom. Have a look at this, though, Simon. Back into the field. The cream is coming. The second win is on its way. The red of Brodie Cohen, Jesse Hedlund. Yeah, he just got a bit unsettled at the start. They sort of not sure what happened. It took a while to get started, and he'd done so well to keep it back on the track instead of going in field. If he picks up one point, amazing. Here he comes. Here comes Brody Cohen to pick up some points after a terrible start. Let's see what he can do. Yeah, well, he's obviously cashed in one for the minute. He's got his crosshairs now in that gun sight on the next pairing, the blue of Gates and O'Loughlin. Let's watch him. Here he comes, the last lap. Check Let's it. see what he can do. Check and flag. Can he grab another point? I don't think O'Loughlin and uh, Gates and O'Loughlin are going to let him through at all. You're going to have to fight for this. So, Yeah, well done, Brody Cohen. Also... Well done to Hudson. That's a good three points in the bag, but just a bit of tough luck there for Brody. But heads, heads up to him for keeping it on the track and getting a point. Every point is so crucial, John. And that was unbelievable that he actually pulled it back on the track and, and reeled in a point. So a point's better than no points, John. That's pretty much uh, how it needs to play out. You know, sometimes you can afford uh, you can afford to drop a point, um, particularly in rides like this. If you drop one, sometimes two points. Uh, really hard to come back after two rides and drop points across all of them, right? So you just need to stay there. But, you know, all the same, a good result for he and the guys there. Yeah, he'll be devastated with that, but it's still he'll, he'll just go back to the pits, regroup, and just come out for the next heat. So spot on. Okay, move on to the next one. Heat 12, event 18. The Monson family and team would like to thank Northern Engineering Solutions. A big thank you to Andrew Buchanan, who's came over all the way from the New Zealand uh, to uh, to be part of this one tonight. And Andrew's a long-time Sycar supporter, been in the troops for in, in the roles of it for so long. Let's have a look at the way they stack up. Out of the red, Kim Menergy, Shane Dolan. Out of the blue, Max Howes and Riley Commons. Out of the white, Damian Nisha, Mitch Spear. And out of the yellow, Mick Hedlund and Brenton Kerr. It's exactly how they're going to play out with this one tonight. Yeah, I caught up with uh, Andrew Buchanan and Philippa Byrne in the VIP area. I had a quick chat with them before, and they, they were a big help helping us, four or five riders, go over to New Zealand. Mm. Warren Monson was one of them, Darren Chaloa, Brody Cohen, uh, Ricky House. They organised a big trip for the six of the best Aussies to go over to New Zealand. So we shared a big vacation with Warren, and that was a, that's an to another time for another story. But he yeah, had a quick chat with him, and he was happy to come here, and he's, he wouldn't miss it for the world. No, he certainly was very invested in what goes on. So to Andrew or, or those people possibly in New Zealand that are connected through Andrew watching on our live stream tonight, a big hello to New Zealand. Hopefully you're watching the uh, telecast tonight and you're enjoying every bit of it. Check so, this out. So Mick Hedlund's, what his passions are just done there, Mick Hedlund's got a front lock with like a dirt bike lock for a front. I'll just explain that in a minute. We're away. Let's have a look at how this plays out now. Wow, tight field as they come out of that one. But it looks like Hedlund and uh, Kerr got the better of the gates and got away and read the track uh, beyond the gate as well. The blues of uh, Max House and Riley Commons right behind them. The white of Niche and Spear sitting back a little. And it was right at the back end of the field. We find Kim Menager and Shane Dolan. In actual fact, I think they off the red are infield. There they are. So... In field, you can see them in screen yeah, right they, now. Yeah, they just had a bit of a spin out. But Mick had an impressive gate by Yellow again. Yellow, oh, big turnout by Max House. Wow, impressive to hang on to that young Max House. Let's see what Nishi, Nishi can track him back down. 
Wow, look at this inside challenge now coming out of the white. I reckon that's going to be a red-hot dip going into that bottom turn. Check out the white now of Nish and Spear. They have found the dirt and drive under them, and that relegates the blue of Howes and Commons back one. Great battle for second and third, but Mick Hedlund just... Um, that was an amazing race out of Yellow. He just Yellow's becoming quite popular there, John. A few good wins on the trot, but... As I was saying, just at the start of that race there, if you've seen Mick Hedlund's passenger, he just got off the bike and he just jumped on the front end. Now, Mick Hedlund's running, it's similar, the best way to describe it is it's similar to the, 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 the lockers on the dirt bikes when they start. They push the forks down and engages the, the front end. So then what that does is it locks it in so that when they take off, it actually can't mono. And it's, it's, I th it's called... Um, so it's like an, uh, not an anti-dive, it's an anti-lift. So uh, therefore, it's a, it, it, it balances the geometry. 100%. It stops the bike from lifting. So it's, it's, um, it just takes off flat. So, so what it does is it focuses focuses the drive forward, not upwards. 100%. And not, no one else is running it. So and he's using the weight I've of the bike. The, I've got it on the tip of my tongue. I just can't think of it. But a lot of the dirt bikes use it on their starts, and it's, it's amazing. Uses the weight of the bike to drive. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Big thank you to Matt's Porn Brokers, and that's, of course, Matt Morgan. Thank you, Matt, and your team for your sponsorship to Event 19 Heat 5. Out of this one of the red, we find Kim. Uh, out of the red, we find Brian Sylvie. This is your support, support side cars. We find Brian Sylvie, Glenn Zawarski. So if, disregard that plate that was up before for you. Uh, for Matt's Pawn Brokers, Event 19, Heat 5 of the support side cars. Brian Sylvie, Glenn Zawarski from SA out of red. Dean Hobbs, Daniel Lowe out of the blue. Byron Mordaunt and Lee Lapoitevin, Will Lapoitevin out of white and... AJ Pierce and Eli Bock out of the yellow. It's called a, uh, just for the live stream fans that are yelling and screaming at the TV, saying it's a whole shot, it's a whole shot. It's actually called a whole shot device, John. So mm. the idea is the whole shot. Get out of that gate quicker than anyone. And he's the only one running on the sidecars, so, and it's working really well. Right, yeah, drive forward now on this one for Matt's pawnbrokers. Outside guys in the yellow, Pierce and Bock readying themselves for... The run out of the gate, right beside them in the Lion King Barber sponsored bike. Byron Mordaunt and Will Lapoitevin just watching what's going on there. Yeah, great looking bike of AJ's. Throwing a bit of dirt in the hole. Let's see how AJ goes out of yellow. They've had a couple of good wins all the way out of yellow the last few races. So let's just see how he goes. Well, the boys on the line are good for it. Event 19, here we go. Out of the gate and going for it. It is the blue and the white, a pairing of uh, Mordaunt and Laporte and Hobbs and Low as they fire through. Wow, not a lot separating these guys. And it is, in fact, the blue, by the look of it, of, uh, of Hobbs and Low that probably had the upper hand. Although, have a look at this, though. Mordaunt and Laporte and they are not letting go of this puppy, let me tell you. That's a great battle for first and second. They're racing the whole, whole they're taking the whole track up. Mate, if I could say anything, this is exactly how good our track marshals, uh, sorry, our track guys that are prepped tonight. Look at this. Very rare you get two bikes running two separate lines as close as that. That is great track craftsmanship, right? Great racing by these two guys. Look at Hobbsy's just pulling away, but that was fantastic to watch. Like I said, a credit to our guys that work the track down here for the days in advance. This is the best of the best. And even look at this, Lapointevin. And uh, Mordaunt and Lapointe have been making ground again, but I don't think they're going to be able to handle it. The uh, check and flag's ready. There it is. So it just showed there, John, that the, the lower line was a bit quicker. He, he, they went out to the dirt, and it just wasn't just a bit, a bit slower. And Hobbsy just pulled away, just kept his nice and tidy, and, yeah, nice just slowly pulled away. Nice to see the thumbs up of Hobbs and Low there. Back to uh, Mordaunt and Lapointe have been. Yeah, great, great sportsmanship there, and it's always very adrenaline pump when you're side by side racing. It's, it really gets your adrenaline going. Hmm. Another ripper in the bank tonight. That's uh, a cracker, I reckon. Yeah, no, great, great race by the supports. AJ didn't really get a good gate out of there. I think he he must have fell asleep. He didn't really get out of there real quick. Move on to event twenty now. Heat six. This is for. Sammy Stanbrook and the team at Stanbrook Construction Group. Thank you, Sam, for your connections and sponsorship to Heat 6 for our support sidecars here this evening. I hope you're enjoying yourself down in that VIP area with all of the rest of the uh, teams down there. 
Uh, they're having a great old time down there. Yeah, he's a great young builder, Stanbrook. He used to be my apprentice years ago. Lovely bloke, lovely fella, and he's a very good tradesman. Builds a lot of massive sheds around town locally yeah. in a way. And, yeah, he'll be enjoying a few froths up in the VIP area. And, yeah, good bloke. All righty. Let's get all four of them out there ready to do uh, battle in this one for our Warren Monson Memorial meeting here this evening. I really hope uh, online tonight you're, uh, you're having a ball out there. And if you do get a chance and you got any feedback for us, hey, throw it to the uh, Muldura Motorcycle uh, Club webpage. Yeah, take it easy on me, guys. I'm just new to it. I'm just in trying to help Mate. out and have a bit of fun with it. And, uh, yeah, it'd be nice. Don't be too cruel on me. I'm still learning the ropes. Simon, we're having a good one tonight. Don't worry about that. You see Summerhose there on the start-finish line and, and Reese Farr, their start marshals, is doing a fantastic job and it's great to see Summerhose. Unique, that shot there with the gates have closed that allows the guys to have got out onto the track, but you can see the spectators can walk through that exit area or entry area to the pit zone. Um, that's a very unique piece of uh, Olympic Park. Yeah, it is a great venue for racing, that's for sure. So on the outside in the red, Stephen Fowler, Jeremy Sherwood, the blue, Connor Carr and Cam Nichols, the white, Chris Walker, Matt Crumble, and the yellow, Matty Bins and Jared Kudzorki. Wow, they got away. The red, probably not the greatest of starts of Fowler and Sherwood. But look at the front of the field. There's a red on the action, so I reckon we're going to bring them back and stack them, rack them, and fire them again, mate. Yeah, they didn't get a real, <laughs> they didn't get off real clean there. John, she's a bit messy, so it's good to see the red light come on and they all get another go at it. That's uh, that's great to see. And great uh, on behalf of Cam Woodward, who's our uh, our steward tonight. He obviously sees a lot from the position he is in that tower of power that you can see above the. Uh, the starting gate uh, and, you know, using his own discretion to say, guys, this is a red, let's bring you back, give you a clean start again, right? Yeah, I seen him at the start of the meet before I started. He looked a bit nervous and I said, good <laughs> luck, and he just smiled and said, yep. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether he needs the luck, though. I think he, uh, a true racer round and round, he knows what's uh, required. That's a great call, I, I would say. 100%. It's just the night itself is a big night and you're just, you're always nervous making calls with these big boys, especially coming down to the pointy end, so... Yeah, hopefully uh, no one know. rolls their cuffs up and want to, you know, walk up there in a hurry and then go. But no, nah, we're not here for that tonight. So I don't know. So you don't look too nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous as hell. <laughs> I'm nervous for him. But nah, look, we're all here in, 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 in tribute to Wazza. So, yeah. Matty Bin just putting a bit of dirt on that front wheel. He's just got a bit of clutch slipping and just to keep it there and hold it there. Gassed up and going, and going nowhere for the outside there for Bins and Kazorki. I'd say the engine fire went out, and they're trying to start that thing, and they're away, but wow, they are well off the heat. Red to the front of the field, Fowler and Sherwood in this one, although they've been touched up deeply by Chris Walker, Matty Crumble in the white, and they sit in front now and relegating him back. You know, a great battle for first, second and third in this one. It's taken Simon the better part of a good lap and a bit to settle themselves down in this one. Yeah, he tried to stick his nose in there just to let him know he was there and uh, come up the inside, but he just couldn't quite pull it off. So, The blue of Connor Curran and Cammy Nichols went infield. We just saw that in the back end of the shot as we fired through. So, But it is the white of Walker and Crunwell still going nicely. Yeah, great, great ride by Walker. He's, don't take away from Fowler. He's on the charge coming back, but Chris Walker can hold it together, I think. Nicely done. So it looks like the call will be uh, Walker and Crumble from the red of Fowler and Sherwood as we get ready to roll out for the next of our dirt track riders group, which will be Heat 3, Event 21 here this evening. Waiting patiently for Event 20 to roll into the pit zone. You see those bikes ready to do business out there, huh?
Wait till we see these guys from the front of their plates and we'll give you who's who and amongst the Jordan Stewart sitting there on the inside, Rowan to guard on the 314 beside him. Uh, that'll be Josh Knights in the 450 beside him, the 112 of uh, Benny Brooks. I reckon the 25 of Josh Waters, who we interviewed just before, and the number three of Nicky Waters on the outside. Tapes away and we are in gear with these guys right now as they fire into the first turn and crank out into that uh, first one. Oh, there's one down on the deck, which looks like it might have been, uh, might have been the 112. Oh, actually, it might have been the uh, bike of uh, potentially Geordie Stewart, I would think potentially. We'll wait and see. Anyhow. Away we go with what's left in our field moving forward. And I can confirm it was Geordie Stewart. But it's the 1-1-2 one, one, that looks the goods out there right now. Brooksy looking hot to try. Setting pace here tonight, Benny Brooks in the 1-1-2, one, one, the uh, KDM. One to travel. Looks like it's uh, the Tagart bike behind him. And I reckon there might be Joshy Waters there and amongst it all as well. Check a flag, though. Looks like it's a win. And the 112 of Benny Brooks. Take nothing away from Brooksy. He's having a cracker tonight. We'll stand down the back straight as they all uh, have a shot of it. Crowd look pretty happy with what's going on down here at Olympic Park tonight. Great vision being captured by Simon and all the team here in our live stream tonight, making sure that we capture everything that is, and that's the Bay 13, guys. And they're making some noise for the boys on the toys as they wander back into the pit area. Our grower services uh, tractor now with uh, Sedge aboard, getting ready to head out and start another of our grower services track grooming which would mean that we're looking forward to having a chat this time round, of course, with uh, Simon Kors. And shortly we'll get an opportunity to have a chat to someone down in that area. In the meantime, we might see if we can't run a few ads for what's coming up very, very shortly here at Olympic Park in the weeks ahead. better way to celebrate Australia Day than this. It's the Mildura Motorcycle Club 75th Anniversary Speedway Meeting Australia Day, Friday night, January 26th. Three times World Speedway Champion Ty Woofenden is coming to celebrate as he takes on Jamin Lidsey, Sam Masters, Justin Sedgman and Josh Pickering to name a few for the GT Windscreen's Phil Crump Solo Trophy. And then the sidecars will up with legendary names like Mick Headland and Byron yeah. Gates. Tuck Thanks to Karen cleaning its solos and yeah, sidecars yeah. on the one night. Steady. What could be more odds yeah, yeah. than that? Thanks to the yeah, Kumiala yeah. Club, yeah. gates open 5pm, yeah. main yeah. racing 7pm, yeah. yeah. Friday night, yeah. Yeah. January 26, Australia yeah. Day night, Olympic Park Speedway, yeah. 11th Street, yeah. West Mildura, yeah. mate. I'll just ask him what happened in that last race. And I just asked him about, you know, Dash for Cash winner, two wins. You just, what happened on that last start? What happened on that last start, mate? Look, just Dash for Cash winner, the he's got two wins. What happened on that last race, mate? Yeah. And, and, and the last one didn't. Just asked him about odd, odd, how I do it. Win of the Dash for Cash, mate, kicked the night off wonderfully, and a couple of wins. And he go, yeah, 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 yeah. And they go, mate, what happened? In the last no year? one goes further than right, ATPI yeah. to get our customers and understand what you need. We know that different people, in different roles, in different industries, need different things. And you want a specialist to deliver what really matters. We're on call at any time, getting your teams almost anywhere. Through our group of specialist businesses, ATPI Corporate Travel, Marine and Energy, Corporate Events, Sports Events and Direct ATPI, we will deliver what really matters to you and your organisation. 
ATPI, delivering what really matters. Supporting our community, the Kumiala Memorial Sporting Club, proud sponsors of the Mildura Motorcycle Club. Come into Exposed for all your uniform and workwear requirements. Apparel for every industry. We offer in-house embroidery and printing. Plus, can provide all your PPE requirements. Exposed signage and apparel. Your locally owned and operated independent store. Support local. Don't pay too much for your tools. Pay tradie approved prices at Mally Bearings. Buy the tools tradies love, including Milwaukee, Makita and King Chrome. Stocking a huge range, built tough for every trade application. Get personal service and advice in store from our tool specialists. Remember, buy Milwaukee, Makita and King Chrome tools for guaranteed low prices. Smart tradies go to one place. Mally Bearings, the local firm with the local knowledge. Find us on the corner of Lemon Avenue and 10th Street. Well, ladies and gents, uh, as you can see, things are progressing nicely. On screen, we have, of course, uh, Brody Cohen and, uh, of course, uh, Simon Cause. So, Simon, uh, we'll just throw down to you now for Brody Cohen's interview. Yeah, John, I'm here with your Dash for Cash winner, Brody Cohen, mate. Impressive start to the night. Is this the first time you want a Dash for Cash in Madura? It is, mate, it is. We've, uh, we used to struggle around here. When we first came here, all I used to do was crash and tip upside down. So it took a few seasons to get your head around here because it is a rider's track and it's a tricky track to get around. But um, all those years, I've never won one. So, yeah, to, to lose the virginity tonight was good. Mate, you're after redemption, after centenary. You're hungry tonight. You got dialed in. Dash for cash winner. Two heat, two heat wins. What, what happened on that last one, mate? Uh, mate, I'm devastated that it was... The boys have put a lot of dirt on the track. It's actually a little bit heavier than it normally is, but uh, it's really soft out of the start, so there's lots of big ruts, and there was actually like three or four. We couldn't sort of fit in, so we split them, but when I've dumped the clutch, it sort of twisted, and we fell in another rut, so it's tipped us over, and trying to go left on a sidecar is impossible. So. Mate, it was easy to keep it back on the track, and you, get, you got a point, mate. Unbelievable effort to get back on the track, and, and you nearly had you nearly had two points. Yeah, we were hunting them down. I, f I think we set the quickest lap time in that because I was that angry. But uh, we wheelied across the finish line chasing Gatey, so one more lap we would have got that. But points are crucial. Um, I'm disappointed because I had a plan and that wasn't it. So anyway, we'll bounce back and I'll win these next two and um, go into the final because gate one wasn't that great anyway. So gate pick's not important. So we'll see where we end up. Mate, you've have a long way from Queensland Townsville to race this meeting. Extra special meeting to race. Tell us about it. Yeah, mate, I, uh, I don't normally choke on words, but I choked up the, after the Dash for Cash thing out there and um, was, it was a good bloke, man. One of the quietest, nicest blokes you'd ever meet. You had to sort of tickle him to get boo out of him because he was kept to himself. But when you got in his circle, mate, he'd do anything for you. Couldn't help, every, like, couldn't help everyone enough. Hard, fair racer. You know, we had some crazy battles here with him. And um, one of the memories was me and you, actually, I think. Uh, the Specky. I haven't won a Specky and... We, I don't know whether we top points called or something. And anyway, we um, we led it. It was Trelaw, Monson, and Headland, and you and I were in front. Anyway, we've led it. Four laps, last corner. I've pitched it in too early, and I hit the infield and spun her out backwards. And Monson's just nailed us, and he hit us that hard. Remember, you blew your hand. Yeah, that's right, Brody. It was we were on fire that night. We filled him in, and I kept telling you all night, mate. You just got to send it, send it. And uh, we actually crashed afterwards. He hit us, and we were both rolling on top of each other, yelling at each. I was yelling at you, going, "You idiot! You had one lap to go, and you would have beat Wazza." And Wazza come over to us, and he's like, "You blokes are right," and and we're like, "Yeah, but what an idiot! You had one lap to go, and and he uh, we we're gonna have a punch on." Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that was Wazza though, wasn't he? He cared for everyone, and he was just such a good racer on and off the track. Yeah, mate, it's devastating, and like my sincere condolences to the family and everyone from Mildura and Melbourne and everyone that he's touched, it's uh, it's going to leave a massive hole in Speedway and um, I'm devastated he's gone and yeah, I'm not sure what else to say, but yeah, just um, his memory will live on and uh, we'll, we'll never miss this meeting anyway, we'll always be here for this. Awesome, thanks.
Who's all the best tonight, and hopefully you can uh, end up on that top step, step, step mate.
for ladies and gents. Uh, sitting here at Olympic Park, uh, we great to have a great opportunity now to probably go through some of the points for you. Might quickly see if I can't work my way through the points for you. So at the completion of that round, we find Trent Hiddle and April Cottrell on six, Mark Plaston and Benny Pitt on nine, Shane Hudson and Adam Constable on three, Max Howes and Riley Commons on four, Josh Pascoe and Greg Black on two, Nate Hedlund and Jackson Rayner on three, seven points apiece from both Mick Hedlund and Brenton Kerr and Brodie Cohen and Jesse Hedlund after dropping those a couple of points on that last ride. Byron Gates, Mick O'Loughlin on four. Damian Nisha, Mitch Beer on four. Darren Trelaw, Blake Cox on nine. Rick Stevens and uh, Nick O'Brien on five. Kim Manager, Shane Dolan on a total of three. Three also for Dave Bottrell, Darcy Ristrom. Two for Nathan Cock and Brendan Johnson. And yet to open their score, Kane Golding and Isaac Amos as we get ready to roll into the next one. Yeah, so your front runners here, Mark Place said Darren Trelaw and Brody Cohen all on nine points at the moment. So. That's pretty epic. Eventually, they're going to cross paths, John, and they're going to uh, they're going to have to lose points to each other. So this is getting down to the pointy end. Right, a big thank you to GBM Consulting, Jason Marks, and the team there. GBM, thank you for your involvement and sponsorship to not only Heat 13 and Race or Event 22 tonight but also for all of the work that's done throughout the complex here over the many years. Thank you to GBM Consulting. Let's have a look at how they line up. Out of the red, it'll be Mick Hedlund and Brenton Kerr. That's a tick. Out of the blue, Ricky Stevens and Nick O'Brien. Out of the white, Dave Bottrell, Darcy Ristrom. And out of the yellow, Trent Hedlund and April Cottrell. That's how they're going to line up, Simon, in this one. Yeah, Mick Hedlund will be, be wanting to claw some points out of red. Trent Hedlund on the outside. He'll be wanting to get. He'll be wanting to win for this. He'll be hungry for this win. He needs a few more points in the bag, and he's out of yellow, so it's gonna. He's gonna be charging out of that as fast as he can. He, he's gonna want this gate, and, and if he gets it, he, he, he'll be impressive to watch the outside. But also, Mick Hedlund's gonna be hard charging out of red. So, watch for red and yellow gates, and we'll see what happens. Guys are ready to go. They walked away. Tapes are ready. Bang! We are away. Great start on the inside out of the red for Hedlund and Kerr. And yet on the chase, Stevens and O'Brien. Have a look at this, Simon. Good, good, good start. Good clean start. Good start from Red. Trent Hedlund just didn't get out of that hole real well, and he's battling now. But great battle for first and second. And here comes Trent for second and third. Yeah, well, Trent Hedlund and uh, April Cottrell looking like they're coming to grips with things now. And they're actually starting to make a bit of ground. But it probably wasn't the sweetest of deliveries off the start line for them, I would say. Yeah, he's just got to be smooth and try and wait for... Rick Stevens to make a mistake and try and stick his nose there and just come up the inside. But Mick Hedlund clear out in front and very smooth and he's checking out. Bottrell and Ristrom in the wide, uh, trailing a little further down the field. But it is taking nothing away from the yellow that's sitting quite clearly now with the red of Mick Hedlund, Brenton Kerr. They are in the uh, pocket seat to uh, actually pick up three points in this one, Simon. Yeah, great ride from Mick Hedlund. He's going to really, really put these solid three points in the bag. He really needs them. So it's great, great, great start out of red. Good start, good good ride by Rick Stevens. I'm sure Botchell, Botchell must have a few problems with his bike, running running the fairway behind. So the atmosphere here, John, is amazing. You look around, the whole crowd is packed full, even up the the, the old pit end of Madura. The 90 people used to sit up there, and tonight it's packed as well. So. Bay 13 is pretty loud, they're just below us and the rest of the crowd are just, it's pumping here tonight. Sure is, electric is uh, probably the term I would use for it at the moment, everyone's just living on it and uh, and at the moment too I must admit they, the crowd are just enjoying themselves, they're drinking a the power of it because it's been so hot today, I must admit it's probably dropped about 3 or 4 degrees uh, in the last hour or so, so. Wow, have a look at this heat. John, we just talked about all equal points on nine. We got Mark Placed, Brody Cohen, Darren Trelaw, all on nine points here, John. So Correct. they've got to lose points to one each other. It's three of them all wanting them points. Big thank you to Mick Cameron and the team at Mix Bulk Wood. Thank you for sponsoring Event 23 Heat 14 tonight. As we said, out of the red, Mark Placed, Benny Pitt, 
out of the blue, we find Kim Menager, Shane Dolan out of the wide, Brody Cohen, Jesse Headland, as pointed out, and Darren Trelaw and uh, Blake Cox out of the yellow. That's exactly how they're going to play out for mixed bulk wood in event 23 to 9. You couldn't script it this, John. All equal points on nine, and now they're racing each other. You can't script that. This is going to be the heat of the night, and this is crucial. You can't well, afford to drop points to these guys. So, Well, I would say as much as it may be the heat of the night, uh, which is true, it won't be the race of the night. Definitely because, not. Because that end final tonight is going to be something worth watching. So you are right, buddy. Right as, as could be, this is graphically going to shape what goes on for that final tonight. So what's going through these guys' heads right now is I need to get out of this gate. So these passengers that want to pick a nice straight rut, pack it down so they don't bottom out. These guys, they want to get out of that gate. They know if they get out of the gate first, it's half their battle. So that's what's going through their head right now. I need to get out of this gate first, and I need to get in that clean air and have them behind me. So let's just see if Darren Trelaw can pull another great start out of yellow. He's got Brody Con on the inside. And Mark placed it out of red. Watch, this is going to be a cracker, John. Yeah, Heat 14, and big thank you to, as I said, uh, Mick Cameron for Mick's Bulk Wood. You're on the hot seat with this one, Mick. Here we go. Let's watch what's going to eventuate out of this one tonight. Minaju waiting patiently for everything to kick off with the boxing kangaroo on the side plates. Here we go. Tapes ready, and they are away. Great start in the yellow, but a better start from the middle of the pack for the white. That belonging to, of course, Brody Coe and Jesse Edlund, so they have it all to lose, and it is Darren Draw and Blake Cox in the yellow all to win. This is going to be great, Simon. Mate, fantastic ride by Brody Coe. Look at him. He's just holding on. If he can hold this, what a magic win. Darren Draw just on the hunt, hunting him down. Mark Place it. Didn't get a real good start, but he's still in the hunt too. But look at Brody, he's just checking out. He's got to keep it tidy now. He's getting a bit loose. He just needs to keep it tidy. He's just shut it down then on defensive on Darren. He, the, next, the next corner, he's gonna. He's got to keep it defensive. Here it Bro is. He's right on the pole line. Mate, Brody, keep it tight, Brody. Brody Cohen's looking loose here. I am not kidding you. With one to go, Darren Trelaw will pounce. You make a mistake, he will take it. Let's watch them as they fire through. It is Brody Cohen. Although he's dropped a couple of points, he does not want to lose them to this guy, this team here. There's the checkered flag. Let's watch it as they go across. Wow. What a finish. Three wide. That was not. He could throw a towel over them three. Absolutely fantastic ride by Brody. He'd be static with that. He just rode, started that last two laps. He started riding defensive, shutting Darren out, and, and just Darren just couldn't do anything. And, and great ride. What a fantastic ride by the Queenslander. And Jesse Edlin, he was working overtime then. Look, look at that. He's pumped. He is pumped, right? Because that, that was probably the boost that he needed tonight to go, you know what, I might have had a, an ordinary one last time out. But, mate, there is my three. Mate, you're talking, Mark Place said three Australian titles, Darren Trelaw's 12 Aussie titles. That's amazing for Brody Cohen. They're all mates too. They love each yeah, other racing. And that, for Brody Cohen, that's just a massive confidence booster. And what a race. Mate, that was awesome. And they've all been fantastic tonight. All of the heats we've had have been absolute crackers. They really have been. Let's look at the next one. It'll be heat 15. As we go into it, and this is brought to you by Kevin Muirhead and the team at PC Drafting. Thank you very much at PC Drafting for your sponsorship to Heat 15 tonight, Event 24. And Kevin Muirhead and all the team there, hope you're having a great time uh, in that uh, VIP area. Out of the red, Kane Golding and Matty Crawford. In actual fact, it's Kane Golding and Isaac Amos. Out of the blue, Shane Hudson, Adam Constable. Out of the white, Damien Nisha, Mitch Spear. And out of the, f out of the yellow... Uh, bike number five, Josh Pascoe and Greg Black. Let's have a look at this is going to play out. Niche and Spear out of that white in that centre grouping probably have the better of the views out of that gate. Yeah, he's on that borrowed bike of Brody's and he's I think he's just struggling to get ahead, his head around. It's not his normal bike he rides, so he's just getting his head around and he's I think he's struggling a little bit. He's but he's happy he's made the meeting to race in honor of it was he raced him many times and he's he just wanted to race it. So fantastic effort by Cohen. But Shane Hudson will be one to watch. He's absolutely super fast around here and correct he'll be definitely one to watch. And Hudson of course uh had varying success here uh, over the time he's been here. 
That's Reese Farr that you can see in the left-hand bottom part of your corner there, one of our starters. He's been involved with that for many a time. Rode junior solos and drove a little bit of senior solos uh, back in the day. Yeah, he used to passenger for me, John, on my sidecars. Yeah. He'd done a really good, we did a couple of years together. Great bloke, we had a lot of fun racing. and He, he loved the sidecar racing and, uh, yeah, his family commitments got in the way, so he went back to, took, took a step off the side and, yeah, we had a lot of good times together. You see the very top of your screen there in the CPM Country Project Management power, Tower of Power. All of the officials, including one right in the very centre, which is uh, Cameron Woodward, our referee tonight. Doing an amazing job. Great job. The bike's just pulling in to get ready, just getting their gate selection, just getting, just getting settled, trying to make sure they're not in too deep of ruts. He's getting pretty rutted up there now. Here we go. Good to go as we get away with event 24 now. Great start at the front of the field for the blue now of uh, Hudson and Constable. Right behind him, the red of Golding and Amos. A little further down the field, we find the white of uh, Niche and Spear. And the yellow giving them a the hurry up. That's Pasco and Black. So that's a great... Whoa! Uh -oh. We've got a bit of an incident there. And it looks like there might have been a coming together of a couple of cars there. So uh, we might sit tight for a moment, let the guys do what they need to do in that uh, area. Might take a quick moment to uh, cross over to a couple of ads quickly while we're waiting. Hope you're enjoying your live stream down here this evening from the memorial meeting for, of course, Warren Monson. A great guy who's really been on the money uh, and we're certainly celebrating what needs to be done here. No one goes further than ATPI to get our customers and understand what you need. We know that different people in different roles in different industries need different things. And you want a specialist to deliver what really matters. We're on call at any time, getting your teams almost anywhere. Through our group of specialist businesses, ATPI Corporate Travel, Marine and Energy, Corporate Events, Sports Events and Direct ATPI. We will deliver what really matters to you and your organisation. ATPI. Delivering what really matters. Supporting our community, the Kumiala Memorial Sporting Club. Proud sponsors of the Mildura Motorcycle Club. Come into Exposed for all your uniform and workwear requirements. Apparel for every industry. We offer in-house embroidery and printing. Plus, can provide all your PPE requirements. Exposed signage and apparel. Your locally owned and operated independent store. Support local. Don't pay too much for your tools. Pay tradie approved prices at Mally Bearings. Buy the tools tradies love, including Milwaukee, Makita and King Chrome. Stocking a huge range, built tough for every trade application. Get personal service and advice in store from our tool specialists. Remember, buy Milwaukee, Makita and King Chrome tools for guaranteed low prices. Smart tradies go to one place. Mally Bearings, the local firm with the local knowledge. Find us on the corner of Lemon Avenue and 10th Street. Yeah. 
send a, a bomber in time to save. The white down most of the the area as well as six is by the Lightly. And I want to hear more mating. And it was Neon before coming home from the start. It's been tight at the front on the way to go and deeper. But that will be the gap. So six three one eighty three one. We have a plenty of drama pieces and lovely pieces to go around to have a good round and crack. And that was where three one was born professionally in England. And I think in this program I've mentioned that the Industrial Revolution in England was powered by car cars. And so there was plenty of material in what they call shingles or the ashes from the car cars. And it was the ashes that they used as a medium on those tracks to allow the bikes to race. By then the specialized start bike pretty much the precursor of what we have here as sidearm bikes today. And they are the race garment pieces. Or crushed up bridge, which is always well, ladies and gents, down here at the moment with one of our competitors who's been involved with Psycho Racing for many a year, one of our local guys in Byron Gates. Hey, Byron, great to have you here tonight. Yeah, no, nah, thanks. It's a really good night. Uh, track's a little bit different than what we normally used to. She's got a bit of dirt, so that's, that's good, but yeah, different. <laughs> so, Byron, can you just sort of take us through the ropes of it, you know? I mean, when you race sidecar speedway, it doesn't matter what you race, but when you start, you end up starting in local circles first. And then you get to the stage where you get good enough to start moving to, you know, national titles and the like. Uh, and then now, especially with sidecar racing, you get opportunities to go offshore. I mean, you know, you've been around for a long time and Warren came on board as one of those competitors. He was really hungry to win, but he was a really good guy that went with it. I mean, you know, your, your journey with him. Yeah, no, we definitely, we've, yeah, we swapped paint for a lot of years. It was really good. Uh, we sort of pushed each other. He got faster and, yeah, I did lift my game and... I probably wasn't as mechanical as was it, but yeah, I just had to push myself around the track to get the lines perfect, but yeah, we pushed each other, which was good. And the one thing that people do talk about, and I know it for a fact, you know, Warren was one of these guys that if something was going on that he could help out at some point with, or somebody came to him and said, hey, listen, I need a bit of advice on this. Where, where do I do? Where do I land with this? You know, he was always there to hand and dish that out to, without any credence or something, just hand it out, just help out. Yeah, no, he definitely was. He was, yeah. Every time I went and asked me if I had a drama or two or not, didn't matter where it was or what it was, he'd come and help and yeah, tell me what I was doing wrong. And <laughs> the guy would also give the shirt off his back if he had to, right? That's the sort of guy he was. Yeah, no, he would. He um, yeah, definitely helped us out lots, building engines and yeah, even set up and some motor problems and all that too, so that was really good. I know your focus has been on what goes on on the track here, but by the same token, the crowd the night has been fantastic, haven't it? Yeah, no, it's awesome crowd. It's good. It's good to get this man here for Woz's meeting, so... It's really great. Last question. What's your most memorable thing you can remember about Warren? Um, probably got two, really. It's a bit hard to... Yeah. Um, we were racing at Undera at the best pairs, Australian best pairs, and we all teamed up. And um, in our last heat, we had to finish one, two, which would have given us third or second. And anyway, um, first lap was it took us out and put us into the fence and put us, put us out, wrecked our bike. He got excluded, so I had to ride his bike and never ridden it before. We ended up getting third for the meeting, so that was good. And then another one was sort of um, just in Mildura where we were um, yeah, trading paint all night and I parked him into the fence at the Murbank corner. His bike backfired and caught on fire. <laughs> there you go. Thank you again, Byron, for having a chat with us in regards to Warren's night tonight. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're just on the rerun there with Hudson out in front leading Pasco. Pasco's fighting hard to keep with him. Down to two bikes after that incident. Luckily, no one was hurt. They look pretty battered and bruised, but they're not, in, they're not, they're not going away in the ambulance, which is fantastic. So, but Hutto's out in the charge now. Pasco's just gone in field, so it's a one-horse race at the moment. But it's great to see the guys are up and about. They're not too battered and bruised, which is fantastic. No one wants to see anyone get hurt. So, Hudson will just roll around for the win. If he looked back around, he'd probably back off a bit, but uh, he's full sending it. Yeah, you know, that's pretty abnormal to be having just the one out there. I mean, obviously there's some issues too that, you, as you said, uh, dropped through and the yellow there of, um, of Josh Pascoe and Greg Black infield. So, uh, hey, 
Three points for the taking, Simon. Mate, three points, and good on him for riding at full noise the whole four laps. That's, that's yeah. great. No one wants to see a bike dribble around, so well done, Hutto, for giving it to Berries for the whole four laps. What great stuff. He's actually flying, actually. He, he, he rode it like they were right up his, <laughs> right up his clacker, so well done to Hutto. As they all start to enter infield, great interview with uh, Byron Gates, one of the local guys who... Uh, who's had some great uh, times with uh, Warren over the years, even though we probably missed a little bit of the uh, start there from my end. But anyhow, all good. Yeah, hey, uh, yep, you go, John. No, no. He was a good friend of Waz's too, Gatesy. They were all good friends being local together. And, uh, yeah, they, they rode bikes together, grew up together and raced together. And, yeah, G Gatesy had a lot of motors built by Warren as well. So they, they were a pretty tight-knit group. Running, I move on to event 25. That's heat 16 tonight. And this one comes to you courtesy of Denison and um, Carmen Kelly, of course, from KPR. Thank you very much for your involvement at the Kelly Paint Panel Refinishes business as sponsor to event 25 tonight. Out of the red, we find Byron Gates, Mick O'Loughlin. That's a check. And Nate Hedland and Jackson right out of the blue. Out of the white, Max Howes and Riley Commons. And out of the yellow, Nathan Cock and Brendan Johnson. Exactly how you see it in Eggridge. Yeah, this will be a good good balanced heat race. Um, yeah, it's hard to pick who's... Gates is going to go well out of rate. Red, he's in a good good gate. So we'll just see what transpires here. Young Howsey will go well too. Young couple from Broken Hill. They, they're ones to watch too. Young Nate Hedlund too. This is going to be actually a really good good race too, actually. Actually, it's a funny thing. A bit of youth in there in the uh, blue with a little bit of uh, age and experience in the red. This is great to watch. They all got away pretty squarely by the look of that. It looks like Gates is on the... Oh, I reckon that's a red. There we go. We've gone red. Great that start. It just They all just got bundled up together and uh, they were packed in like sardines there, John. They just unfortunately got nowhere to go. So Well, well again, I would say great call by Cameron Woodward, our chief uh, referee tonight, uh, because he could see that if that was going to be as clustered as that coming out of those turns and into that back straight, that better to stop it now and give everybody clear air than to let it continue on, tangled up like uh, it was not going to end well at the other end. Yeah, first turn, everyone's hungry. Everyone wants to get yeah, to that corner first, and they're not going to give no quarters given. They they all want it, so they're going to not back off. So that was it's good to see no one got hurt and uh, restart. Let's see what happens again. They'll be all wanting to get that first corner, so hopefully we can get a clean start. Well, we'll wait patiently now for them to come forward again. Bit of rubbing there, John. Nothing with it, wrong with a bit of rubbing's racing. I love a bit of rubbing. You know that. <laughs> Just getting settled now. Tapes at the ready. Guys on the start line have been awesome tonight too. They've been really solid in making sure that the lineups have been squared and fair on the exit. So good on them. Tapes away and we get away again. Again, nice and close and clustered. And it, it looks like it is that red hat colour for Gates and O'Loughlin that has the better of the run out of it. The white now behind them, which is the House and Commons group behind them. They're getting challenged now by the blue of Headland and Rayner and probably that was always ever going to be the case. Wow! Deep into that turn, Simon. Look at that. The, uh, the, the chairs have changed and yet again changed. Yeah, this is a great battle from the youngsters. Young Gates, he's just checked out, got some clean air, but this is a great battle for second and third, the two young blokes. Max House and Nate. They're going... Oh, Nate, Nate's just... Save of the night. Wow. Man. Even the passenger's still hanging on. That was unbelievable. Nah, we no, just lost the passenger. Him. That was... I called it too early. Oh, that was amazing, Nate. You, hopefully the passion can get off the track. Nearly the save of the night, right? Let's follow them through. No red lines yet. We are still live and full of action here at Olympic Park Speedway for the Warren Monson Memorial Meeting. And here is the checkered flag with a black flag being held out as well. We've got a black flag on Nate Headland racing without a passenger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So there's the uh, the finish of it for that one. That would be the red of uh, Gates and O'Loughlin. Young Second. Nate Hedlund there. He's just looking around. The face. Where's my passenger? I can't find my passenger. Second to the white of Howes and Commons. I reckon that was... Uh, yeah, very lucky he didn't clean up. Nate Hedlund didn't passionately get cleaned up then. Very close, but... Yellow of Cock and Johnson to grab third and Hedlund and Rayner. 
So it just shows you can actually ride these things there, the passenger, but you just you're just not fast. They, they, you can ride them, but you, you, your passenger does make a big difference. You, uh, it's undoubtedly, quite scary without it. it's quite scary without a passenger. Tipsy tips up and down, but yeah, you're just not quick. You haven't got that drive. That passenger giving you that drive and helping you steer it. So you definitely need the passenger. Right, go into the next one for event 26, heat seven of our support sidecars, and again, no listing. I will give it to you. And a big thank you to John Green and the team for their support uh, to the Monson family uh, and the team would like to thank John for his connections to them to help them out uh, with sponsorship to Event 26. A big thank you, John. Uh, Heat 7 sees them like this, uh, Simon. Out of the red, Byron Mordant and Will Lapoitevin. Out of the blue, Matty Benz and Jared Kadzorki. Out of the white, AJ Pierce and Eli Bach. And out of the yellow, Stephen Fowler and Jeremy Sherwood. Yeah, it should be a good support race. So just just touching on the speedways and speedway family, you know, like John, I got nearly twelve people staying in my house this weekend. I've got Nisi's passengers staying there, Trent Nate Rocottrell staying there, Jeff Garner that supplies Trenton's bike. They're all my joint. And when you meet your speedway family, you put everyone up, and you know they're all here for Wazza and it's been it's going to be a good it's been a good day good weekend so far. But you help people out where you can and. Yeah, it, it's 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 just mate, part of the Speedway family, mate. I got to be honest with you, listening to those guys at your place all together at once tonight, the th- the song in my head right now is Top Gun's Danger Zone, right? That's your backyard <laughs> yeah. right now, right? Yeah, it's going to get pretty dangerous. I might <laughs> slip off to uh, somewhere else for the night. They can have me house for the night. <laughs> I'm probably the one with the one doing the dumbest thing too. So uh, hopefully, uh, if I get out of it, I won't get hurt. Into the danger zone. That's yeah. kind of going through <laughs> my head right now, right? Oh, let's get on with it for John Green and the team. Away and ready and going, although the blue of Benz and Kudzorki, that's a no-go. They are still sitting centre in the field, and it looks like the boys will give them a bump and get them out of here. They'll either get going like they have. Front of the field, look at this, though. Wow, that's the wildest line ever taken there as the uh, pairing of... Um, We've just had a roll over there. We've, uh, that is the... Looks like everyone's Okay. Yeah, well, there's a bit of anything and everything going on there at the moment. I was uh, we, looking. We've just had a full rider fail there. They, they've all mate, failed on the track. I'm mate, not I'll sure what's happening there. The first two did it, and then the third one, then I might do the same. I, I was watching uh, Byron Mordaunt and Will Lapointe have been heading in, in field, and then uh, then I believe it might have been uh, Pierce and Bock went in field. Benz and Kazorki were way down the field. And then it was the yellow that you can see on, on uh, camera now, Stephen Fowler, Jeremy Sherwood, that decided that they do the penultimate uh, roll and uh, brought the whole thing to a grinding stop. Yeah, just looking at the track there, John, it looks like there's a bit of dirt building up and it's getting really heavy there, off just off that race line and down down on that pole line's a bit slick, so it's catching a lot of them out, just being a bit slicker and as you get a bit wider, the dirt's there, so we've got a few ruts building over the start-finish line and it definitely looks like it's tricky mate, and it's catching a few of them out. Mate, I can tell you they're all coming in and this will be a first for a very, very long time, all four bikes excluded. Yeah, I, I haven't know. seen that before, I don't think. Mate, I don't know whether Cam uh, Woodward's ever done that in his career. But guess what, Camo? As I said to you tonight, uh, Simon, expect some surprises. There's a surprise for yeah. you. I never thought that was ever going to happen. Yeah, definitely. I just think that track's catching them out a bit. And, uh, yeah, I've never seen that before. But it's a good thing no one got hurt in that rollover, which is fantastic. Correct. And, oh, yeah, on to the next race. Right, yeah, let's move on to the next one, Event 27 tonight. This is Heat 8 of our support sidecars. Big thank you to Ben and the team out of Broken Hill from Northern Earth Movers, who were huge fans of Warren. Thank you so much uh, from the Monson family and team for their thanks to you, Northern Earth Movers, for your support here tonight. And that goes straight to Ben and all the team at Broken Hill. Thank you so much. In this one, a support for Heat 8. We find out of the red, Dean Hobbs, Daniel Lowe. Out of the blue, Chris Walker, Maddie Crundwell. Out of the white, Brian Sylvie and Glenn Zaworski. And out of the yellow, Connor Curran and Cam Nichols. I can't thank you enough, John, for uh, pronouncing the names. of uh, My vocabulary doesn't stretch that far to pronounce some of those. You're doing a good job there, mate. It's fine. Don't stress. It's all good. That's what we're here for, right? <laughs> and we also hope that you are enjoying it out there on the uh, broadcast tonight, trying to give you as much action, detail, some of the interviews and some of what it w- would be like to be here tonight for the Warren Monson Memorial Meeting if you were live. And if you can't, we understand that you can't do that. So we hope you're enjoying the telecast through your screens tonight. 
and we're having great pleasure in bringing it to you on behalf of ourselves, Simon, myself, and, of course, Simon and his team uh, with the guys that are shooting it out through to the wider web. Yeah, it's shaping up to be a good meeting so far. in some really good races, and I'm having a good time. It's, uh, it's great to be able to help out and do my best on the commentary. Here we go. Wow, that's a wild one out of yellow. That went nowhere in a hurry. Anyhow, let's move to the front of the field. It is the red of Dean Hobbs. Daniel Lowe pushing the blue now, Walker and Crundle. Good battle for first and second here. Let's see if Hobbs can keep a straight and smart ride and see if he can reel him in. Let's see what yeah. happens here. A little further down the field, we find the white of Sylvie and Zawarski in third. Walker's just got a bit more pace and then... Then Hobbs, he's playing it smart, but Walker's just he's just carrying his speed through. And Hobbs is playing it smart, but he's just waiting for Walker to make a mistake. But you see Walker, he's got a lot more speed carrying, and now he's checking out. It's, that's a good ride by Walker. Absolutely. Showing his dominance in this one. You know what, this is also, you see him looking over his shoulder. He's reading what he can give away. 100%. You know? He's just looking he, to see where he is on the track. And if he can, a bit smoother ride, a bit defensive. But he, he's, he's, he's a very Three. smart ride by Walker. Well, he's only got these two corners now and half the straight, Simon, and he's got it. So it'll be the blue of uh, Chris Walker and Matt Crumble. Grab the goodies in that one. Yeah, good win by Walker there. Three points in the bag. And they're getting paid good points money tonight too. So they'll, they'll be stoked with that three points. Here they come, John. You can hear them fire up now, the Chook Chasers. The boys there, happy with their win. Well done, Walker. As we watch them come in, I will uh, make point of uh, thanking our Event 28 sponsor, which, of course, is uh, heat number four of our dirt track riders here this weekend. And, of course, that is Simon Kelly and the crew from SK Concreting. Thank you to Simon and all your team for involving themselves with sponsorship to Event 28 tonight. Yeah, there's quite a lot of few sponsors here tonight, John. And uh, that VIP area is full of sponsors. Everyone's jumped on board and, and sponsored so many events tonight. It's great to see everyone helping out and chipping in. So it's fantastic. Right, let's have a look from the front. We'll give you your numbers and who is riding on what. Let's have a look at that front shot now. Now these gates so are it picked looks randomly. Like it's three for Nick Waters. It is the 450 for Josh Knight. Stewie on 12, Josh Waters on the 25. The 112 for Benny Brooks and the 314 for Rowan Tagart on the outside this time. They all got away pretty swiftly. Let's have a look who the lead, the lead operative is at the moment. It is the, by the look of it, Tagart, Rowan Tagart on the 314. As the others dance their way to success in the background. Yeah, it's amazing watching them dance on them bikes. But Rowan Tagard, he's been racing his whole life and he, he is a cut above the rest. But they're all out there having fun. But Rowan Tagard, definitely a very talented rider. So I can tell you, Rowan Tagard, while well, we've got a moment, we watch him lead. Uh, has ridden dirt track, long track, supermoto, and also American flat track. Uh, he achieved his goal recently by finishing sixth in the top ten in the American Flat Track Nationals in 2023. He's only just come home from that uh, of last year. He was the highest placed pro 450 Victorian in the series. Rowan's been racing for, you ready for it? 32 years. 32 years this guy's been running for. Three times Australian Senior Dirt Track Champion. Uh, and here's some stats for you, um, Simon. He's won 38 state senior titles. And he's won 60 firsts in open meetings in seniors. And just for fun, he's a crew member for Brodie Waters when they go to Fink. A very accomplished stats. guy. Unbelievable stats. And he's a really nice guy too. Runs a kitchen joint, Correct. cabinetry, modular designs. He yep. sponsored a couple of heats for tonight too. And, yeah, look at that talent he's got. You know, that's a long time riding. So it looks like we're going into a grower services track groom very, very shortly. I'm going to have a chat with our club president down here in Jason Stewart shortly. So very shortly after uh, we run our ads, we'll be with live with Jason Stewart. No one goes further than ATPI to get our customers and understand what you need. We know that different people in different roles 
in different industries need different things. And you want a specialist to deliver what really matters. We're on call at any time, getting your teams almost anywhere. Through our group of specialist businesses, ATPI Corporate Travel, Marine and Energy, Corporate Events, Sports Events and Direct ATPI, we will deliver what really matters to you and your organisation. ATPI, delivering what really matters. Supporting our community, the Kumiala Memorial Sporting Club, proud sponsors of the Mildura Motorcycle Club. Come into Exposed for all your uniform and workwear requirements. Apparel for every industry. We offer in-house embroidery and printing. Plus, can provide all your PPE requirements. Exposed signage and apparel. Your locally owned and operated independent store. Support local. Don't pay too much for your tools. Pay tradie approved prices at Mally Bearings. Buy the tools tradies love, including Milwaukee, Makita and King Chrome. Stocking a huge range, built tough for every trade application. Get personal service and advice in store from our tool specialists. Remember, buy Milwaukee, Makita and King Chrome tools for guaranteed low prices. Smart tradies go to one place. Mally Bearings, the local firm with the local knowledge. Find us on the corner of Lemon Avenue and 10th Street. Well, ladies and gentlemen, down here at the moment, trackside, with all the action going on, it's an incredible night. The crowd are loving what's going on, and the racing's been amazing. We've been really lucky tonight and very fortunate to get through a number of different people that have had associations, whether it be a direct competitor, someone who's helped, or had some connection to the great Warren Monson, who we're here celebrating this testimonial meeting for him this weekend. And we really hope on the live stream that you're really enjoying what's going on tonight. Really lucky also tonight, he's a very busy guy. If we turn him around, we'll show you. He's the clerk, of course, so he's got everything going on in his backyard. And this is, of course, our club president in Jason Stewart. Hey, Jace, thank you for breaking away for a little bit of time to have a chat with us. Yeah, no worries, John. That's um, so far so good. We've done four rounds, sidecar meeting, not too much incident, so we're on track. Jace, uh, the first thing I'll, I'll step through is the fact I think you were no different to I and, and probably so many other people that had that close connection to Warren, that when the news came through, it's like, no, that hasn't happened. I suppose what, you know, what, what struck me to the core the most, it was only a couple of weeks prior, we spent a week together over at Lake Edna, you know. I went over and done the, the Australian's fastest land thing and was it done that as well and um you know i'd know i've known was since i was 15 or 16 you know I, I knew him back in the dirt track days he used to have a wr 500 and used to ride out northwest and then a good mate of mine from school mick kelly and then was got involved with mick and you know that was before was even roadside cars and then you know all the years i've known him it was always just catch up at speedway business 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 but then last year when we wake, went to Lake Gaiden and we had a week and uh, my wife and I went over with Dave Parker and Tim and and then we had, you know, Wazza was there with Nathan Cock and Johnny Wilcox and we had a couple of rain days and it was just like hanging out. And, you know, I didn't realise till afterwards how important that week was with Wazza. And, you know, we had the bike pretty sorted. We'd done one or two runs and we had a, a bit of bit of head shake issues and uh, to be honest that night sitting around having a couple of beers having a barbecue was it got all technical with Tim changed the rake of the bike brought the the toe in a little bit on the wheel and and he said that's it you know that's how it'll be and then the next day we went out and broke two Australian records so you know that was that was only a couple of weeks before he died and um, it was just a bloody Shock. We we're, were up in Alice Springs pre running for Fink at the time, and you know, Brody Waters was with us. The Waters, a big connection with Wazza. And we got back to town about 1 30 in the afternoon, and I got a phone call from another club member here telling me about the terrible news. And um, yeah, it was only half an hour prior that unfortunately passed away. And um, you know, it was just a shit time. We had a really, really tough time last year. The club, 
you know, we lost half a dozen key club members and, um, you know, was a, it was only probably, you know, a week or so before he passed away, I rang him about our, you know, having a testimonial meeting. We, you know, he's the most successful sidecar rider in history ever to come out of this club. You know, he'd been at it for 20 years, you know, retirement wasn't far away, and it was like, we need to run a testimonial. So I, I rang Wazza and said, Wazza, you know, we want to put something together for you next season. And he straight away said, well, who's going to come to that? No one's going to come to my meeting. So, so Jace, on that, that is, that is a classic Warren comment, isn't it? You know, he, he under underwrote himself so heavily in some of those things. But, I mean, yes, that, that's what he said, but look at tonight. Exactly. And when he said that to me, I said, what, what are you talking about, Was I said, bloody hell, everyone's going to come to it. And then he went on and said, well, how does it work? And, you know, he was that... Yeah, I don't know. He, 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 he knew nothing about testimonials. And I said, mate, it's all about the fans and the crowd and all your sponsors want to do something for you. And um, he said, well, I'll get back to you. And they were over in Perth for the Aussie titles. And um, that was literally the last conversation I had with him. And, yeah, unfortunately, that's what happened. And how impressive is it that the legacy of what he wanted when he finally decided that maybe that was looking at going to happen that he wanted it carved up between the two fantastic charities that are here tonight. I mean, Angel, uh, Angel Flight is one of them, which is so important to what goes on in regional areas like this. And also Chalice with John Burford, who looks after so many people locally here as well. The very fact that his thought train went down that path is just testimony to what this guy was. He was so invested in what happens, not just in the region, but the people around it, which is the reason why they followed through and the family have decided that's exactly what needs to happen tonight. Well, that's Wazza in it, you know, he done so many, so much for so many people, like, you know, right from the early days of his sidecar involvement, he, he was building engines for bloody, you know, Byron Gates, and then Devon Gates jumped on side of him, and, you know, he had a long, long career in sidecars, and, you know, that was before he became a bloody, you know, world-class rider, and, um... You know, even in the early, early days, all the work he put in with Mick Kelly, you know, all, all that was all free. Was it done everything, travelled all around Australia, you know, and, um, you know, HR Holden Ute and Mick's old high ace van and, I don't know, he's just a, he was just a bloody good bloke. You know, what more can you say about him? He was just a down-to-earth good bloke. The other thing that I'll quickly touch on before we finish off, Jace, is the fact, like, he, he one of these guys that was not just a great competitor, but in the background, all of the work... He like guys, you know, like um, likes of Josh Waters and so many other people that he's had connections with. It rocked them as much as it rocked us. And he had a, had so much respect from people externally from our region here, let alone what happened here. It just testifies how good this guy was. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, people forget that Warren was actually from Mildura, you know, or Gold Gold Baronga. And... Um, yeah, I mean, you could write a list forever what he's done for people, you know. Josh Waters, he's been there all these Suzuki days and, um, you know, uh, you know, was a, last year the land speed record thing. He took the high busser there. He, he had a couple of runs to get his licence run and he went 207 mile an hour and come in cool as anything and was still spinning the wheel at 207 mile an hour, you know. And um, he was very super keen to go back this year and, and get and get it and he woulda you know that and that bike was something that was sitting under the workbench for how many years and they just got it back together and off he went but anyway that's um yeah it's just a sad sad thing for him you know chase i'm gonna ask you one more thing and i've done this with everybody tonight, both myself and and, and simon have i want you to share with me the most vivid memory that you have right now of warren monson what would that be chase I'd have to say back in 93, 94, racing against him out of Northwest and was a swapping around on a WR500 two-stroke. And uh, he used every bit of the track from the inside to the outside. But, um, yeah, when I think of a WR500, it was Monson all the, all the way. That's your most vivid memory, mate. Thank you so much for taking a bit of time out of your busy schedule tonight. I kid you not, you get hit with everything tonight. 
and to sit here, or rather to stand here and talk to Jason and those fond memories and all those bits, you know, it just builds the picture for everybody to understand how much of a loss this guy is, but more importantly, how much of a celebration tonight is. A celebration to a really good guy, somebody who really earned the respect of not just all of his competitors, but all of the spectators, the crowd, the people in the region, and the region. That gift is gone, but we continue to give that gift as we celebrate his life here tonight at Olympic Park. Thank you so much, Jace, for your chance to have a chat with us tonight. Thanks, Johnny. No worries. Good on you. Jason Stewart, club president and all-round good guy here this weekend. Jess Hedlund in gate two, Nathan Cochran and Johnson in gate three. And ladies and gentlemen, a replacement first reserve is Walker and Pundle. So well, good to be back and uh, having a chat with... Uh the boys down there. It was great the interview with uh, being able to talk with Jason Stewart for a little bit, you know, to, to give us a different spin on what's been going on from his end about Warren. Yeah, Lake Hilden, it was very interesting for the guys racing over there and was sort of taking his eye boost over there and yeah, they wasted a lot of time through rain, through through their licenses you know, and that. They wasted a full week, which they were a bit disappointed with and didn't realise that they need to get licensed up before they can do their run. So, but great insight about Lake Hilden. Hey, listen, we're about to go into event 29 tonight, Heat 17 for Monson's Memorial. A big thank you to Luke Woodbury and the team at Mallee Motorcycles at Jack Aranda Street and Redcliffe. Thank you so much, Luke, and all of your team for your connections here to event 29 tonight. And in this one, we find out of red, Trent Headland and April Cottrell. Out of the blue, Brody Cohen and Jesse Headland. Out of the white, Nathan Conk and Brendan Johnson. And out of the yellow, Damien Nish and Mitch Spear. Well, this is a turn up for the books, isn't it? Trent Headland and April Cottrell out of the red. Brody Cohen, Jesse Headland out of blue. Um, and then Nish and Spear on the outside. Um, this is going to be good. This is going to be a good race for sure. We've been blessed tonight. All of our racing has been amazing. It really has been with no end of surprises. Watch for Brody Cohen out of blue gate. Well, that's not the start that Cohen needed in blue. That has absolutely rocked his world, I can tell you. Let's have a look further in the field now. The yellow of Niche and Spear, as we called it, would always be in the uh, runnings there. A little further down, we find the red of uh, Headland and Cottrell. You know what? Here comes Brody Cohen on yeah. the charge, though. Freshly prepared track, so it's a different track. And here he comes. Here comes Brody Cohen, picked up 
third. He's looking for second. He's going to probably have Here he to. comes. Oh, my Brody. Cohen drives his way through on the inside. He is now holding the lead. What an amazing zero to hero moment for him, Simon. He has absolutely blitzed that field in this one. Mate, just a head check from Jesse down that straight when they come through. Just going, we got it, Brody. We got it. Unbelievable pass. Dyke went through two bikes to come to the lead. Well done, Brody Cohen. Outside on one, inside on the other, and made it show and made it stick. But he is the most experienced in that ride tonight. Hey, look at that. Three points. To he, from, a, from a zero to hero to, to winning that race, he'd be pumped. Jesse Edlin, just that head knot. Well done, buddy. I can't believe it. Well done, guys. Fantastic effort. What an amazing ride. And look at that. Acknowledging not only the crowd, but also uh, competitors behind, beside them in uh, Niche and Spear. That was an amazing ride. And I told you there were some surprises tonight. Didn't pick that one. Brody Cohen definitely needed them three points. And when he got off to that start, I thought that's the worst outcome he can have in that race. But he's clawed it back and got the three points. Well done, pay, Brody Cohen. Pay the man the money, right? Pay the man the money. Bit of a discussion going on with the clerk, of course, now with the white hat colour by the look of it. Yeah, they're not happy. And that would be the white of uh, Cock and Johnson. Clerk, of course, there in Jason Stewart. As I said, pretty busy guy tonight. All right, let's move on to the next of them. Uh, this is event 30, heat 18 out of this one. And a big thank you to John Farnberger. And John Farnberger as the principal in regards to Mildura District Real Estate. St. Ray's his own real estate group. Thank you to John and your team at Mildura and District Real Estate for your sponsorship to Event 30, Heat 18 tonight. In this one we find Byron Gates and Mick O'Loughlin out of the red. The blue of Mark Playstead, Benny Pitt. Uh, Mick Hedlund and Brenton Kerr out of white. And Kane Golding and uh, Matty, uh, that should be Isaac Amos actually, that one. Um, behind, uh, beside Kane Golding. Your thoughts, Simon? Yeah, this should be a cracker. You've got Mick Hedlund, Byron Gates, and Mark Place said Mark Place is going to want to bag these three points, but Mick Hedlund's still in the charge too. And, and don't take nothing away from Gatesy, so this is going to be a cracker race too. And, and my mistake, Golding, Kane, Kane Golding and Isaac Amos not taking part in this one tonight. We've got a we've got a freshly prepared track, so the track's a bit more. It's been it's been prepped, no, not as much deep ruts, so the dirt's more consistent. So we'll just see how it treats the setup with these guys, but. Gatesy out of red. Let's see if he can hold a good start out of, out of red. But with Mark and just on the blue, I think Mark's going to come out hard. He's a good gator, Mark. Certainly not scared of getting on the gas and going for it head first. Oh, slight uh, kick on the jump out of the gate. And that probably penalised themselves more than it uh, gave them benefits. Here we go, the blue, though. Wow. That's Mark Place to Benny Pitt. They are on the charge. Check out minor placings here between Gatesy and O'Loughlin and the white pairing of Mick Edlin and Brenton Kerr. This, this is solid racing, Simon. Well, you've got a good battle for second and third. Gatesy's not holding back. He's giving Mick Edlin to letting him know he's there. Don't, don't, I'm here. Talk, I'm coming. Talk about working one another over for the last bit of Pavlova on the uh, table tonight. This is solid, this. Yeah, Mick's got to keep in check here, otherwise Gatesy could pip him, but he's just starting to clear out now, but Mark Place said three times Australian champion. He's, he's just going to hold that line. He's riding a bit defensive because he knows I've got to keep this tight and I, I want these three points in the bag. Here yeah, he's right on the and, pole line there. He's and, riding defensive just to make sure he nails these three points. And the reason we say that, Simon, is that we can tell by the lines that he's taking as to why he's defensive. He's making sure if he wants to shut it down any stage, he can. And that's exactly what he's done. Very, very quick race, that. That was very smart riding by Mark Place and Benny Pitt. Well done, guys. Three points in the bag. Well done to Gatesy for giving uh, Mick Hedlund the what for, telling him I'm here. Well done, Gatesy. Gatesy not on his R1 crossplane. He's back to his old FZR, so he's, his R1's a lot faster, but he's having a few issues with the engine, so it's been pulled down at the moment. So he's jumped back on his old bike just to... And this is a meeting he never wanted to miss, you know, Warren Monson, so uh, it's good to see him out there on his FZR having a crack. Absolutely. As they go back pit-wise through the Bob Crump gate, let's have a look at the next grouping that's going to be heading out shortly. 
This will be event 31 coming at you shortly, heat 19. Big thank you to Tim and Sarah Harrison who are with us tonight at the Deakin Motorcycles and Bicycles Group on Deakin Avenue between 7th and 8th Street. Uh, been involved with uh, sales of new, uh, new vehicles and motorcycles and the like over many years here in, in the Mildura region. So big thank you, Tim and Sarah Harrison. Out of the red, we find Shane Hudson and Adam Constable. Out of the blue, we find Ricky Stevens and Nick O'Brien. Out of the white, Kim Manager, Shane Dolan. And out of the yellow, Nate Headland and Jackson Rayner. I'm thinking yellow's looking good on this one. Yeah, we've had a few good starts out of red of late, but it's going to be interesting to see how he gets out of gate, yellow gate. Here we are just doing a bit of guarding now. There's getting some deep ruts form out there, so the guys are going to get real particular now with the end of the night with, with coming into the pointy end. and. They don't want too deep a rut. The bike will bottom out and essentially go nowhere. So you want a good straight rut to come out straight, but you don't want it too too deep, and you want it nice and hard so the bike just drives all the way. A good and a good solid trench, you'll get side grip on the tyre as well. So it's it's a fine line between a too deep a too deep a trench and a, and 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 a, and a soft trench. So. And, you know, the other thing that we talk about here is that the, the trust between, as an example, Shane Hudson, Adam Constable there. You know, Adam's out there picking what he thinks is the right place to plot to park Shane Hudson comes up knowing that that's probably the best thing that could be done because he was there Shane was not right so great trust in those pairings all right we're about to go racing for Tim and Sarah Harrison Deacon motorcycles and bicycles on event 31 heat 19 here we go tapes away great start out of the yellow for Headland and Rayner looked like it might have been red that went infield Hudson and Constable and again a red light on the action, Simon. Yeah, just a bit untidy at the start. Hutto was a bit, he's a bit out of shape, and it's good that the refs called a red light all back in. So that that's nothing worse than a bad start. You all want to get a clean start and a nice mm -hmm. straight start. So it's good to have them all back in and and get another go at it. So sometimes you come out of you, you come out of rut funny on the side and get a mono and it puts you out of shape. So sometimes it's not entirely your fault, but that but that's racing coming out of the gates, John. Absolutely. And look, I suppose the other thing, uh, Simon, that the stewards look for is that real intent. I mean, these guys are having a good look at it now, and I can see Shane's off uh, off the bike now having a good look with Adam. But, um, you know, there's nothing intentional in that, and that's that's why I suppose our stewards look at things in equal light and say, you know what, how about you just come back and have another go at this? Yeah, look, Hutto doesn't, definitely doesn't want that to happen again, so he's having a look for himself just to make sure. And it's all about throttle control coming out of the gate, how much revs you give it when you drop the clutch, how much you clutch it as you ride it out and things like that. And when you do pop a mono, you've got to sort of clutch it and ride it out to get back down straight and, and come out fast. So it's, it's, it's a real real trick to getting great starts. It's funny, just watching in the uh, blue there, Nick O'Brien <laughs> packing the same bit of ground they used before because that worked, all that right? It was a good gate. They, uh, we'll have that one again. Hey? Let's see <laughs> if they can pull it off again. Let's have that again. Thanks very much. One more of those. <laughs> we'll see if it pulls off for them. Here we go. All righty. Tapes away, another nice start in the blue. Wild, wild and out of shape there. Looks like the white going over. Menadju and Dolan. Red light, yeah, again on the action. Yeah, we've got another red light there. We just had Rick Stevens come out. He just sort of lifted and went to the left, and he's just taken out Kim Menadju. So hopefully the guys look like they're okay. But, Ooh, yeah, just an untidy white. start. Looks like, uh, let's have a look and see whether we got a uh, light on the tower. May well be one that come into play yet. It did flicker there for a little bit. I'm not sure if that no, I definitely was an exclusion. Let's wait for the wide shot there. Simon uh, from our live stream broadcast has got a shot of the tower there. Let's keep our eyes on all those lights to see whether something does come to light. Pardon oh, I doubt it there, John. I think you might have accidentally triggered it. First corner, first no, agreed. start. You agreed. Yep. You can't exclude anyone for that. And if anything, Rick, Rick did sort of pop a mono and went to his left and he just sort of took took Manadu out with him. So all back in and hopefully they can get another clean start. The boys will be just looking for a bit of fuel maybe and Oh, look like Adam Constable might have fueled himself up a little bit there with a little bit of water. He's uh, finding it hot out there. And you know what? In those that protective gear, Simon, you know, you could talk to this one. The gear that you wear, the helmet, when you're gassed up like this, if you just go out and you make the start and you're gone and the event's finished, as much as it's a load on you to do, but when you've got to do two or three lots of separate starts, man, you start to get hot, right? Yeah, it's not only yourself too, but your bike starts getting hot, your clutch yeah. gets hot, your bike's running hot. You, and yourself, you do, you're getting hot and, 
everything's getting hot. But then, uh, now the sun's going down, it's cooling down, it's not too bad. But it does. Yeah, a, sure. The best way to have a good motor is, is cool motor and a cool clutch. So it's going to be interesting for this rerun, and we'll, we'll hopefully the boys can get out clean. Just heard the siren, and that means that's the two-minute uh, warning that the guys have got basically two minutes to get to the tapes. Now, looking at where they are now, it will be under 60 seconds when they all get there, but but that is part of, of our racing uh, where two minutes is called, and if you can't access the gate in that two minutes, well, then you'll, you'll be excluded. It's going to be interesting to see who gets a jump on this one, John. They're, uh, they're definitely doing a lot of gardening. They, those ruts look deep from here, from just looking on that camera. It's hard to tell how deep they actually are, but they, they look quite they, deep. Mate, trust me, they are. Um, you can actually see the way the bikes drop into them, how there's a, a decent um, fall into, into that groove. Mind you, it gives you the bottom of the tyre then. You can see the outer edges of that tyre. That's right. On the rear, it's the same, and that's the bit you're looking for, drive from all of that. Well, that's a much cleaner start, I would say, as the red went to the front of the field. So that is Sudson and Constable. I reckon they're going to have their hands full. Yeah, great start by Hutto. Let's just see the back end. Here comes young Nate coming from behind. Great, great line from Nate Hedlund. And not giving any uh, kudos here. He's, uh, he's charging his way through. The blue on the outside of Stevens and O'Brien looking for some drive. There ain't nothing there. Only loose change. There's no notes in that one, mate. Yeah, it's pretty clean racing so far. Rick Stevens just trying to come up down. They're, they're riding pretty good two and three. Hutto's just out in front there. But Hudson and Constable still looking the goods at the front, although we watched the blue putting the heat on third to potentially take fourth out of this and a point. I reckon they got it. There they go. He's coming in hard charging, Rick. He's, he, wants, he wants points. They ain't done at the back yet. Let me tell you, his unfinished business down there as those two guys come to grips with one another. But the chequered flag is going the way of the red. Yeah, oh. good racing by young Nate Hedlund there. He sort of gave Rick a bit of a shove back and said, listen, I'm here to play A grade too. So young Nate come through with the goods. There's a bit of biffing and barging, but great race by the young fellas. And they're, they're, they're pumped too. So good race. But Rubbin's racing and they, they push and shoved each other and that, that's no one got hurt. So it's fantastic. Happy days, I would say. As they continue their journey onwards to the pit area yeah, it's good. and to the Bob Cump Crump gate. Good to see the young fellas sort of give it back to the... To the older experienced riders, good on them. I bet you used to. Yeah, I couldn't hang on. I couldn't control the bike. It wasn't a matter <laughs> I meant to hit him. I, just, I was awesome out of the gates. I just couldn't do four laps. <laughs> so two on the trot was out of the out of it altogether, right? Yeah, I just couldn't I just couldn't string four laps two. together. I was fantastic. I was the best gate. I mate, ask anyone. Ask, ask anyone. I was the best gate. I mate, just couldn't do four laps. Mate, two minutes or not, it's not happening, right? <laughs> All right, move on to the next one. For Matt Mor Morgan and the team at Matt's Pawnbrokers, Monson family and team would like to thank them for their support tonight. And, of course, Matty and your team, thanks so much for a sponsorship to Event 32. Heat 20 tonight. Looks like this. Out of the red, Josh Pascoe, Greg Black. That's a tick. The blue of Dave Bottrell, Darcy Ristrom, the, the white of Darren Trelaw and Blake Cox. And then it's Max Howes and Riley Commons out of the yellow. Correct white as we go on into this one. Yeah, Darren's, Darren's got preferably a, an easier heat, this one. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Ma Max Howes takes it to Darren. Young young Max Howes and Riley Cummins from Broken Hill, they're a good young pair. And to, to race Darren and, and, and to see your speed against him gives you a good good link on how you're going with your, mm -hmm. at, at your career at the moment. And, and Darren's the mark you want to be able to compete with. You know, If you can keep with his pace, you know you're heading the right direction. So, And they're reasonably fast, Max Howes. They're going really good. Bottrell looks like he's having a bit of a problem with his bike. I'm surprised. Bottrell's been having a few problems with his bike actually, the last few meetings. Actually, so I'll be honest with you. I'm actually quite surprised that, it's as, that he's not been having a better run out there because typically uh, he, he doesn't go too bad around here, right? But it's certainly not been to fla flavour or play here. Uh, tonight, uh, or for a, a, a few meetings now. So uh, I don't know if it's a new setup or something new they're trialling or trialling, but either way, it is what it is. They're all having a crack at it, and who knows? You know, you get the magic recipe right, and then the whole thing just goes like a bullet, right? Watch for Gate White out of Darren Trelaw. He's going to want to rock it out of this gate. He wants a clean run. Watch for Gate White. All right, we sit tight now as our starting guys get ready to let them go. They're happy. They vacate the scene of the crime and let the usual suspects loose. And it is definitely that uh, yellow looking for the inside line now through the middle of the pack. This is very, very...
cool to watch, all right? Yeah, great start by Bottrell. Here comes through underneath. Nice move. Just pushed Bottrell and pushed a bit wide. Here comes Bottrell back. No, he didn't quite get there. So setting the pace is the white of Trelaw and Cox, which was always probably going to be the case. But the good battle going on here, Simon, is that second, third piece. And they are going hammer and tong this one. Yeah, this is Max Howes out of yellow. This is a young lad from Broken Hill. It's good. To, that was a good pass, and it's good to see him. Just can't take nothing away from Darren, the, the laps he's done around here. And look how smooth and fast he is, you know. Just impeccable race line. And look how fast that is. He's railing them corners. He's really dialed in now to, to get to the pointy end. He's railing them corners. It's Certainly a in class motion. act, that is for sure. Definitely poetry in motion there. He, he's the GOAT, greatest of all time, this man. And he's got a new graphic setup this year. He's ran the old one for a long time, and he's running a new one this year. And it looks fantastic. New suits, new new fiberglass. Mm. Looks really good. Certainly does. This this man here on screen is he he, he, he each time he races and he gets to the finals, he just lifts and lifts and brings and he just brings it to another level. And he loves the finals. He loves pressure. When I raced with him, I won two Aussie titles, John, and, and he loved pressure. He loved it when the, the, the chips were down and he had to come through from the semi out of yellow into the final, and then he just loved pressure. And it wasn't many other blokes could, could race under that pressure. I think he thrives for it, right? It just ah, it does. pushes him onwards. All right, into our supports. This is Heat 9, our, our supports event 33. And this one is brought to you uh, by the team at Carum Cleaning. Uh, this is uh, incorporating both the Phil Crump Solo Classic and the Muldura Sidecar Shootout. Um, and this one uh, will be picked up by the naming right sponsor of Carum Cleaning. So tonight, uh, Carum Cleaning, which is Jason, Tom and Mark Hawks. Thank you so much for your connections here to Event 33, Heat 9. Out of this one, we find the red of AJ Pierce and Eli Bach out of blue. Byron Mordaunt and Lee Le Will Lepoitevin. Uh, out of the white, Dean Hobbs and Daniel Lowe. And out of the yellow, the South Australian couple of pairing of Brian Silvey and Glenn Zaworski. Yeah, I hope all the sponsors are up there in the VIP area having a good time. And it's, it's great to see so many sponsors jump aboard this meeting. And I, I'd love to be able to sneak over there and have a cheeky froth with a few of the sponsors in the VIP area. I reckon they'll be having a good time up there, John. Absolutely they will be. The new racing solutions, Mordaunt Racing entry, sitting there in the blue hat colours, complete with pink spokes. Yeah, AJ here, A9 after nine racing. He gets, gets sponsored by Exposed. They do the sticker wraps and that for him. He's mm. a good mate of AJ, so they're on a new new cross plane engine, and he's 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 just getting the feel for the bike, and yeah, he's happy to ride in Moz's meeting. He's just getting his head around it. He's getting he's getting better and better each time he goes out. Absolutely. Let's watch him roll. It looks like it might have been uh, Mordaunt and Lapoitevin who got the better of the starts out of the gate on the chase behind him. Hobbs and Lowe. Hobbs and Lowe challenging on the inside. But Mordaunt and Lapoitevin carry the speed as they travel through another swap of placings. Here's the white crew again of... Uh, Hobbs and Lowe, this is great racing, Simon. Great battle. Absolutely great battle. And here comes AJ sneaking up from behind Hobbs as well. Three to the party. It's looking like at the moment it's a, uh, a bit of a thong fight between three of the boys out there. They want to have a real shot at it, and they're not backing out of it. It's quite a crowd gathering too for this win. I think you'll hear the crowd get a bit excited over this win. One more lap to go as they fire their way through. Looks like the pairing of Byron de Mont uh, Mordaunt and Will Lapointevin sitting great to pick up the three, and that's how it's going to play through. Listen to that crowd there, John. That's a great win, boy. With uh, Denny Hobbs and uh, Dean Hobbs and Daniel Lave as second. Great racing there, John. That's what you want to see. Good <coughs> racing. That was very fantastic racing. Yeah, great to watch. Yep, they're enjoying it. There you go. We can hear that in the backdrops. Hope you're getting some of it, not all of it, for obvious reasons. They are quite vocal. 
Simon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Colourful is the word it's I'd getting, use. It's getting late in the night. It's hot. They're all down in the froths and everyone's having a good time. Like I said, look mate. The crowd. Yeah, look at. Like I said, that. it's all about beers and gears tonight, mate. Yeah, they're excited. Atta boys. It's oh. one way of trying to get run over. Rightio, next out, looks like it's going to be event 34, heat 10 for us tonight. This one's proudly brought to us by the team of Adam Ferguson and Danny Mays as part of Gain Gardenland Landscape Supplies. Thank you so much to the team there for their involvement and sponsorship to event 34, heat 10 tonight. Three out on the track at the moment. Looks like we've got the uh, quickly look as they start to come forward. Looks like we've got a white hat colour there, which will be Connor Curran and Cam Nichols. I reckon you've got a red there, uh, Simon, Matty Bins and Jared Katsorki. I'm just waiting for the third one to uh, come into screen so we get another good shot at our third competitor in this one. I reckon it's a blue hat colour. I reckon a Fowler and Sherwood. Let's have a look. There it is, yep. Yeah, let's hope Matty can get out of the gate. He hasn't been able to get out of the gate yet. He's struggled a bit. Let's hope he can figure out what's wrong with his bike and... And, and get out of the gate and, and get a good four laps in a bit of fun racing. He's relatively new to the sport. This is his first night having to go on a new bike. So he's just getting nothing a few squirrels in the bike, trying to get him out of the bike. Well, the bike sounds pretty solid. So uh, I think it's just a matter of getting them forward, loading them up and uh, dropping the tapes and letting them go for it. This would be a good race for Fowler to see what he can pull off. He's going to be hard charging this. If he can... Tidy his rinds up a little bit and just race a bit smoother. He'll, he'll be super fast. And that there, Simon, is something that you can provide and I probably can't. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. I rode like that. I was out of control. I got too excited. <laughs> <laughs> they all kept telling me, slow is better. Slow is faster. You just get excited, John. And, and you work with faster is a lot faster. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's I a thought fact. I, I thought I was going faster, but then people were faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, dearie me. Okay. Looks like we've got two that are ready to roll, and the other one's going to roll from the outset because it's a clutch issue. Yep. That's what he's got. Yep. He has a clutch issue in that blue bike, Fowler and Sherwood. That's why they've given the other two the obligatory tape start with the other to be a roller from the rear. Okay, front of the field, the white Connor Curran, Cam Nichols got the goods at the moment to uh, the team of Bins and Kadzorki. Yeah, and Matty Bins is having a good red-hot crack now. It's good to see yeah. him chase some. Connor Curran's a good young bloke too. He's reasonably fast, so Matty Bins is doing well to keep with him. He's doing a good job. Absolutely. Up in the dirt and driving nicely. Actually shortening up the ground between them as they go into turns one and two again. I reckon he's about to challenge. Here we yeah. go. Look at this. The white of Connor Carr and Cam Nichols setting front and centre now. He just done a big dive bomb there, Matty. He got a bit excited. The red of um, Bins and Kitsorki sitting back a little bit. It's the white of Curran and Nichols front of the field with the blue of Fowler and Sherwood hanging back. There's your three points there, uh, Simon. Yeah, good ride by Connor. He didn't go unchallenged. Matty Bins did a big dive bomb and sort of put the wind up a bit but he just rode kept his cool and yeah cooler heads prevailed so come through with the wind good young kid connor he's only young well simon i might see if you can go and see if you can track someone down for our next interview for our grower services track room while we get ready to go racing with the team of uh, David, michelle josh and caitlin knights from the uh, knights family thank you so much for your sponsorship to event uh, 35 now, heat five of our dirt track racing. And uh, their message to the Knights family was RIP Wazza and happy birthday, Caitlin. And a big thank you, as I said, to David, Michelle, Josh and Caitlin Knights for their sponsorship to this one, event 35. Okay, let's move into it. Get a look at our guys from the front now, if we can. Looks like it's Brooks on the 112. It'll be 12. 
partiu, hein? The 4.50 on the outside of Knights by the look of it. Looks like it's the three of Nick Waters there. Rowan to guard in the middle. And Josh Waters on the 25 front and centre. We are away. There you go. The 1-1-2 one, one, of uh, Brooks. Looked like he had the better of the ride through. Wow, he's been scooped up. Big time. Benny Brooks. Really going to bang into third place at the moment. He's under the heat now from Waters. Although he moves forward. The 3-1-4. Rowan to guard. Run on the right line on uh, our dirt track heat tonight. They've had a wonderful time, these dirt trackers out there this evening, riding for what is a great night's uh, racing, a great track that's been prepared for them, but more importantly, helping to support what is a fantastic meeting here tonight for the Warren Monson Memorial Meeting. Degar grabs the yellow, one to travel. Water's in there still deep as well. But the checkered flag will be one and only on the back wheel. Rowan to guard. I reckon that'll be uh, to guard with the fastest time in that one as they all uh, back wheel out of the place. And I believe we see them one more time tonight in between the... Uh, what would be the first of our finals, which would be the B final, and then we move into the A final for Warren Monson's memorial meeting tonight. As we get ready to roll into the next of our grower services track prep, and very shortly, we'll uh, head down to Causey, who will have someone hopefully ready to roll. We'll throw some ads through. So I've got Mark placed there. He's straight into the eighth final. No one goes further than ATPI to get our customers and understand what you need. We know that different people in different roles in different industries need different things. And you want a specialist to deliver what really matters. We're on call at any time, getting your teams almost anywhere. Through our group of specialist businesses, ATPI Corporate Travel, Marine and Energy, Corporate Events, Sports Events and Direct ATPI, we will deliver what really matters to you and your organisation. ATPI, delivering what really matters. Supporting our community, the Kumiala Memorial Sporting Club, proud sponsors of the Mildura Motorcycle Club. Come into Exposed for all your uniform and workwear requirements. Apparel for every industry. We offer in-house embroidery and printing. Plus, can provide all your PPE requirements. Exposed Signage and Apparel. Your locally owned and operated independent store. Support local. Don't pay too much for your tools. Pay tradie approved prices at Mally Bearings. Buy the tools tradies love, including Milwaukee, Makita and Kinkro. Stocking a huge range, built tough for every trade application. Get personal service and advice in store from our tool specialists. Remember, buy Milwaukee, Makita and King Chrome tools for guaranteed low prices. Smart tradies go to one place. Mally Bearings, the local firm with the local knowledge. Find us on the corner of Lemon Avenue and 10th Street. What better way to celebrate Australia Day than this? It's the Mildura Motorcycle Club 75th Anniversary Speedway Meeting Australia Day, Friday night, January 26th. Three times World Speedway Champion Ty Woofenden is coming to celebrate as he takes on Jamin Lidsey, Sam Masters, Justin Sedgman and Josh Pickering to name a few for the GT Windscreen's Phil Crump Solo Trophy. And then the sidecars will light it up with legend 
legendary names like Mick Headland and Byron Gates. Thanks to Karam Cleaning, it's solos and sidecars on the one night. What could be more Aussie than that? Thanks to the Kumiala Club, gates open 5 p.m. Main racing 7 p.m. Friday night, January 26, Australia Day night. Olympic Park Speedway, 11th Street, West Mildura, May. If you say Hey guys, I'm here with Mark Place, said three times Australian champion, Ben Pitt, local rider, mate. You're straight to the final. What's it mean to you to ride on a night like tonight? Ah, oh, it's a great honour, mate. You know, I've had plenty of um, great races with Wazza and, um, you know, it's a great honour to be here. And, um, yeah, we're in the final, so let's see what happens, eh? It's going to be a tough night. Before the end of the night, you've got Darren Chalor, Brody Cohen, yourself straight in. Placing for fourths next, but that's a tough, tough line-up just there with them three. Oh, for sure, mate. Every week it's a tough lineup. You know, we go, we ride the big meetings with all the big names and try to get the big win. So we'll see how we go, mate. Anything can happen in Speedway and yeah, should be fun. Mate, it's been a while since you ride here and you just come here and you dial in and you're just fast. That's, that's it just goes to show the experience you've rode over the years. Just tell me what bloke to you was Warren Monson over the years of racing? Yeah, I first met Wazza um, when I was swinging for Gary Moon, actually. Um, we come over here and Wazza was on the dyno and. Um, yeah, met him then and um, yeah, just like I said, raced against him for 20 something years and mate, we've had some great races and yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a good night. So let's see if we can finish on top of the step. What, uh, what's one of the most memorable races you ever had with Rosa? Oh, I've had heaps of good races, mate. There's probably too many to name. We're always, every time you line up next to him, you know, you know you're in for a hard night, a hard race. So yeah, all good. Yeah, he definitely was one of the hardest races to race, wasn't he? And he's, and he's big bang, second and under to try and compete with. Um, what's uh, tonight? What's it mean for you to win? Yeah, it'd be a, yeah, like a great honour, mate. You know, obviously um, there's plenty of people here to support it, and um, yeah, it's great to see a, a big turnout for such a great guy. Hey, you got three on the tr three Australian titles. You got the next Aussie title at Tamworth, and that makes it four in a row. You, that's a big achievement. I'm, you're guessing that's the one that you want to win. Oh, 100%, mate. That's the one everyone wants to win, and. Um, yeah, we've got the equipment to do it. Um, yeah, we just got to knuckle down and see what happens and do our best and, yeah, hopefully we come out with a win. Yeah, mate, that's awesome. Well, congratulations so far and I hope you uh, finish on the podium. It'd be, it'd be nice to see pity pity local bloke to finish and all the best with Aussie titles. Let's uh, see if you can make it four on the trot. There's going to be a lot of people out there to try and stop you, I think. It's a great one soon. Once you're at the top, they all want to knock you off, don't they? Yeah, for sure, mate. That's why we run the number one on the back and... You know, I run it with pride and, um, yeah, bring it on, mate. We've been around long enough to know how the racing goes and, uh, yeah, should be good. Running, running the number one on the back just to rub it in, just to get him to chase. Ah, uh, no, it's it's proud, mate, you know, proud of the 25 years I put in and the effort and to finally win one and then, yeah, to win three is probably a dream come true. I never thought that would ever happen. So, yeah, we're proud, mate. Yeah, you've definitely had a few bad calls against you over the years too. Yeah, that's racing, mate. <laughs> All the best, mate. Cheers.
Well, ladies and gents, great to have you back yet again for this uh, amazing night of action. And what I can tell you, uh, but on behalf of myself and Simon here tonight, that uh, these are the riders going into your B final tonight. This is event 36. Uh, out of the red gate, uh, so what's happened is we picked the points from the first part of it. So in the, B, uh, in the A final, let me just give you a couple of pointers here in the A final. Trelaw, um, Cohen and Playstead. Those three had enough points to get themselves into the final. But there is one space missing. And that space comes from what comes out of this next ride, which is event 36. These gates have been picked in order from the points that they've amassed through the night. Coming out of the red, Mick Headland and Brenton Kerr. They'll take the first uh, gate. Out of blue, Byron Gates and Mick O'Loughlin. So they picked blue. Trent Headland and April Cottrell, they've decided to take the white. And out of the yellow, Max House and Riley Commons. They're your four chairs, Simon, that are going through to the final tonight. We're getting and to that's the, the B final, sorry. We're getting to the business end of the trip now. It's, this is down to, we, you need this win to get to the final. And the cool part about this, that one, one chair, one group only, get a chance in the last dance, right? That's how it works. So they all four race for where they finish in order, but one chair gets the chance in the dance. The big dance at the end of the night is there. So who will it be? Big thank you to Trevor and Carolyn and family from Monson's Honey for their involvement for sponsorship to event 36, our B. Get it? B? Final? <laughs> how sweet is that? Right, eh? In the last final, uh, the second last final of the night tonight, only one will get through. Just had a good track grade too, so it's going to be a nice smooth track. This is going to be fast, and this is the pointy end. This is that they need this win to get in, and look, it's going to be interesting. So you get gates well. Mick Headland's out of red. He's going to be hard to beat. He's gating really well. Well done to Gates here to get into the to the semi. That's unbelievable effort. Trent Headland. Don't disregard Trent Hedlund. He's going to not give no quarters given to his old man. They've had a bit of bad history over the years, and they're going to race hard. So this is going to be a cracker. And then you've got Max Howes out of yellow, the young guy. Hey, don't throw nothing away from him. So this is going to be epic. This yeah, is correct. Gonna, my money's going to be on Mick Hedlund, I think, out of reds. Let's just see what unfolds. Well, let's let's see how it plays out, right? Tapes away, and we all four get away nicely. I don't see any red lines anywhere. Nice, tight gathering going through. It's the red, though, of Hedlund and Kerr that streak away. And they have been solid here over the weeks uh, in the lead-up through the season so far. Yeah, just a textbook start from Mick. He was out of red. He didn't really get a good start, but he just he'd give him a bit of a push to come through and just checked out. And now he's going to hold that. He'll ride a bit defensive and try and clean it up, and he'll hold his line. Well done to Max Howes in second place. Howes and Commons in the yellow in second. Looks like the blue of Gates and O'Loughlin for third. And a little further down the field, uh, we find the pairing of um, of uh, Hedlund and Cottrell. But nothing in front of the field, though. We are glued up and going for it on the last one this time round with the red of Hedlund and Kerr. Looking like they're going to transfer to the last dance of the night tonight, Simon. Yeah, the play seems to be pretty set now. We'll take a, a, a spin out to stuff that up. But no, Mick Hedlund, great start. Just out of red, just controlled the race. Just give him a bit of a shove out of the way, and you can do that. It wasn't a, it wasn't a big bang. It, it was just a rub and come through, and he just checked out, and it was a good good textbook red, red gate start. So now he'll start. He'll go straight into the A final, and he'll come out of yellow. Or, or I would assume the blokes would already pick... Red, blue, and well, white. Well, no, no, so no. What, what will happen is uh, none of the lead guys in this event so far have picked gates. Yeah, okay. That will happen tonight on track with all four of them. Oh, but awesome. we could not do that until the fourth pairing yeah, was there. Awesome. Yeah, And that's the ticket through. So no points in that one for Mick Hedlund and Brenton Kerr. It's a ticket to the last dance of the night. That's oh, what well, they're Well done, Mick. Great, great ride. And fantastic to see Mick Hedlund come through. That's a cracker. Cracker final for the Warren Monson Tribute Meeting. 
in honour of Wazza. Wazza would be so proud to see these guys. He's raced these guys week in and week out. Darren Trelaw, Brody Cohen, Mick Headland. It's, it's going to be a cracker finish. Right here, let's have a look at the next one. This one's brought to us proudly by the team at the Merbeen Hotel, top of the state. And that, of course, is Travis Lindsay and his team. Trav and uh, your group, thank you so much for your connections tonight in the uh, the sponsorship of Event 37, Heat 6 of our Dirt Trackers tonight. Thank you to the Merbeen Hotel, an instrumental part of Merbeen. Here we go. Waters out of 25, Jordan Stewart 12, Nick Waters 3, the 314, Rowan Tegart. The 450 of Josh Knights and Brenny Brooks out of the 112. Looks like the 112 of Brooks to the front and the 314 of Rowan to guard from what I can see there. Wow, look at this. Push up through the inside is uh, Josh Waters in amongst it as well. Man, he's not, he's not uh, slowing down any at all. It's a great ride. Down through the field there for Josh Waters in third. To guard for fourth. And that was Geordie Stewart by the look of it in the blue there in fourth. Nick Waters in amongst it there. Looks like he might be fifth in that one. And they're still on the gas by the look of it, uh, Simon. Man, they are out there having a ball. Yeah, great ride by the front runner. He's, he's, really, he's really dropping the hammer. I reckon they're going a few extra laps in this one. I reckon we're going to go the better part of about uh, six laps or something. You know, these guys will probably go all night, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> they'll be loving this. More laps they drop in, the better it is for our final. There's the one to go. Flag, the yellow. They're on the last now. Tegart looking like he's setting nicely for third. But it is Brooks. Bob will give it to Waters, then Tegart. Yeah, great ride by Brooksy. Yeah. So that's Brooks. Uh, Josh Waters, Australian Superbike champion in his own right. 314 Rowan to Garden. Looked like Geordie Stewart that went through into fourth. The guys have had a uh, ripper of a time out there. Uh, they're, they're my favourite to watch. And these six guys, they're all mates and they're the best riders. They're the best riders Madura's got, and uh, you can't get a better bloke. Yeah, 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 Brooksy. And that's, uh, that's to the crowd up in the VIP area is what that one was for. Because Brooksy just goes loose now. I don't see any of them jumping on the burnout pad there, John. See, that's where you would have been, right? Yeah, straight. They wouldn't have even finished that race. They would have just went straight to the burnout pad. No, I think Brooksy's oh, going got, there. Well, he's got the checkered flag. Is he going to get there? Yeah, yeah Brooks, he's on there. Here we go, Brooks guys. Going there. You think he's going to leave? I think let there's going to be happen? a few more roll up there, John. I think they're all going to... Watch him, watch him shift gears. Here we go. Watch. <laughs> yeah. Another one. Let's have another one. Send it. There it is. Send <laughs> it. Get top gear. Send it. Where's all the one other one. blokes? Well, on you, Brooksy. And another wheel stand just to tie the night off. There you go. I would have flipped it then. Mate, I swear, <laughs> swear to God, Simon, swear to God that, uh, you know, these guys have had a great night tonight. And, you know, to the credit, they've really given the crowd a good run. So uh, the cloud, crowd applause as they're coming in now is pretty cool, right? So Rev Limina. Yeah, <laughs> loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again, do it again. I suppose, Simon, if you're going to tear it down and you're going to end up having to do work on it, you might as well do it now yeah, while the going is good, so yeah. it is what it is. All right. This leads us to the last dance of the night tonight. Event 38 tonight, which sees first, second and third, plus the winner of the B final, which we know was the pairing of uh, Mick Headland and Brenton Kerr. I, I, I want to... I, I on wanna I want to put my money on Brody Cohen. He, well, he's going really well, and I, I really think he's going to. If he can pull this off, he's going to be over on the moon. On screen right now, that you can see in the bottom right hand corner for those that aren't aware, and the camera will get it to pan across. You can see there's a disc on the ground that's red. Okay. There's another one as we pad through down a little further, and that's the blue. Let's scroll across and have a quick look at all of these and keep scrolling. There's your blue. A little bit further, there's the white, as we can see it coming into screen. And beyond that, on the outside, is the yellow. These guys get to pick which gate they want to come out of. We know tonight that the blue and uh, also the white haven't been bad gates. 
The guys are coming out, and this is the best part of the night when you get to the last dance of the night. When the points takers get their chance to pick what they want. Typically, they'll all walk across, Simon? Simon, they'll all walk across looking at what the gates look like. They've probably got a rough idea what they want to take, but it's now looking to see what that looks yeah, like. Yeah, look, if you're if a you're top point scorer, you're going to be iron off red 100%. You've got a lot more control on the race out of red. Like Mick, Mick had then in the semi, he didn't quite get the start and he just controlled the race. He just hit him out, checked out. So red... If you've so got top point scorer, you're going to be looking at red, even though it's rutted and deep and that, but you're still going to want to go to red. So Tra very rare not to pick red if you're a top point scorer. Trelaw's got the top points, I would believe, tonight. I, so, I, so you think he's going to go with red? I think it'd be safe to say red. You, you just can't you can't go out. Look, you, the, the calipers are riding there tonight. You wouldn't go any other gate. If you are, unbelievable, go for it. But... I'm going to tell you, top point scorer is going to pick red every time because you just got more control of the race. You get a good gate, you're in front anyway. If you get it, miss that gate a little bit, you can you can just bump them out of the way and come through. So let's see what happens. They might might change, but definitely top point scorer is fair chance going to pick red. But then the next decisions you so make what, what are would crucial. Be, what would be your next gate if you didn't pick red? What would be the next gate you reckon? Wow, you'd it's that blue. You always want blokes. You always want blokes on the outside here when you come into the these guys. Are the, the, the elite of the sport. They're the best in the Correct. best. So you don't want them on the inside of you. You want to well, be on the inside of them. Well, I'm going to make a prediction. You want me to make it? Y you're going to make a prediction now. I'm going to make a prediction. Right, I make it. What do you, what do you, I reckon, you've took all night to make a prediction. I, I reckon Trelaw's going to take the red. I reckon Cohen's going white. And I reckon Playstead will take blue. And that'll leave the yellow on the outside for Headland. Yeah, actually. which is Mick Headland's last pick. Let's wait and see what's going to come out of it. It's oh. going to be very interesting. If yeah, you make the wrong decision in this gate, it could cost you the win. So it's, it, we'll just see what unfolds. But uh, I'm picking Trelaw is going to pick red. And then who's got second pick? I reckon it's Trelaw's first. Play said Cohen, I think. I've got a prediction for you. Trelaw is going to come out and he's going to look at every single gate before he picks red. Oh, undoubtedly. He's going to head. He's going to play mind games here. Trelaw is yeah. going to look at every single gate and then he'll kick red. Okay, he'll be playing what? a few mind games with these. I don't know what he's like, right? He'll kick around on the gate that he's not going to yeah, take. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And yeah. then he's just walk yeah. it over and take a different yeah, one. Yeah, hundred percent. He'll be he'll be eyeing one gate off, thinking I should take this gate because he uses as much of the psyche as he does of the 100%. actual race. So yeah. let, you know, it'll be interesting. But my, my gut tells me that. Mick Hedlund's just pretty cruisy. He's just got to sit back and wait for his turn. He's got one gate to pick at the end, so he's got no choices. But, you know, it's going to be top pick and second pick that are really going to determine what happens in the outcome of this race. Yep. So, Let's watch him. Yeah, he's just checked red. He's going to check blue. He's checking white. He's having a good look, that's for sure. Look, Darren Trelaw, he, he's world champion. He's, he is a legend of the sport and good on him for racing top point scorer for tonight. He, he raced, was it? Here comes his gate and I reckon he's going red. Here we go. Let's have a look. Would be an unbelievable fitting if Trelaw did take it out. He raced once and for years and was always I reckon he's going red yeah, every time Darren finished on the podium of his race meetings he was always looking to the left or right to see was it there was it was always there chipping away at his feet and and uh, they raced together and it, and they were both competitive against each other and it was uh, awesome to see Warren was always a tough competitor against Darren and yeah, so it'll be interesting to see who's going to win. He's picked red, called it. Top point score. You have to pick red, guys. You have to. You just can't and I, and do I, it any other way. I reckon Cohen's going to go white. There you go. There's a few ruts here in red, so it's 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 deceiving to see if he gets out of that gate. If he has, he's got to pick red. You can't pick any other red. You want the blokes well, on the outside. He's taken red. So Darren Trelaw and Blake Cox out of red. That's what they've taken. 
Here you go, I'm writing it in here now. Let's have a look. He's very uneven there at that start in that red gate. It's very boggy and uneven. It does, doesn't it? It's very uneven. They're going to be struggling. If they get on top of that rut and fall to the side, it's, this is a crucial, crucial part of the evening is getting the, a good gate. So placed, it looks like Cohen and Headland out of blue. Thank you very much. Mark Placed and Ben Kidd out of white. Mick Headland and Brenton Kerr have yellow. Well, that's the way it is, guys. So Brody Cohen's picked blue. Helmets on, gloves on. Mark Placed it out of white. Mick Headland is left, <laughs> unfortunately, with yellow gate. But a uh, yellow gate, if Mick Headland does a cutback, Trelaw pushes them all out wide and Mick comes into the cutback. Mick could get away clean, so this could still be anyone's race. And Mick could get a blind out of yellow and go in the outside, but this is going to be epic finish. All those bikes just look amazing. The finishes on them are absolutely stunning. So there we have it. Darren Trelaw, Blake Cox out of red. It'll be the blue of Brody Cohen, Jesse Headland out of the white, Mick Playstead and uh, Mark Playstead and Benny Pitt. And uh, then Mick Headland and Brenton Kerr out of the yellow. That's how they're going to stack up here for the last one. And the last one tonight, Simon, which is event 38, our final tonight, brought to us by the team at PTR. That's Pil Phil Tayton uh, Racing. Phil and Lynn Tainton, thank you so much for your involvement uh, with the sponsorship to this one tonight. PDR, Phil Tainton Racing, uh, apt to uh, have taken the memorial final tonight for Warren Monson. It all comes down to this, Johnny. This is the race. This is the final of the Warren Monson Memorial Meeting. Look at the VIPs up there, mate. There's our VIPs. Have a look at the night they've been having tonight. I reckon that's a gem. Good view from and up there too, John. And we'll pan across slightly. There's in the exposed signage and apparel stand, all the VIPs there as well. Looks like they're having a cracker of a night, right? Well, it all comes down to this, John. Are you going to pick a winner or let it unfold? Well, as I said right from the get-go, you know, um, Darren <laughs> Trelaw was always going to be one of the guys in amongst it. Uh, age, speed, um, experience or not. Um, but, you know, Brady Cohen really has been on fire tonight too, right? So uh, they're right beside him. It'll be, it'll be an, more than anything, an epic battle to the finish, this one. Yeah, I'd love to see Brody Cohen win. He's definitely got the pace and he's definitely wanting he, redemption after centenary. He's flying fast. But man, he, he, you can't pick it, can you, John? He short fell so much in that that I think he went away since checking himself out of that uh, centenary one. Mate, this is the best part of the night is when you make the final of a meeting like this on this calibre and you're racing these blokes. Well, You're shaking, you're nervous, you're just like, this is unbelievable. Your adrenaline's pumping and you're just thinking about that gate. All you're thinking about is, oh, get out of that gate quick and fast and first and it makes the race easy. This is the uh, the sharpest part of the stick now. This is, this is it. It doesn't get any sharper, all right? We really hope, uh, just prior to this, uh, Simon, get the opportunity now to uh, thank each and every one of you that have tuned in tonight on our live stream. Really hope you've had a wonderful night watching through not only some fantastic racing in different classes, uh, the connections we've had with our sponsors, but more importantly, uh, you've had the opportunity to see some of the interviews and some of the other bits that is an insight into this. This has been an amazing meeting tonight, the Warren Monson Memorial, and we are ready to go racing with Phil, with Phil Taint and Racing the PDR guys. Let's have a look at how this plays out for the last race of the night tonight, Simon. Tapes away. Great start out of the uh, white. Mark Place it. He, he, that was a great start. He just he jumped. He just jumped that. Good call by Cam, I think. He did jump yep. and get a jumper. Yep. But that was a great gate. Oh, mate, I thought it was a great gate. <laughs> mate, you should have got it and got away with it. You would have, yeah, right? Yeah, I thought it was a great gate. He didn't hit the tapes, but no, no. fair call. You can't move until the tapes are gone. So, And he did just slightly jump, so he's just a bit eager to get out of that gate. But good effort by Cam for red light straight away. And, and now this, this plays mind games again. 
you've nothing got to like, do the start again. Nothing like building it all up again, right? Mark's hungry. He, he's very hungry. He wants that win too. So yeah. Brenton Kerr running to the line now to have a quick look in yellow. Now it's a funny story. You go into the, you come out of yellow and you look at it and you go, you know what? Maybe not this groove this time. <laughs> we'll find a different one, right? Great start by Playstead. Let's see what happens transpires in the next rerun. Blake Cox down there uh, kicking around and moving stuff. And oh, I used to do when I raced with Trelaw. Yeah. I used to do gardening and pick a nice rut and he'd pull up, the, side that, that he'd pull up the next one. <laughs> He's a, having a great old time. I just picked a good rut for you. What'd you he, I didn't like that. I was, um, just because I picked it. He'd yeah, pull it's a up next like, to it. A <laughs> bit, like, bit like looking for sausages to throw in the... He uh, just didn't like me. He didn't, like, he didn't want to... Yeah. A bit like looking for sausages in the uh, it, for the shop and trolley, and he just comes along and goes, nuts, steak. I loved it because when we lost, I said, well, you picked the rut. I had a good rut. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. We'll play it all over again, huh? Let's no. see what transpires out of this free no, run. We're pulling out of that one and another one. Ready to go racing now as all four of them are in the hands of the starters. Looks like they're all comfortable and set to go. Here we go yet again for this one, event 39 tonight. Great start out of the gate. Wow, look at Cohen go. Brody Cohen, Cohen. great start. Man. Go, go, Brody. Cohen on the money. Look at Trelaw now getting slowed off. He's going to look for the par through. Darren Trelaw now and Blake Cox are on the pin. They are hunting. And the return fire comes out of the... Uh, the pairing of the white for Blasted and Pitt. But Cohen, Cohen on the gas and going for it. Man, he is Hold, Brody. Fire. Don't. Just hold, Brody. Go, Brody. Go. Trelaw closing the gap now. He's right on the hammer. This he is going to come down to the wire. This is a feed and a half now. Oh, no. This is not the way it should go. Cohen still holding. He's but you he's... do not. You do not give a oh. gap. And he's giving it away. Brody's just made a mistake. Brody Trelaw now on the yellow has one lap to travel and the chances of him relinquishing that are zero. Here is the checkered flag now. And Brody Apple, just Apple that the Teresa was... and also Trevor Monson waved the checkered flag Late. for the finish of the night tonight for Darren Trelaw and Blake Cox to win it from Brody Cohen, Jesse Headland. Oh, Brody, devastated for Brody. My, I just heart sunk. He just made a slight mistake and just crossed it up a little bit. And Darren was just, he can't afford to make mistakes when Darren's law is behind you hunting. But Brody Cohen, he, he just so close. Brody. What are they saying? Here we devo. Here we talking about that for days. Simon, what are they saying? Never take your eyes off the shark. No. All right? The moment you do, Mate, you get bitten. Especially Darren. He All was right? just there waiting for him to make a mistake. And he was reeling him in with well, Brody. He just needed to keep it a bit tighter. And he would have had that. But great effort by Brody. Good gate. Oh, Devo. But well done to Darren. Can't take nothing away from take, Darren and Blake. Absolutely. Take nothing away from Darren Trelaw and Blake Cox. Their names go onto the inaugural trophy that will be housed here at the Olympic Park Speedway Circuits Club Rooms. And it'll be an opportunity for all to have their names added. No, but there's been... nothing better, Simon, than having your name on it first. And that's exactly what he came looking for tonight. Hunter has been. And Darren Trelaw was a fan. He's a fantastic rider. And Warren Monson held him in the highest regard when they raced each other. And Correct. he is definitely a champion of the sport, legend. And it is fitting for him to win the memorial meeting. And that he just shows pure class, you know, on that track he, all night. He, he just shows class. You know, you can't take that away from him. The bike looks good. The setup's good. He's just smooth. He just waited for Brown to make a, a little mistake. And if Brody hadn't made that mistake, I'm not sure if, if Trelaw would have had him, I reckon. Brody had a lot more pace and speed, but he just made that mistake. Brody, what? Brody. It, it you're going to hear this for the next it, week, I it reckon. Very, <laughs> it, it, very, it very much looked like what happened is the bike kind of slowed to the rut. It stood up, and by the time he gathered it up, the deed had been done. Yeah, and unfortunately, just, that's, that is how it played out. He just washed up high, just coming out too bit too wide, and he just hit that dirt and just crossed it up. And Brody, 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 I'm going to give it to him tomorrow about stuffing that one up. So um, as the guys ride through, I know that the, the club now, honoured to not only put this meeting on tonight, Simon, but also to be able to start the presentations in a little while. So we might just sit tight for a moment, let the guys paddle through. Uh, and if you are at home, now, right now, would be a great opportunity to go get yourself a coldie and come back to your, your screen as we get ready to start doing promos uh, and do all of our, uh, our uh, trophy giveaways. And we'll yeah. just tune in now with uh, Brendan Gledhill.
our course announcer here to pick up some of the details for what's going to happen with our finals tonight. But uh, again, it's been a fantastic night of racing. Get, we'll get the riders to make their way down to the podium area. Let's just give the boys a little opportunity to catch their breath as we move down to the presentation area. members of the Monson family, for those of you taking the opportunity to go home already, please come and join us on Friday night at 7 o'clock here at Olympic Park for the 75th anniversary meeting. We'll have great sidecars, we'll have the Phil Crump Solo Classic, we'll have the Bradshaw Sidecar Shootout. And we will also have classic solos and sidecars, which has always been part of the tradition of Mordura Motorcycle Club and the promotion of Speedway here at Olympic Park. Patiently for the guys to start presentations. There might be great opportunity, uh, Simon, for you and I to uh, start the wind-up for the night tonight. What an amazing meeting. We'll do a quick wrap-up. Uh, an amazing meeting, uh, some real solid surprises in it, but I suppose more than anything, um, winners for everybody right here because everyone's had a ball tonight here at Olympic Park. We've had an amazing lot of racing in different disciplines given to us um, and, and the outcome has been fantastic in racing as well. Yeah, the best part of the meeting is everyone's safe. No one's been injured. Correct. No, no ambulances and, and everyone's safe. Everyone's home and everyone's going to be able to tell stories at the bar and have a very good night and actually very, very, yeah, few beers and everyone's upright. So it's great. So what we might do, we might take this opportunity to wrap up what is done before they go into the finals. So thank you very much for your company tonight, uh, Simon Cause, and the expert commentary given to us. And on behalf of uh, Simon and myself, we'd like to... Uh, Thank you for everything uh, that's been given tonight. Hope you've enjoyed the live stream tonight on behalf of Simon, the other Simon and his group. And we will hand over now to uh, the presentations to go through with the family, with the Monson family and the like. Simon, again, thank you so much for your time tonight. No, thanks, Sean. It's been, uh, I've actually really enjoyed the night and it's, uh, it's a lot harder doing the commentary, but you guys are helping me out. And look, I really enjoyed it. It was good. That was a cracker, cracker final. And uh, yeah, look, guys, it's my first time doing a bit of commentary, so take it easy on me on the uh, old Facebook, <laughs> the old keyboard warriors. But now, nah, look, thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, hope this this live streaming is still getting better and better. So just bear with it, and as we get better and better and make it better, it, it's going to be better. So, but thanks very much, John. You've been let's a legend, and Simon, thanks, guys. But let's thank you. Let's work on the theory that uh, that's yeah, as over and out. And I would out. normally say drop the mic, but I'm not going to tonight. So <laughs> there you go, so <laughs> good on you guys. Hope thanks, you enjoyed legends. your night. That is absolutely magnificent. And yes, thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you. That's the genuine orange number 43. We certainly thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your cooperation in both your seating arrangements here at the venue. Thanks for no chairs up at the grandstands. We wouldn't have fitted everybody in otherwise. Thanks to those of you who took some directions and followed the parking instructions. And thank you for splitting your attention between the two food and drink outlets. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring on the presentation now. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're pretty much ready to start the presentation. Could I get Jonathan and Stephen, Warren's two brothers, to grab the fourth place trophies 
and come over to the to the track, to the podium. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask current Australian champions Mark Playstead and Ben Pitt to come and join us for the trophy presentation. Well done, Mark. Benny, an absolute honour just to get in there, mate, I reckon. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan and Stephen, Warren's brothers, to make that presentation. That's Jonathan and Stephen, Warren's brothers, who've been part of this big night. Mate, that's been a fabulous tribute to Big Brother. Couldn't imagine it better. That's why we're not all well that. Thanks for taking that to the great part. Thank you. Okay, and I know that uh, Angel Clyde and Chalice are going to benefit very nicely. So thanks to Jonathan and Stephen. Yeah. Back to Mark. And a bit of thank you, sponsors. Maddie and Robin here. Black Road, Stinger, Tauri. Graphics, G1, Bob, Richard, uh, 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 Thank you, Ben, and thanks again to Jonathan and Steve. Ladies and gentlemen, could we have Andrew, Tegan and Judy please come forward with the trophies for third place. And they will go to Mick Headland and Brenton Kerr. to come forward to Brody Cohen and Jess Hedlund, second place tonight. I 
Hey, what a neat trophy, mate. That's the best trophy I've ever seen. That's the best. Um, thanks to uh, Monson family, all the way racing. I'm sure I've only put on a crap of show. This place is awesome. It's probably my favourite track, to be honest with you. I've got a few, but this is definitely up there. Uh, shout out to Pretty Good Word for it. Uh, two corners left, but uh, the goat was saying that he was going to film me anyway, but we threw it in the slick stuff and it went down backwards. And when I hit the dirt, she just pulled it through. She was all over, but uh, thanks to my team, Dad, for driving down here. Huge effort, man. Uh, Cuzzo, Missy for doing a crap of job on the back. Not bad for a pair of boomers, eh? <laughs> On your desk. Well, as Brody said, that is an absolutely neat trophy, mate. That'll be one of my favourites. Um, uh, cheers, everyone, for coming out. Hope we put on a good show for you all. Favourite track in Australia. Here we go. On your Jesse. Ladies and gentlemen, second place tonight, Brody Cowan and Jesse Hedlund. And thanks to Marm and to Ray. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you to Brody and to, to Jesse Hedlund. And now let's give our attention to the best credentialed motorcyclist and sidecar speedway in the country, also in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, first place in the Warren Monson Memorial, Darren Tremor and Blake Cox. And to present the trophies, Trevor and Carolyn Monson and Teresa Dolphin. what Sidecar Speedway is all about, ladies and gentlemen. Darren, what a fantastic race, mate. Well, well done. You're still at the top of the stack. And Damien and I were speculating about how that trip to England in 2002 might have just put that little bit of extra into your efforts tonight. Yeah, well, that's probably the longest thing I'd just like to thank the Monson family, Louisa, Mark, uh, Andrew. Yeah, he's did an awesome job. I'm really proud. I think they love the racing. It's been awesome to ride in. I'd like to thank Blake for doing an awesome job at the back. Ricky and Harry in the pits. Uh, everyone back at home that helps me out and all the sponsors. And, uh, yeah, this is one I'll never forget. It's up there, definitely one of the Aussie titles. Uh, it's an honour too. I've uh, raced for mine for years and years. You know, I've taken all my shit hands after it. I've uh, had some hard battle battles. It's a great trophy. Unbelievable. Thank you. And Blake, you've been around in a few special occasions and a couple of world titles and a few Aussie titles already. And I reckon that this trophy might be pretty special. Yeah, well, <laughs> Okay guys, please please join us on the top of the podium and we'll talk to Trevor. He wants to just explain a little bit about the trophies. I reckon this was all your idea, wasn't it, to get the model and then what it's mounted on. I've got some I've got some timber from the original track in Olympic Park 
and I'm going to mount the model on it. So the tender came off the original track. Around the track. No, no. Yeah. And um, like Warren used to talk about when they put up the when they put up the back fence, he would um, he'd say he didn't like it. In the old days, he could ride the timber with the sidecar. Anyway, that's it. And um, we, yeah, we're really, really thankful, and, and we we trust that everybody that's contributed to tell us um, angel flight. Um, we are Thank you, Trevor and Therese and Carolyn. Now we'll just get some photos of the guys themselves. And just hang on, fellas. Just hang on. Hang on. Just the competitors first and then we'll get the Monson family in. Okay, can we now have the Monson family come up? Just Trevor and Carolyn and Teresa, if you want to the boys too, if you want to come up. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we do hope you've enjoyed tonight's entertainment. Thankfully, uh, only one little incident. Join us next Friday night for Australia Day. We will have a lovely Australia Day celebration. Okay, everybody, thank you so much.